Welcome everyone to the Kia Tilt Proof Challenge. We're here to see if four gamers can stand up to the test. Well, this oh! <laughs> <laughs> oi, oi, oi. <laughs> ah, gas. Dios mío de mi vida. I think I lost. I'm so happy that I didn't eat before. Red Bull gives you wings. Done? Done. There we go. Break? Break. <laughs> Even the biggest champ needs a break. I'm tired. Me too. So, uh, what do you think? On to the next one? Let's go. Come on.
Two days, two eliminations. The stakes are high as we near the end of the Spring Sprint regular season. Rogue, Giant X, Mad Lion Sky and Carmin Corp are fighting for their lives at the bottom of the standings. Because here, elimination means for them a 10-week break from the LEC until they come back in summer. And on the other side, G2, Fnatic, Vitality and Heretics sit quite comfortably in their seats and they will be here to play spoilers. And guys, it is absolute cinema, isn't it? I know, I'm so excited. I can't wait to watch I this. I know, I got you guys some popcorn. Oh, that guys, the sweet one. Uh, yeah? Man, no, I don't eat You good? You good? Uh, all right. How are we doing, guys? Uh, don't ask me, I got popcorn in my mouth. Uh, that's why I'm trying to embarrass <laughs> yeah, yeah, you. Give me your, give me your best, best speech there, GB, for one sec. The what? The what? What? All right, LEC. Because if you haven't been following here online, the Riot Games Arena, as of late, has featured plenty of moments of absolute cinema. Thanks to Brightwing, by the way, who made some of these hilarious fan signs that you can see here, and has subjected Humanoid to this recurring photo. And with Fnatic's performance over the Spring Split, we agree, Fnatic had plenty of Oscar-worthy performances. And to kick things off today, we wanted to take a look with you guys. Of the, uh, some of the greatest hits of the Spring Split. And uh, GB, what is the first movie that you have here? Well, it's a very, uh, very famous movie I've All brought right. here today. It's called Ocean Drake's 11. And it, Ooh, uh, it nice. features the whole team of Fnatic, but it, it truly stars Humanoid and Rassog, these two leaders of the pack, assembling their team of experts to absolutely steal the game. Let's All have right. a look at the clip. Let's watch it. Let's bring it in here. 
And as you can see, against infamous G2, the biggest of the biggest boss you can get. 2v2 in the mid lane against Yike and Caps. I mean, a, a complete embarrassment of Caps and Yike here. And they do it again. It's not just the first time, it's the second time too. And this just truly has become one of the best mid jungles we have in the entire league. That was the best scene, honestly. Yeah, they've been absolutely insane. Like, I love how well coordinated they are, how well they're synced up. Uh, it feels like the pacing is just absolutely incredible. But they're working across where it's like, hey, we'll get the lead mid, but then immediately we'll go bot lane. They'll start to snowball. It, they'll like crack the code as to what they need to do and it's been absolutely a pleasure to watch these two work together. It's amazing. I, I love when teams come together like this and offer us beautiful moments yeah, in cinema. Yeah, at the end of all, one thing's certain, they are playing the game like they have nothing to lose. All right, Dagda, what do you have for us? Yeah, well, as you know, I'm all a big fighting movie fan, so I Whoa. decided to bring out Fanatic 2 Heavyweight Champions. And it's up against their longtime rivals in G2. They defended their path to the Winter Split Finals by knocking out Challenger Fanatic into yeah. the bottom bracket where they would ultimately meet their demise but then you fast forward a couple of weeks of recovery and Fnatic is finding fame and success in the spring split particularly with no engine uh, you can see there look at the faces man they're all so sad and it, it truly is yeah. the breakdown it's it's like in an anime first season of a whatever it is like they can't win the first time you know you got to bring it back and they truly are i mean look at it again here 2v2 killing against mickey and anzama what much more more do you want right yeah and as for g2 the public pressure has been kind of getting to them oh, uh, really? despite their uh, trying to keep up their personas well, champions the cracks are definitely Start show. And we run this region. Yeah, but you did lose to Fnatic. Either way, we're gonna head over to Lore. So uh, let's check in with her and see what she got cooked up. Amazing yeah. night. And, I mean, look, with all eyes in the rematch in the playoffs, where they're resolved to beat Fnatic in two more best ofs. We got one more lined up though. So let's see what this is. The Fnatic and the Furious. Berlin drift. And let's be real here, these boys don't know how to drive at all. They're just like me for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not gonna lie, I don't know why. Yeah, I yeah. still don't have that driver's license it's totally either. Uh -oh. But neither am <laughs> so have a look at this. Looks good at first, just crash the mid tower and then uh, Oh, into the bollards. <laughs> Could have been me. <laughs> this Could've is been why me. you need stun actors. Yeah, but, but so I suppose if you, you ain't out of control, um, you ain't in control either. So oh. there you have it. <laughs> well, I guess that's all for us here. Won't be a uh, Live from <laughs> the red carpet. But we have a special agent and reporter, Ginny, on the red carpet, standing with the man humanoid himself. I'm such a big fan of this guy. Yeah, I'm such a big fan him. of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> We're joined here with Humanoid from Fnatic. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. A uh, little conversation on the desk is the uh, Absolute Cinema, a meme that was birthed by the Vard from Fnatic. Uh, and it's kind of like took us live on its own. So what we're going to do first is I want to show you a couple of posters and then you can rate them or tell me which one's your favorite. So right. yeah, you excited? Let's go with the first one. Uh, when it showed, there we go. Ocean Drake. What would you say out of 10? Okay, I mean, I don't really understand it, to be honest. I don't know. I don't know what's what's like... Why are we Ocean Drakes, you know? Ocean's Eleven. Have you seen the movie? Oh, I didn't see the movie. Maybe. Okay. Not. Okay. So skip. That's a zero for me. That's a pass. Next. Yeah. <laughs> Fanatic two. Okay, this one is a ten, one hundred percent, because Noah is just a, Noah is just a funny guy, and I love him. So he literally just walked past, so he heard that. Really? Uh, oops. Hey, uh, and then last one, the Fanatic and the Furious Berlin Drift. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can imagine uh, him playing some Spanish music while while doing this. So. He's still wearing the headset. Yeah. Um, this, is an, this is a solid eight. Okay. I like it. All right. An eight is not bad. That, that's passable. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, but let's talk about you guys in general and how Fnatic had performed last week. It was a 3 and a week. Really great performance from the team in general. How has that set you up for this one? Uh, I mean, I think it made everyone a lot more confident uh, because I think we played pretty well uh, in all of the games. Uh, even though... You know, we lost yesterday. I think everyone is still really confident, and uh, it just makes it just makes the team be have like better mood. Mm -hmm. So that's the main like advantage of just winning. You know? Just winning. Yeah. What, what happened yesterday, actually? Uh, yesterday, I mean, was, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, we have a lot of people that are pretty sick right now. Oh, okay. So I hope I was able to. I, I was. Ha I hope I wasn't supposed to keep this a secret. But yeah. Leaks. Uh, so maybe that played a part in us playing bad, but to be honest, it's just uh, one game, so we are not like uh, we don't feel bad about it. Yeah, and overall, you guys have been doing really well, five and two currently in the standing. So you're definitely towards the top of the leaderboard. Something to keep in mind. In terms of what we've seen yesterday, particularly not just specifically your game, but rather in general, was pocket picks coming through, or a lot of pick picks that we've seen in different leagues, like Annie, Rexai, Camille support. What is your opinion about that? Uh, 
I mean, I think they are strong. I think we've seen Annie in uh, LCK, and she's been played last year uh, already. Uh, Camille support, I think people have been playing her sometimes in scrims for the this entire split. So it's not really a surprise to the pro players, I would say. Yeah. Uh, it's just the first time that they pull it out on stage. And Rex I've never seen that before, but maybe it's OP. I don't know. I don't read the patch notes on this champ, but they changed it somehow, so maybe it's good. No I mean, it, it looked really strong, so uh, we're going to have to wait and see. But thank you so much for the interview. I appreciate it. And Lore, back to you. Thank you. Marek not reading the synopsis. We love it. But uh, Fnatic, honestly, is sitting quite comfortably here uh, at the standings on top for the end of the regular season. But things are not looking as good for the rest of the teams. All of them are looking for two wins across the next two days to lock in playoffs. So let's take a look at what we have uh, here for all the teams, starting with KC maybe, because out of the bottom four teams, Carmen Corp find themselves in the strongest position because with the lead in the head-to-head -head against MDK and GX, all they need are two wins and they're in. And they're also in a strong position if they lose all their games with over 80% of the scenarios leading still to a tiebreaker. And when you look at the teams they have to face off against Heretics and BDS might not be the easy, but they have a good position for themselves here. Yeah, but that's the thing. For the other teams, they're not so lucky. Like, their fate doesn't really land in their hands. Yeah. Like, if you look at Mad Lions Koi, for instance, they need a win against BDS and Heretics this weekend, and then at least they can lock a tiebreaker 98.4% of scenarios. And um, Though, if they can take both wins, and if Heretics are able to take down Carmen Corp later today, mm -hmm. that's the only way they, they can lock it. And GX have a good uh, have a good scenario for them, but they don't have the best schedule to uh, to back this one up because they need to win both their games against Vitality and G2 to get them at least a tiebreaker in 96.9% of the scenarios. And then there's Rogue. Uh, <laughs> let's be real. It, it, it sounds... Actually, no, it doesn't sound easy at all. No. <laughs> you know, it, some things, it sounds <laughs> awful. <laughs> On paper, it seems like you're already out, but that also just speaks to how much more they got to continue this streak. If they could do it, they would lend themselves in a 3-0 week leading into playoffs. Yeah, the problem, though, is on the opposite side, you still got Rogue, which uh, it hasn't been so hot. They have to win both of their upcoming matches. Uh, or sorry, they, even if they win both their upcoming matches, they still lock out in 18% of scenarios. So those odds will only get worse when you look at like who they have to take odds Today, like the big boss G2, uh. like it's not a fun time if you're a Rogue fan. Okay, but if we are talking about percentages, yeah, Rogue this year has a hundred percent win rate against G2. Wow, that's one of the best stats against G2 you can have in the league. So, I mean, we've seen it before, before the blueprint's already there, winter split, going into spring split. I mean, come on. The, the I don't right know, G2 just look like they have so much up their sleeve at the moment. Even seeing the new picks yesterday, like... It is, a G2, it is a G2-esque yeah. game yeah. to lose, I want to say. That's the kind of stuff <laughs> they do sometimes. But staying on the G2 topic, they're deploying some ancient tech this week. Uh, with yesterday, we see Broken Blade bringing back the Rek'Sai top lane. First time we see this Rek'Sai on the top lane in the LEC. Last time was 2015 LPL. GB, tell us what happened here. Yeah, so uh, Rek'Sai is back in the top lane, even after Riot's been trying to keep it in the jungle. We had some buffs coming through on 14.4 and 14.5, but in the end, all it did was really just bring a lot of sustain back to the top lane itself. So let's start with where it all starts, even in champ select, and that's with the runes. Have a look at it. Grasp of the Undying, Demolish, Second Wind, and Overgrowth. So you're not actually looking at something where you want to fight, you're looking at sustain here. So what you're really looking at is just trade early, stack grass, lose the trade a little bit, go back in your W, heal it all up, push in the wave, proc Demolish, and then you have Overgrowth for later. It is super oppressive and super easy to make work, so I highly recommend you guys trying it. But speaking of that as well, we do have the build as well. And as you can currently see, it is a super tanky variation. We're not talking Bruiser, we're talking about getting that Sunfire going, getting the Spirit Visage for the healing, and then you can start building in towards the Steris Gauge. And as you can see, BB, he got the Tunneler. He was looking to build the uh, Titanic Hydra as well. But uh, yeah, now you know the runes, now you know the build. Let's have a look at some of the clips as well, because they did try and punish BB Rek'Sai in laning phase. But look at the tunnel setup he's got here. This is straight out of Dune, okay? We got a land shark, we got a guard trump, we got a worm, call it what you want. They try to gank him, but he's already got the tunnel system set up in place. And even though they stop him from the first tunnel, they don't stop him from the second, and they can't stop him from the third, and he even had a fourth one if he needed it. So that's laning phase, super safe. Let's see how this tank Rek'Sai actually functions when you're in a team fight. Already got rid of Dust, looking at Exa Kick. Exa Kick down to half HP, so he's like, okay, surely it's safe on the tower. Um, no, not really either in this situation. Broken Blade just ults on the Exa Kick, starts killing him. He's not taking any damage. He's a tank, he's gonna sustain it. And yeah, that was pretty much my reaction too from Exa Kick. So yeah. 
this champion is super oppressive. Fresh fade from BB, fresh new pick coming in. So yeah, that's uh, that's all for him. So let's turn our attention to SK and Fnatic. Aragon and Dracus are here to lead us into champ select. Thank you very much, GB, for that excellent breakdown on the terror of solo queue that mm. is top lane Rek'Sai. If you're not playing it, start playing it. It's free low. It'll probably get nerfed, I'm sure, because it's it's icky. It's like you know the Dr. Mundo power fantasy where no one could do any damage to you? Yeah. That's Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai is just a better Dr. Mundo in it's every possible way. Yeah, it's quite interesting. I'm, I'm still not kind of sure if it's more of like a, you know, a counter pick when you get free scaling versus mm -hmm. something like Kazante and you can play for Demolish procs because you don't get punished in lane. I think there are some really interesting counter picks. Like Rumble's the obvious one. You kind of just burn him to death. Poppy might be good to stop the tunnels. Uh, so a lot to explore. Will teams even let it happen, though? That's the question. Because it's kind of after that performance yesterday, I think a lot of us would be inclined to say, ooh, this looks completely yeah. busted. But is it so overtuned that you can pick at any time, which is maybe where I'm mm. feeling? Or you, who are significantly better top player than me, you're like, look, look there's a little more context yeah. that is necessary. It's maybe not the universal power pick it might have looked like. Of course, we have two very talented top laners who aren't afraid to necessarily bring out something new, but aren't always set up to do so in the draft. It is yeah. irrelevant versus Oscar Rinnan. Um, guys who I think are more often than not taking the back seat in the draft and picking what's needed from a team perspective. A couple of Jace games from Irrelevant, which is quite interesting, but for the most part, I completely agree. You're, you've got like your isolated scaling or just strong bruiser top laners, like Renekton, you rumble your Aatroxes, typical blind picks that you have in the meta at the moment for both top laners. So I think we're just going to get something like, you know, Cassante versus Renekton, uh, Rumble versus Ren uh, Renekton. I, th I think this is the typical, <laughs> the classic, you know. Yeah, I think we dream of more crazy picks. But to be fair, top lane has at least been mm. like semi-interesting. There have been some new champions coming up, or champi older champions kind of coming back, with the Aatrox, Lethality build getting really popular in this spring. Yeah. But bot lane. I mean, it is Exegigdos versus lane. Noah Jun. I think these are you know two bot lanes who've shown us some pretty impressive performances when set up to do so. But I also know that very likely it'll be kind of just handshake, scaling matchup, yeah. three items, see when they team fight. I think the most interesting dynamic that we have here is I wonder if other teams are going to adopt the Neela in when you have free scaling. Like, for example, into Zeri, right? You can't exactly bully out the Neela. The Neela just gets to scale with bonus XP. Yeah. Uh, that's what GX pulled out yesterday, Giant X. So I wonder if we'll see that today. I'm really looking forward to it. We had some spicy drafts. Yesterday was great from a spicy draft perspective. Mm. Uh, I do think that for the sake of everyone at home, I, I hope that Neela doesn't get locked in because between the two of us Neela enthusiasts, they will hear about literally no other champion. <laughs> will be like, I will buy. Oh yeah, that guy, guy jumped in, killed five people, and sold the Baron. But have you heard about this Neela interaction? It's so interesting. It's so. This is what you really need to understand. She gets so much XP. It's so much XP. <laughs> but of course, we're in a draft now. Neela is up and available, but I don't think we'll be getting a blind pick. She's not that mm -hmm. powerful. Nico taking out the board alongside Talia, Callista, yep. Oriana. A lot of. You know, the control mage options, the safe, reliable mid lane options have yep. been taken away. And see if what Fnatic want to go for here. Ari still up, but Ari. the Annie has been showing its face more and more as a counter pick, or at least started to yesterday in the hands of G2. So Nautilus still up and available. You've got Ari, Rel, early rotations, very common too. Zeri, which we were talking about immediately with the Vi, to deny any kind of Vi lockdown onto the Zeri as a duo. It's a really good rotation. Yeah, I definitely like if you're going to pick um, kind of the backline hyperscaling AD carry. Zeri has a bit more mobility, but if mm -hmm. it's the Jinxes that we saw Noah play, yeah. The, or the Ophelios's, yeah. just take the Vi too. You know, if you're not going to ban it away, so Fnatic, good tools now to shut down Exekick, who we assume is playing this Varus, but might suffer a bit in the early laning phase for Fnatic as Varus, notoriously oppressive. Now Rel, you've got the luxury of this being a flex. I think I think you really want the Nautilus here because the lockdown that's nece necessary into Azeri. Um, Vi is already off the table, so I think you just take it away. Nautilus works so well with almost every champion in the meta at the moment in every single role. So I wouldn't be surprised to see it just locked in here. If you drop it, it will certainly get banned away. And then in response, you probably pick away a mid laner. I think Ari is the last one off the table. It'll definitely get pinched away because like you said, everything's off the table as well. Said no, gonna just take Renekton. away this bit. Both top laners, really big Renekton players, and it synergizes really well with both junglers here too. Interesting situation now for Fnatic because they have the choice to potentially match here, yeah. assuming that the rel is going into the jungle, and set us up for a situation where both sides have equal information, equal picks heading into the second ban phase. Or they can do something completely different. Take a mid laner, as you highlighted, ban away to kind of pinch the pool of Niski. Yeah. Niski has been I think one of the most successful players on the SK lineup early to mid game alongside Isma, yep. and it's another Karma game. Yeah. 
Interesting. Right, so at least Zeri uses the move speed from the Karma really yep. well, but I think yesterday they went for this and it got a lot of criticism. Um, I kind of agree. Generally, you want instant snap damage, like you were saying earlier, we were having this discussion. Karma, I think, with Vi, the general benefit that you have is the fact that you get perma prior all lane phase, and that way you guarantee Vi's early clear so she can get to six really reliably. It's just not the best combination in terms of skirmishing and team fighting. It is definitely has some clear weaknesses. And of course, with the Zeri instead of the Jinx that we saw for Fnatic mm -hmm. yesterday, I think there are more options for Noah to kind of protect himself, which will make a lot of these team fights easier to navigate. But now they're taking away some of the long range yeah. follow up damage. Of course, Winnerell comes in if she does connect on Zeri. One way to make sure that that turns into a completed kill is having that long range artillery mage in the way. Now seeing the Olaf taken off, the Rumble taken away too. But I don't mind this, frankly. Oscar playing something maybe more team-focused, I think, could benefit Fnatic greatly. Yep. So, what counter pick do you have into this? This would be a very oscar and counter pick to go poppy into this. It's very good into the Rel as well as the Renekton. Renekton can win out a little bit, but still not terrible. I think for blind picking as SK, you want to pick support here, and I think Nautilus has to be the pick. It's so good into Zeri, and I can't think of a better one unless you want to flex the Rel down bot side, but I think it has to be a Nautilus here. The Nautilus Lango, I mean, it's kind of the last reliable point yeah. click left, right, with Vi taking off the board as you highlighted. So, Do SK you? taking their time. I mean, it's final rotation. You're blind picking. Not anything, really. You've kind of got support is really the only thing that's going to suffer in this context. You can just pick whatever your preferred mid lane matchup is. I don't think that they're worried about a potential Karma Flex. Of course, Corky. I see. I was wondering, what would you go for here? All the mids are off the table. I think Ari plus Rel is too low damage and Merc Tread value is way too high. So, instead, you go with. The Corky, which we haven't seen. Usually this is something Faker also defaults to when the whole mid lane pool is pinched. Oh, good player. Yeah. Heard a lot about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay. <laughs> so Corky, obviously a lot of poke, good early trading patterns, some mobility to get away from any potential early ganks. Okay. Can go unstoppable with the package. And now, Flex, as you highlighted, so Maokai most likely going to the jungle position mm -hmm. as we've seen support Maokai hit pretty heavily on this patch. Yeah, so Alistair's really good into Rel here. That's the general idea, I imagine, if they lock it in. So into uh into rel you can just knock away every single time rel jumps into you a lot of disengage it's gonna be hard for rel to connect any single any time at all yeah definitely will be tricky so many tools to stop her from getting into the fight obviously we know the impact of a poppy ultimate the keeper's verdict knocking a few of these champions away can be a big difference mm -hmm. maker but good poke and really good setup from the side of sk yeah. the reliable vision tools that maokai can bring to the table if it is maokai support that's an interesting adaptation maybe trying to move away from the disadvantageous Rel matchup and instead put the Maokai down there who can avoid a lot of those Alistair interactions, kind of twisted advance to get away from some of the upfront CC. Mm -hmm. That said, Maokai support a little bit weaker, so it looks like they will swap and decide to make it the Rel on the bottom side. This mid jungle, a little bit lifeless from SK in the early game. You're gonna be first move from Humanoid every single time. So Razok is gonna be able to, you know, farm up, get to his level six comfortably. And I think, I really favor Fnatic's draft here. I think it counterpicks SK so damn well with all the disengage. I think the shielding from Karma against all this poke is going to feel good as we get into the later fights. Of course, execution is the name of the game, but unlike the previous game where we saw Fnatic run a very similar composition, mm -hmm. at least on the bottom side of the map, or at least in the mid jungle, there's not that Zin who's going to be able to sneak in. Even if Razork makes a misstep like he did yesterday, Maokai doesn't have kill pressure yeah. at all against really any champion 1v1. Maybe post level six, there will be a little something there. But uh, Razork will get to farm pretty comfortably. And then when level six comes around, bot lane has to be careful, has to be respectful, because the Alistair plus the Vi, that setup is going to be brutal in these early skirmishes. Absolutely. My eyes early game are on what Humanoid does and how Razok can secure his early clear. I don't think there should be any major skirmishing at the very least, but it's time to get into game. Let's do it. Time for a bit of PVE in the jungle. At least that's what expectations we have thus far. But maybe some of the lanes get a bit more explosive as both teams take to the rift. And a reminder, Fnatic already locked. They've secured their place in playoffs. It is top eight here in the LEC. Um, so at five wins, you're pretty comfortable there. Would love to play for higher seeding. But it's SK who are on the cusp, not clearly in. A lot of teams sitting behind them at two wins. Getting up to four would make them feel very comfortable. And of course, would lock with a win. But if Fnatic win, BDS is locked. So a bit of stakes on both sides for SK. They control their destiny as long as they can win here. We'll play against GX tomorrow, I believe. So yep, more uh, definitely a cluster of teams in that center right there with Giant X, Carmine Corp, and SK trying to fight for their lives. 
though. It's been incredibly important to pick up this win, but just looking at the map right now, every single lane seems kind of really hard to make anything done, right? Which is good for both junglers, because both junglers kind of want to farm early. I've already highlighted how Vi wants to get to level six and then make plays afterwards. Um, but also Maokai. When you play with Maokai, generally what you're doing is you're you're scaling up, you're trying to play for these big team fights where you can throw your ultimate and you also have a Corky over the top with a bunch of poke. So expect a slower one. Which gives us more time to talk about anything and everything. In this case, I think, I think the problem is, is that while bot lane could be explosive, and I think might have even been more explosive if we saw X kick go for Halo Blades, indicating the op for a lethality. He's gone Lethal Temple. He knows he wants to go on hit. There's a pretty tanky frontline in an Alistair, in a Poppy, yeah. in a Vi that he wants to shred through with kind of the, the on hit damage that a attack speed Varus can provide. But as a result, he's still powerful in the early lane. He's still favored in the early lane in terms of push, but is it going to be nearly as powerful on that first item spike, at least? Taking a look down bot side, I think that's got the most setup in the game at the moment. If there are decent enough trades down bot, maybe if a summoner gets popped, maybe a Vi can, after her full clear, find some kind of engage down bot side with the Alistair flash Q. But that's pretty much the only avenue of attack. I imagine what will happen is both junglers will just set up for full clears, uh, drop a deep ward on Wraiths, that's a pretty common play pattern. And then what will happen after that is both supports will open up on the map and clear those wards. It will be seen in the LCK. Yeah. It will be interesting to see kind of how quickly supports just leave lane. Yeah. Because the 2v2 I just don't think is as important. Noah has opted for the cleanse as well, which lowers a lot of Exekick's individual kill pressure on the 1v1 if they're left alone. It really is only the VAR assault that would be able to secure that. But goes for Exekick too. So a more effective combat sum in theory. Razzle maybe was worrying about getting invaded here, and so he skipped his blue buff to maybe clear the Gromp and then... Because look at the prior down bot side, right? There's so much prior down bot, there was potential for an invade and like a set play. But I don't think you have to expect that from the Maokai still. Gonna secure his full clear hand. And give, but, you know, giving that respect. Yeah. Kind of giving Isma the benefit of the doubt is a path that he could have taken, and very likely with the pressure that SK's bot lane had, they would have been first on the move. So, covering your bases, Playing with a lot of diligence, a lot of safety, a lot of respect. And after Razork had that single moment, I think, against Shao yesterday where he got disrespectful, uh, and it cost Fnatic a lot in that early game, you can understand why maybe it's, it's a bit more reserved, it's a bit more passive, it's irrelevant. Dash timing there is good. Ooh. And Oscar just getting chipped away at slowly but surely. Grass procs are going to feel okay with the power of the shield. This is Isma now rotating into mid lane. Knock back onto Humanoid. Humanoid, is, is he going to be forced to flash here? Mantra, W for the extra healing. 52 health now coming in, but the red buff ticking away. Humanoid has to flash, but he's going to flash back into what? Razork? I don't think Razork can save him here. He's going to try to body block on Isma, but the good damage the Mantra Q, the fire. Now coming in. Razork wants to go forward. The root is there as well. The healing Humanoid. again. The Mantra W coming from Humanoid is everything, but there's a the little soccer ball getting it done. It's a one for one. Meanwhile, on the bottom side, SK engaging on the Fnatic bottom lane. Backstab coming in for Noah, but now he doesn't have the parkour to get over the wall. Nice sun comes cleanse. in from Dot, but the cleanse is clean. Noah just outplays him. He knows the resources that he has, but actually desperately needs to get a kill back. Flashing Ooh. away from Johnny wants to get the auto, but Noah's a finish job. Oh, turn back. Noah plays it like an absolute hero to make it a two for one. Exekick tries to flash forward to get the autos and avoid the Alistair Q, but he flashes forward and he's still a pixel in range. He managed to go and it was really good pathing by Isma. He could have pathed top because of the big chunk onto the poppy with the Renekton. That's a free dive, but instead he goes mid lane, punishes mid. Now Humanoid has no flash and that could be a rinse and repeat. They can regank again. Especially to bring the sport. And I am grateful, Miracon, because this could have been a farm tell six yeah, game, but been. now it is absolutely not a farm tell six game. There's going to be these discrepancies in each lane. You can see Niski going for an early Cole. I don't think he wants to fight much more. Isma trying yeah, to leverage stacking. the pressure that he has on the top side of the map to lock up some of these grubbies. And in bot lane, it hurts that that play went against SK. The good news really is that one of those kills went over to Jun. And so Noah, while he has a small gold lead, it's not the end of the world. So itemization is equivalent. Isma, in the meantime, Taking down the grubs, we'll see if he manages to show any pressure on the top side of the map, but let's yeah. take a look back at this. So Isma decides to gank mid instead of top. He had the option here. Instead goes mid lane. Humanoid uses that tether to get some HP and runs down. You can see Razzle, he tried to make a play down bot side. We were talking about that the whole time, but instead he has to beeline back here, manages to find the Q and disengage. I think Humanoid was very close to getting the, the second part of the tether as well for bonus HP, but he does, he does get it. I mean, that's yeah, brutal. The 158 up front, Mantra W. If you've ever played against the top lane Karma, you know how absolutely disgusting that ability is. Yeah. Good, you know, limit testing there. We didn't get to see the backside of the fight where Niski or Razork ultimately gets hmm. the additional kill. And so really, 
Much better game from yesterday. Much better game. I will say, the start of that looked grim for Human Rider. They thought he should have flashed much, much sooner, but his patience pays off, knowing that his jungler is stronger in the 2v2, knowing that his karma he can live for so long. And now the setup on the bot side is there. Hex flash no overall from Jun. Waiting, biding his time. Irrelevant has TP if he wants to do this, but it might be Going for the engage. Knock up to interrupt. DOS is clean from Jun! The patience from Alistair there, absolutely flawless. Does not use a single cooldown until it is needed. Yeah, on the slow stack, just diving down bot side. The highlighted Re Irrelevant did have TP on the Renekton, but he must have been too chunked to be able to do it. So good play on the slow stack. Razork having a really damn good game compared to yesterday where he was dying on invades. Yeah. Right, not his best early game. 2 zero, one Isma can now walk in, but uh, this is not his territory or his jungle, even with DOS there. Band advantage for the side of Fnatic. Razork should just be able to clear the objective out. It is three grubs to the side of SK, but 1.5k gold lead for Fnatic on top of the Infernal Dragon. Feels pretty damn good at this point. Now, bot lane has to push out, so potential avenue if they can manage to get there in time to hold the wave. Potentially for a gank, but instead, no, Vi get a path topside to her red buff, and then maybe a gank top could be good. There's no teleports top lane either, so any kind of gank would stick. They wouldn't be able to TP back. And Irrelevant's really strong right now. Yeah. Oscar has to be careful. Nice backstep from Relevant, purely positive trade. Oscar getting very little damage back. But of course, Relevant did just TP. Oscar's TP will up, be up and available much, much sooner. So can play a, a bit more forward in this lane if he wants to. Still has two biscuits as well. I think I'm just going to path down to bot side. You can see pings coming down on the waves, down and bot. So trying to make a play on those waves, potentially. Nice knockback. back. Oscar. It's going to be fine. Poppy gets so many resistances when she's low HP, so it, it doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, you can't be bursted. I hate so, Poppy. I hate yeah. Set. So many of these champions <laughs> that just get incredibly, incredibly tanky when they're low, when you feel like you have the all-in mm. if you're not packing Ignite as a top laner, are infuriating. And good for Oscar there. Has the shield, lays down the Q, walks away, lets the extra damage proc. So good patience. That said, the sustain of Irrelevant at this point yeah. in the game, still very hard to deal with. So Razzle's level 6 now. XX does have sums, but they have a small window where they can pull the trigger and, and the flash isn't quite up yet. So I think they might fish for something. Problem is there's a pink ward there spotting out Razork, so they'd see him walk over it. Maybe. They haven't quite fished for it. And they don't see the pink. Yeah, it's oh, not. Oh, that's so much value. Okay, now they wait. It's only level oh, five back to kick. I, this is a bit of a tricky position though, because SK don't really want to step forward here. So while Razork does spend a little bit of his time, SK spend the same amount of time just being ready for the counterplay. Yeah, so they had a small window where flashes were still down for another 10 seconds, but they couldn't quite find it. Now, Humanoid. Iski. Oh, damage. Being massively chunked, irrelevant. Oh, there's, the the there's the dominance. Oscar! Just one tapped on the top side. Man felt good about the trades. Should not have felt so good about the all-in. Razork fishing now for Niski. Going manatee hunting. And Irrelevant can come down if he wants to. That's a long chase for Razork there. He does have ult. A Q into an ult, he could. He just, but he doesn't know. Mm. <laughs> Niski's running for his life, but Razork is running for crab. There's a bit of a, there's a misunderstanding here. You're good engage. Lightning Craft comes out. Exekick now running. Ignite still ticking. Jun backing away. Exekick blinking. Health bar. Noah desperately trying to get this wave in, and Exekick forced wow. to back. He cannot stick around. That's really rough because now they get grubs and the winning bolt side and some plates. So winning across the map for Fnatic. Exekick having to pop all summoners too. So Fnatic could send Vi down as well when she has ultimate. Potentially gank Exekick again with no sums. Interrupt there on the grub attempt, though. They managed to get one on the side of Fnatic. But if SK get yeah. five here, it'll feel pretty good, especially for Irrelevant, who's now significantly far ahead topside. Look at that itemization. Sundered Sky completed for an Ecton to a Bami Cinder Ninja Tabbies. This lane is going to be unplayable yeah, for Oscar. That's really rough, because any kind of mana Oscar burns to try and poke will just get healed up every single auto attack. So, <laughs> Manaless <laughs> Champion with Sundered Sky. <laughs> what a fun lane opponent. Yeah. You cannot chip him out. You will never get him out of this lane. It's almost not worth casting spells if you're Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> just a pacifism, you know? Mm. Take the pacifist approach. You're just there to hit the minions. Yeah, but what, I'd like to see, what I'd like to see now is if Razzle just beeline down bot side. I think Varus has to crash a wave, so... On that wave crash, potentially just pressing R, it's so simple to make a play on. Definitely an option. It's highlighted here, Irrelevant, holding on to lane pressure. Well, see, he can get over-aggressive here and get punished. Poppy, obviously, yeah. the queen of turning plays around. So there's still a good trade in favor of Oscar there briefly oh, before the healing starts to come in. And Humanoid running mid lane right now, not giving Niski the space whatsoever to farm up. Look at the massive CS discrepancy in mid, but top side, ulti comes in for Relevant. As long as Oscar lives here, that's a pretty positive cooldown trade. Taking Dominus out of the equation makes the rest of his life so much easier. Yeah, base damage from Poppy still kind of keeping it relatively even, but now 
The sustain is probably just going to come through and he's going to be completely fine. Oscar, if he needs to, he can just recall and TP back. That's exactly what Relevant's going to do now. Just recall and walk. Well, actually, he's staying. I wonder if he thinks this is a dive angle. Good stun. Good upfront damage. Nah, bone plating was a bit too much, I think. Yeah, grass proc too. Tough to get through that poppy health bar, man. Again. This is a champion where you really got to read the kit. There's so many resistances. Yep. You got random shields coming in. You got a grasp. You got the slow from the, like, there's, ugh. I love Poppy, but watching a laning Poppy just looks <laughs> infuriating. Jungle Poppy, fun. Laning Poppy, miserable experience. So Dragon's up now, very soon anyway. And both top laners will have TP for it. So this could end up being an explosive 5v5. At the very least, Oscar's TP's up now, and Irrelevance isn't. Charge on the Vault Breaker. Charge out on the Vault Breaker. And Noah right now, yeah. with the static shiv means that Fnatic can just push this in whenever they want. Holding the wave right here, I'm pretty sure they win the 3v3 unless they immediately lock Noah down, which is a tough task. There it now is. the TP coming in. Ulti to try to disengage, flash forward to the Vault Breaker. Lightning Crash immediately coming out. Dot's now gonna be in trouble, but it's a clean turn back with the ult from Dot. Do they have the damage? Do they have the follow-up? Exit kick off to the side, just getting murdered. The damage not there from SK. The cooldowns connect, but Fnatic have the man advantage. Now the package from Niski. And if he does not ult in here, they get nothing back. He can't do it, can he? They're just too high HP bar. The HP bars are way too chunky right now. And Exekick, he had no flash. So it's just as simple as pressing R on Vi, and then you have TP advantage from the Karma, which we highlighted. No one can match. Irrelevant couldn't. He, his TP is only up now. Same with Niski's. The only strong point right now for SK is Irrelevant on the top side, but Noah's, or not Noah, excuse me, Oscar is not letting him get anything else. Package is still there. Niski going into the pit, going out of the pit. Not where he wants to be. Oh, 27, 27. Okay. All right, they got it. That's all that matters, but maybe not the greatest smite. 27 HP on that dragon. But As the rocket comes in. Think like this. So I was just looking at this ward down in the bot side, and it was so obvious to me, but the problem was irrelevant. Uh, sorry, Oscar in and couldn't TP. So I was like, who's going to TP here? And it was just turns out it's the Karma. You see Niski's on his way to try and match, but his TP wasn't up. And despite this huge rel ultimate, you know, you just have to press R and Exekick. He has no flash. The big thing there is, I mean, at this point in the game, it's not the game the Fnatic played yesterday. Vi is not incredibly far behind. She's even yep. with the opposition. And that's still just a Varus all on his lonesome. You don't have any counterplay, buddy. The second their cooldowns go somewhere else, the second Doss tries to disengage the rest of the people, Vi gets that isolated 1v1. And I mean, we've seen that episode of Arcane. He's yeah. just one of those dudes in the metal suits just getting the hell punched out of him. Yeah. I'm a corky hater, man. I think this champion takes so long to ramp this up, is especially when you pair it up with the Maokai. I feel like Fnatic can just do absolutely anything they want on the map because Humanoid always has priority. He can move always, like you saw his TP advantage there because of his lane leads. Yeah. And this is, I think, more of the vision of what Fnatic had in mind yesterday when they locked yeah. in the Karma. This is more of what they wanted to get. And I, I think that the outscale angle with the Corky is one I respect, but certainly one that has made it a little tricky for SK to make these kind of counterplays in the early game. Good ward placement bot side, opens up that angle for the TP, and now, you know, Two 3k gold lead for Fnatic, double Drake stacked. Like, yes, there are five grubs for SK, but the only person who can get pushed anywhere is irrelevant, and he's not going to be able to dive a poppy again. Yeah, you could see the bot lane is actually shifting up. They know that their only play that SK have right now is to cross map these grubs. So they're actually just going to head mid, and <laughs> they can shift everyone up here. Now, Poppy holds down bot side because he's undivable. So, really nice bit of map play. Well, they might just put that to the test because Oscar spams laugh. All right, SK, is Poppy undivable? I think the answer is yes, but she does not clear the wave fast enough. Yeah. Well, if they manage to take down the tower, they're just going to have to slow there. burn. Now they can turn on Oscar. Alti comes in from the Varus. All right, Poppy Undivable, but the tower is gone. Oscar, you need to get the hell out. <laughs> that was your cue to leave. But in the meantime, we have to keep our eyes on the mid lane because Fnatic are just making another play. They've already gotten the Herald. Razor coming in with a Vault Breaker. Relevant here to cover. So tower picked up by SK in exchange for the Herald for Fnatic, but Humoroid is also pushing in on the top lane at the same time. So yes, SK have a counter punch of one single play on the bottom side, but Fnatic making two plays at the same time. Yeah, taking both bot, uh, mid and top tower, their cross mapping tools are so much better because of the amount of numbers that SK committed. But they also don't get a tower, they get the Herald. So they have kind of yeah. the alluring promise of a future tower. I mean, so, and, the, and SK get the kill. So all things considered, it's... It's not that bad for SK. They get the gold a little bit closer. Yeah. It Leverage is also, five grubs. It's also Herald before the next dragon, right? Which you can use and then, you know, draw a bunch of attention. That way you move into river first and you can secure the dragon, right? All the vision in the river. So I think I think I prefer the Herald here, despite it, you know, first blood tower going over to the side of SK. 
I think you're right. I think, but we're gonna have to see how Fnatic choose to use it. If it is just that pressure point to ensure that they have mid prial, ensure that they have control before this third Drake, set themselves up for soul point. Seems the likely use case. As Oscar now just catching bot wave is gonna have to be careful about how far he steps up when he doesn't have information on SK, but they can see a decent number of members on the top side of the map. Are they gonna send four people down bot side? Irrelevant has to be careful here. This now, is... He is full HP. He's got wave clear. Got wave clear. Yes. There's a TP now coming in too. But this is five members of Fnatic committed for this Crocodile. The counterplay is already happening in the mid lane. Dominus coming out. Good bit of damage. Healing there from Irrelevant. Buying Ooh. as much time as he can. Now trying to double dash out to safety. That's the slice. Has a bit of extra healing from Cole the Meek. Buys a lot of time, but mid lane tower. Yep. I think it's just going to fall here. Noah isn't enough on his own. If he steps up, he's just going to get taken out. The rest of the team now is running in full speed. Niski already pushing in top. If they get mid lane tower here, it's a terrible trade for Fnatic that they clear the wave just in time. Niski will grab a tower top, but mid will go down. Now, going in, the disengage is there. This time around, execute slowly for another second, but there's a lightning crash from Noah. They're trying desperately to keep him alive, but Fnatic are still stronger. Niski now TPing in. He's going to get one kill. He shuts down Noah. They're going to get another oh, no, one, but the knockup from Jun is clean as Alistair is on fire. Niski's a living, burning, but he will survive for now. Now Razzler gonna go right back out to safety. The ball breaker there, but this blinking health bars. No more members, no more resources for Fnatic. TP now coming back in. Irrelevant there in the party and the fight just will not stop. Razzler still living. Razzler trying to get one back. The sidestep is clean, but the shutdown is there. 600 gold to Isma. And it all starts with Irrelevant surviving for so damn long in the bot side. It means SK can cross map and threaten both top and mid. So what you have is instead of Fnatic committing to the bot side siege with that Rift Herald, they have to, you know, scramble. They have to go defend the mid tower and then it's just, it devolves, right? You find Exa kick with the Zeri engage, but then he's dead after that. They managed to collapse, and despite some really big Alistair knockups. Yeah, I shall lose the fight. What the hell? Just they commit five members bot side. It takes them forever to get the kill because it's Renekton and well played yeah. by Irrelevant by time. But the the fact that Niski goes top, eats all of that tower gold, then TPs mid and gets kills and gets shuts downs. Look at his individual he's 1.2k ahead. Well, they're contesting. He's got package as well. Fnatic have to be incredibly careful. Noah is powerful, but is he enough? Knockback from Oscar. Could be good here. Niski trying to find the angle. Humanoid now in trouble. Lightning crash coming in for Noah. They try to disengage Noah on the backside, but Niski really not able to find an angle to attack, and slowly but surely, SK are taking over the fight because finally, Exekick just gets a free hit. Humanoid on the run. Mantra Q, good. Arrow not going to connect. Humanoid buys a brief moment. The Malignant's already there for Niski. Shield now coming in from the lock, and Isma on the chase. Roots coming in, the lock up there, and down goes oh. Humanoid Fnatic. They dominated those early game exchanges, but just like that, SK are back in the game. So the problem was that Vi was so far away. Razok was so far away from the Dragon. They tried to soft contest to buy time for Razok to come, but instead you just end up dying as Poppy. We take a look at this, right? Look how far away Razok is on that Vi. I think what should have happened here is they had an insane angle to cross map topside with the Poppy. They could have demolished Proct and taken a bunch of towers, but instead they're soft contesting or just hard contesting as four. And in the end, you just get so chunked before your Vi comes. You don't get a Poppy ult. You don't get any kind of good circumstance to fight. And I think you just let go of the third Dragon cross map top. Over eager. And you can see there's a lot of instances where clearly Humanoid is strong. It could have been much closer, but Fnatic just not playing together. Yeah. A very split call overall, maybe thinking that they could survive longer than they did. Of course, this is just a bit of cleanup. Yeah. But I, so I, many of the fights have gone well because they just pop Exekick right at the start and they're at a man advantage, right? And this time I felt like their cooldowns were so scattered. It's kind of similar to what we saw yesterday. Of course, the early game, much, much, much better, but a similar story where this, the fights are very split. You got Humanoid on one side, you got kind of Noah on the other. Carry's not really able to play together and it's it's a tricky thing to, to get through. Yeah, I think it was definitely for sure, uh, like you're saying, um, a case of overestimating how tanky you are and how much time you could buy because they definitely wanted a fight angle after the Dragon. Regardless though, just going to go back to a fairly neutral game state. There's no dry, uh, no teleports up for either team, so they're committing topside for that tier two. And there's the Herald. Not used for third Drake as we expected, but might be used for top tier two. Is Relevant still trading here? Not quite as initially Renekton favored. Uh, yeah, the item spikes, of course. Still one and a half for both sides as it's evened out a bit. But the tower will drop extra money into the back pocket of Humanoid for the fights to come. Two items on Noah getting closer to the third. Looks like he's going for Navori this time around instead of an IE. Mm -hmm. yeah. So second item could come in for the Karma fairly oh, soon. Armor Pen instead, actually. That's something we don't see very often, right? Normally we see Navori uh, third, I believe. Uh, but I think, I mean, you look at the Maokai's itemization, double armor items. Yeah. I think a lot of these fights will be decided. I mean, if they're played how both sides want to, right front to back, by how quickly you can kill enemy front line. Which is why I like the fact that they gave the tier two gold to Humanoid, because now he gets to buy his second item, Horizon Focus, and that way he can shred through the only armor you know, only armor Maokai. And I think 
A lot of people say that Karma generally doesn't do that much damage, but when you see her fire, like, five Mantra Qs... I appreciate Karma. that. I'm one of those lots of people. <laughs> I am so tired of this champion having one ability. There it is. There's the one ability. Followed up with what might look like another ability. Don't be baited. But massive healing comes in from the Renekton as Irrelevant still continues to buy time. But only two members this time committed in the bottom lane. Already, though, you can see in the picture and picture the Renekton takes forever to kill because they don't do enough damage. SK are right onto the objective. There's no TP for Humanoid. Oscar has TP, though. He could TP in from the side. There is a TP ward there on that. Oh, SK, what's the call? You just spent so much, you lost so much already. You need to turn back and try to get something. Is it the Baron? Razzark in the back of the pit. TP now coming in from Oscar. They can SK? turn onto the Nash. It it's just turned back and burned the objective. SK, it's no! A okay. Oh my God! Fanatic fans. They wouldn't right now. That's watching. it. That's the that's the three second gif I need to describe this game. Okay. I'm lose. I got lost in the sauce. Let's take a breath. Mm. Mostly me, but you're all included in this. We can pretend like it's a group moment of insanity there. 4K gold lead for Fnatic. Two drakes to two drakes. Three items for Noah. Two and a half. Jun not going to be in too much trouble. Tries to turn. A bit of a trade of cooldowns here. Razork looking Ooh. for the setup. Ulti going wide from Execute is big. Maokai disengages. The ult clipping. Razork is big. He goes in. He's unstoppable. The fall of damage not quite there. Yes, it is. Noah and Humanoid finally playing together in this choke point. Doing so much work. The retreat now coming in. Niski needs to get the hell out. Fnatic, they see their opportunity. Flash forward from Noah. He's going to finish one. Can he parkour right over the wall to go for the next instead? Focusing his sights on Irrelevant. The crocodiles evaded them for so long. Irrelevant now trying to turn it back. Steadfast presence there, Relevant waiting as long as he can. He can double dash back through the wave. Will do so. Noah now chasing, but the movement speed is there for Fnatic. They've got the lead. Three items on their carry. They know how to close here. SK, that was their last chance, and they overstep. But but how did Exekick end up in that position? He has no flash, and he was alone in the jungle. Now, you see that blue ward right there in that in, in that position right there. That's how they knew where Exekick was, and they pulled the trigger with the Vi ultimate. But take a look at this. Watch how separate Exekick is from his team. He's trying to potentially catch the wave in mid, but that means he gets caught by the Vi from Razork. The ult misses, so now they just have to press R. Yeah, clean sidestep, of course, from Razork on the initial ulti, and then the fall damage is there. You know, Humanoid initially, or not Humanoid, excuse me, Razork initially, looks like he's just gonna go down without much else, but Humanoid and Noah are close enough. The follow-up is there, and this is the point where Karma feels so oppressive. When you start to get ahead in a fight, a Zarya and a Karma are always gonna chase you down, are always gonna do that damage. Yep, cleaning up, another fight win for Fnatic. And it's just a case of, I think, on SK, people on different pages, right? Someone trying to catch Midwave, the rest of the team trying to death push. Yeah, and the problem is, is that they were behind, and they found a way back in. They had that fantastic fight around Drake. It was really good. Fnatic Overstep and SK were there to punish. But then the Baron, rough. And then the, the series of yeah. bots. I mean, this game has just been all over the place, but it's Fnatic who are consistently finding better fights. Yes, they've also made mistakes, but when push comes to shove, again, they're the team showing up, finding the advantages, putting themselves in more favorable positions. And SK now at a massive deficit. Not favored in the coming fight, unless they can find a perfect angle onto the backside. Third Dragon, mid-prior favorite for Fnatic, so now they're going to start a Baron immediately. You can see they're just playing point guard. They're not letting SK come through. Australian Assault comes out as well. Nisky. In that situation, I think you just hold it. Let the 15-second cooldown come back through, but gets Niski out for a moment. Doesn't amount to too much. The objective focused here. Good damage coming in onto Oscar. Fnatic now going to turn. Baron at 3.6k health. Reset now coming in courtesy of the Maokai. Off a bit more damage. Niski on touch on the backside. Maybe he can get something done. The Gorky's just not enough. Irrelevant still standing. Noah Godlike. And we know what Zeri does. When she gets this kind of lead, and it's just slaughter everybody on the side of SK. John gonna grab that kill. Fnatic descending, punishing SK there. Once again, Execute getting dropped at the start of the fight instantaneously. Fnatic know exactly what they're doing. 12 and 2. Noah, Noah, Noah cleaning up again in every single fight. And it's just a beautiful bit of macro play from Fnatic, forcing objectives. That's the second fight in a row. They picked fights against SK with Execute not having flash. Oscar flashing in. Niski zooming past, just trying to delete the, the wave. Razor incredibly low. Niski going back into the tower. He's shooting fish in a barrel. He can't quite hit. That one does connect. One more rocket. A little bit of poke. Everybody now trying to body block. The Corky desperately praying for the ammunition to come back. Fnatic will walk away. They got a little overeager. They got a little excited. And Ping is coming down now. Irrelevant does have TP if Fnatic start this, so they can't do it. That might be sole point for SK. Humanoid and Oscar can TP back if they recall. Niski. Noah there. They force Noah to reset now. It should just be their Drake. I don't think Fnatic need to get over eager though. If they just take a breath and play for the next objectives, they're fine. Soul Point doesn't have to be. But they're sticking around. Yeah, I think they want to. Oscar could TP in if he wants to as well. This is third dragon. 
It might not be the most important all the time, but I think you can contest this. Doesn't look like they want to. Yeah, look, they're playing to the top side. I think they were maybe more worried about a potential Baron rush. Willing to concede the third Drake, but not willing to concede the Baron. Now they'll get first setup on that Baron. Yeah. First move, and we saw what happened last time. But crucially, SK, uh, Exekick has flashed this time, right? So any kind of engage, at the very least, he can kind of soft disengage versus the Vi. It's going to be very hard for him to position in these fights, because every single fight, Fnatic have been out for him. Yeah. And similarly, Fnatic right now, given how strong Razork and Noah are, only need to commit two members to taking down this Baron. Noah does more than enough damage, so SK are on a timer. They need to force a fight in the next 10 seconds, so that Baron is gone. He's stole. Exekick, is he not? He flashes away to sidestep. That's big. Exekick flash now down. Oscar and buying a bit more time. The objective is already gone. Baron is down. If they do not win this fight immediately, the game will end in favor of Fnatic. SK advantage thus far. Flashing from Rovit, looking to lock down Noah, but immediately Razork turns and protects his carry. Jun buying as much space as he can. Doss with some good lockdown, but Jun is so damn tanky. It's not Alistair in the lane anymore. Level 13, two points in an ultimate, more than enough to make sure he can get home. And Fnatic walk out with four members wearing purple. I think Isma, he just pulled the trigger a little bit too late. He needed to press ult and just run in there, but I guess he didn't know how fast the Baron was going down. But you could see the damage coming out from the Quarky now. It's actually scaling up, so not going to be a walk in the park for Fnatic. But you can imagine now, they just need to send five people bot side. The last tier two is up and available for them to take some freestanding gold. Yeah, the good news is, again, Niski. Powerful wave killer tools, powerful poke tools. You've got Isma to try to push them off a wave. Maybe you can buy more time, but you look at the start of this fight, and it's, again, Noah and Razor focused on the objective. So, no no flashes, sorry, no ultimate available there. It's, it's Isma, he just does it so slowly. They needed to run in there with the ultimate from the Maokai, but then take a look at how tanky that Renekton is. They can't burst through him. The Vite ults him. I mean, it's the Alistair, too, right? I, they're just, the front line is so much stronger right now. Maokai should be really tanky, but it's hard for him to get into the front line. Jun just goes in, instantly headbutt pull of ulti, takes effectively zero damage. Loses only like 50% of his health bar, tanking four members of SK. Now an easy siege for Fnatic. Now, the thing is, SK do have a decent amount of wave clear with the Corky Rockets, with the Corky Q and the Varus coming in too. SK, do they want to fight here or do they want to back off? Done there from Irrelevant. Noah again just free firing. Ulti coming in from the Maokai, but the knockback is there. Isma's out of the fight briefly. Irrelevant already forced to use the Dominus. Humanoid eyes on the prize here, playing for the objective. X kick free hitting. He does a lot of damage to Oscar, but not enough to burst him down before the inhibitor drops. So Fnatic, much more disciplined, clearly learning. They, you know, they knew they overstepped in some of the previous plays. This time around, they go exactly just for the inhibitor and look to take nothing else. Yep. Using their ultimate's tower, but now just rinse and repeat. They can do it all over again. Go top side, play for that because. Down a bit of vision, maybe hoping to catch Fnatic as they set up to take topside. Razor clearing out the two control wards. Sharing space together in that brush. Um, six items coming in for Noah here. He is massive. Now, Noah is absolutely crushing these fights. Can I go back and siege topside? Slow burn here. They just need to play with time. Those super minions are going to keep flooding the base. All they have to do is play chip damage at this tower. Do they just group full fiber? Do they send someone mid to usher in the wave? It looks like they're just going to be content with the supers pushing that one forward. Don't need the Baron buff. But Fnatic... Likely not even going to be able to crash this wave completely with only 10 seconds left on the Baron buff. So SK are on a soft timer here. They need to defend this and potentially engage before the super minions flood the base. You can see a relevant ulting already for Fury. Yep, flashing from Razak though. He knows XK doesn't have flash and they just delete the enemy carry! Gone. Point and click, seek and destroy. Niski, the last one standing, the last one who could do the damage necessary. Flash away for the Mantra Q, the inner flame. Forcing Niski oh, back, but the taxi play from Jun is clean. This man's an Alistair master. Just punishing left and right. Fnatic, one or two mistakes, but overall an incredibly clean game versus SK. Happy to have an extra win in their belt. Because of this win, BDS will, of course, lock playoffs, will lock top eight. They could be the big Fnatic fans today. And throughout the entire game, constantly punishing that lack of flash on Exekick every single time that it was down. Even with 10 seconds left to go on that flash, they would pull the trigger, force an objective to force him to face check. And then sometimes, kind of inconsistency in decision making with SK. Some people trying to catch mid wave, some people trying to death push. Yeah. You're getting picked. I mean, I, I think it was always a little bit tough there when they lock in the Varus with the buy up on the opposite yeah. side. You were going to make the game a little bit more difficult. But ultimately, Fnatic played better. Player of the game at LEC on X. Razork, Noah, or Jun are your options. Jun had a fire Alistair game. That's yeah, all I'll say. say that. uh, Noah, obviously, though, doing. I wouldn't be surprised if he was 50% of the team's damage. We'll see how much Karma Mantra Q managed to do. But for now, we're going to head to a quick break. When we return, Humanoid on the desk 
after the break for some more Absolute Cinema. Red Bull gives you wings. that he has, but actually desperately needs to get a kill back. Flashing oh, away from Johnny, wants to get the auto, but no, it's a finish of jump! Exodia! No. Oh, turn back! Hiski, oh, damage. Being massively Chancarelevant, oh, there's, the there's the Dominus. Oscar, just one tap on the top.
Varus is dead. 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 Varus and welcome back to the EDC. We wanted to keep the movie review vibe here. So earlier today, we want, we showed you some movie clips from Fnatic and we have the main character himself, <laughs> Marek Humanoid. Thank welcome you so welcome. much for joining us. Thank you. We want to keep the spirit of what we did in Ready Check. So basically, we associated some Fnatic plays with movie, um, movie posters. Here, I kind of want to play a game of movie critics. So let's call ourselves the Rotten Honey Fruits. Not to be mistaken okay. with any other website, of no. course. And it's no really simple. Place. We're going to rank some plays from one to five. We're going to have three plays. Of course, uh, one is for could have done better, let's say. And five is for the best plays that you can get. So let's go with the first one. I get Butland Skirmish. Let's go. Let's go. Let's watch it. Alrighty. Let's go. That's a screen. Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? It's a real cinema. So let's look at this. What happened here, Takda? I mean, this looks pretty good so far, right? You get Fnatic, great TP ward in the bot side, uh, yourself able to come in on top of it. And then, I mean, even the fact that you just about managed to escape with your health, I mean, that was pretty exciting. That was pretty thrilling. Uh, I mean, for me, of course, uh, it was, uh, I think it was the mid laner calling for the TP behind bot lane. So he pretty much set up all mm -hmm. this entire play by himself. And I would give this a, a solid five. Solid right. five that we're starting really strong here. So certified sweet here in our matter. Uh, second play, shall we? I think it's going to be... Oh, yeah. You know what? Let's play it. Speaks oh, for our itself. horror clip, our horror clip. Yeah. It's a horror <laughs> clip. It's a horror <laughs> clip, but kind of comedic as well. It's kind of like scary movie. You know? yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. supposed to be scary, but it's hilarious as well. Yeah, because Oscar could have well. just altered the wave there and actually would have probably been all right. But oh, and no. even the little bit of BM underneath the tower as well wasn't exactly the best. And then he ends up falling at the end of it. It's it's a little bit unfortunate for Oscar to do that yeah. one. Uh, well, so in this one, I think uh, something with top laners and thinking they cannot get off. Uh, <laughs> he was too overconfident. He was saying, guys, I can't get off. It's fine. Invincible. Uh, obviously, it was wrong. So yeah. what, what is the rating for this one then? Uh, this is a two out of five. Yeah. Yeah, I'd even right. go one. Rotten I'd even go one, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, that was not great. great. Yeah, yeah not, not, not the great prep, not the great like rehearsal for the parts. It's sad for Oscar. <laughs> the last one we have, maybe? Yeah. Let's play it and see what we have. As we're going to watch so this another. Was, uh, yeah. Starting from top lane, but I think we're going to transition yeah, to Yeah, this kind of became an action here. comedy, yeah. which I really enjoyed, which was, you know, you got the play, which was like a really nice 2v1 on the bottom side of the map, and you're like, oh, this is sick. But then you kind of see SK on the opposite side and thinking, oh, we can do Baron. But halfway through, they kind of realize they can't actually finish this off and then just forget that they've leashed it for you. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, if I'm judging it from their side, I would give this a solid one uh, because <laughs> they, yeah, I don't know what okay. they are thinking, doing Baron. Uh, they don't even have that much damage on it. Uh, of course, we knew exactly what was going to happen, so uh, yeah. well played from us. Oh my yeah. God. Great mind games, the yeah. mind control was there. It's a great play yeah. from Fnatic, but a rotten honey fruit on the side of SK here. Yeah, I mean, look, it's been a bit of a, yeah. a horror state for SK for the last couple of weeks. Their mid game has not been great, and uh, I don't know, it feels like they need a new director. They need something that can fix this, because it's not yeah. been great. As I said in Ready Check, I'm a huge fan, Marek, and I wanted to recreate it's another so of these pictures <laughs> here, as you know them, so if you can hold this here to the jet behind us, actually. The camera is there, if you want to look here. Oh. And... Beautiful. Absolute cinema. <laughs> Casters, oh. over to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Guys, I want to be honest, that movie sucked. Um, <laughs> that was a rough one. Congrats to Fnatic. Like, they played great. If, if they really did mind control SK, if they mm. developed mutant powers, evolved genetically in the 20 minutes or so of that game, yeah. Very different story. Banger movie. But if it looked exactly like it did, which was one team leashing Baron to 3k <laughs> health, walking away and giving it away, then that's rough. That's not, you know, it's not my favorite script for a movie, I think, ever. I think uh, on top of that, the other plot twists with invading the jungle and then dying on tier two and the back and forth Those are some throws. crazy twists. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like M. Night Shyamalan is out here watching these Fnatic Big SK fun. games like, oh, 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 I never would have thought of that. That, that one's tricky. That said, Rumble Band away. 
Zaya, Ash, Bandwave as we get into our game for Team Vitality versus Giant X. That is not surprising, not much of a twist. By first pick, based on our previous game, also would not be surprising. Reminder, Vitality with five wins are locked in. Giant X are still fighting after their win versus Rogue to lock themselves in, but their schedule is tough. It's Vitality today, Team Heretics tomorrow, uh, and of course, BDS have locked playoffs due to that previous Fnatic win. Every win does matter here for GX, especially Giant X. Uh, something that's really important for both teams is they both love to Leah Vi. We saw it a bunch from Giant X yesterday, and what's really interesting is the dynamic between these two teams. We know Vitality absolutely love to play early game, really explosively, whereas Giant X, they like to scale. And I think you were casting the game yesterday where first blood was at 18 minutes. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. I don't think that was Giant X's fault. That's true. I'm going to put that one on Rogue. Sorry, Rogue. Lines up more with, with their MO. But we'll see if Giant X... Yeah. I think the one thing that Giant X have done, we've seen them do a few times this split, and it's not my favorite look for them because it requires very specific things in the draft. One of those things usually being a champion like Ash, which is banned away, but it's these high prio bot lanes. They try to leverage that tempo, try to leverage those early advantages to get a lot across the map mm -hmm. without having to you know risk these bigger fights. But on the upside, you're playing against Team Vitality, who will risk anything for anything. They will send five members in for a Scuttle Crab. They are not afraid to fight at a moment's notice. Yeah. Some OP picks still available. Callista's still open. I think uh, you could just lock topside here with Ari Renekton type deal. Smolder! I don't think we've seen this in a little while. I feel like ever since G2 lost against Fnatic with like five gajillion Smolder stacks, yeah. people are maybe less immediately excited about the Smolder, more willing to see some of the weaknesses. But the big thing we talked about in week one is, look, if you have counter pick support, so uh, there's room for this Smolder to really take over. So I think what the, the conversation Vitality have had is, you know, we don't think that Giant X are good enough to snowball and make the game volatile enough to get to Dragon cleanly before the Smolder can take over. Because Callista's open, right? You have a lot of tools still to make bot lane volatile, secure Dragons, and secure that win condition, and accelerate the game, but they just don't think Giant X is capable. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a Callista lock in for Patrick. He's definitely a Callista player. Draven's up too. Just depends what their angle is to be able to, you know, make bot volatile. Varus could work as well. Yeah, Brom not bad to Draven. Could be a solid option. We'll see how Giant X want to approach this one. Kogma, Kogma Brom, of course, the G2 classic counter. But a lot of hovers happening here. Not sure which of these are Jackie's inclination, which of these are Patrick's. It definitely has to be something that can make bot messy. You really, really want to make bot side messy. Versus Smolder, so then you can eventually pop summoners and turn into dives as well. Yeah, you do. and this is kind of the uh, the thing about Smolder in a draft, right? Is that if you can't outscale, you're not, or you're not yeah. going to more likely than not outscale. So you usually need to pick something that is going to be proactive. Rakan, all right. Obviously, Braum doesn't really have any early tools to immediately interrupt Rakan as he dashes in. But the follow-up damage is always kind of the tricky bit. Zayas also already banned away, which limits that pairing. Yeah. Because you know, uh, yeah, you Rakan, you can go in, you can get the knockup. But if the Unbreakable is there, you're probably not hitting the Smolder. Yeah, I think Renekton rises up in priority now um, for both teams because it works really well with the single target that they both have. Aatrox ban, classic blind pick that they're denying away. Could also be setting up something like the Gragas, which works really well, uh, really poorly into oh. the Oh, there it is. All right, guys. I'm just saying that's a dangerous drinking game to play. I respect it immensely, but be careful. Stay safe. Yeah, so blind picks, Gragas and Cassante, I think are definitely the ones up there. And then you counter pick stuff like Nah into it. Oduamne, he also loves his rumble, but that's been taken away too. So, how do you ramble this composition for both teams? It's a damn good question. I'm still just worried about the AD, man. I, I don't know what you really yeah, do I, here. I think it's Callista. I think you have to go something like Callista, Rakan isn't a bad duo. You have insane team fight as well, and that way you could snowball the game. I just think there's so much pressure on Giant X to out execute and to be the team that are making things happen. Yeah. And given how many little hiccups we've seen in so many of their games that normally feel very rehearsed early game, they feel like a very well practiced team in terms of early game planning. It's a tall task against Vitality, who are absolutely willing to, yeah. to skill check you. But the Callista you mentioned, Varus, the other kind of lane yeah. dominant pick they could go for. Problem is, Callista is also soft uh, countered by Vi as well, right? With that lockdown. Yep. So it's, it feels like a really <laughs> nice rotation that Vitality have. <laughs> yeah, team is kind of, you know, you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't right now. So credit to Team Vitality on this first three. Yeah. I think, you know, Braum blind isn't my favorite thing, but it does limit a lot of the options that are conventionally good into Smolder. Yeah. This is new, by the way. We don't often see Odo get R5. Very often, he's blind picking his comfort top laner, stuff like the Rumble, stuff like the Renekton, and, you know, he never, ever gets but what is What does he have up his sleeve? Oh, my God, is it? No, no, sorry. These are these are classic just covers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. Don't excited. be baited. Don't be no, baited. I mean, I'm so getting baited. It's not photons. I'm getting again. baited. I was I was thinking. <laughs> Might be time. No chance. No chance. Good. Ooh. That's really good. 
That's Syndra's. new. That's like old school. Old yeah. school answer. Tilia hates control mages. Yes. Right? Syndra can harass through the wave. Tilia can't. So she just gets blasted. On top of that being a great pairing of Vi, because you should both press R. Yeah. Also, you can, interrupt, nice. you can interrupt Recon engages. You can interrupt Relegages. It's so easy yeah. to just QE in their direction when a fight starts. Photon might be forced onto the Cassante duty here, just the relative safe blind pick. And now I think a lot of pressure on Odo's shoulders yeah. to pick something that can really definitively Udia? win top. Udia Rek'Sai. It could be. It oh, be. there we go, Dracos, okay. Well, I mean, they just picked, that was the context that was picked last time for, for BB, right? It was picked earlier. The yeah. Rek'Sai, I mean, he's considering it. Is it going to be their option? Oh, you please. You're probably going to get one tapped by Syndra if you're not don't have at least a it, little it would... bit of gold under your belt. Oh, no. I think we got invaded. No! It would have fit the bill, right? A weak side top laner that can scale in his own right. Sometimes, you know, people like the flavor of the month, and sometimes people like yeah. vanilla ice cream. And Oda Wamne is a vanilla ice cream man today. It's, we'll see how, classic Odo. how that works out for him. That's a Godo picking his comfort picks. I mean, like, as far as top laners are concerned, you have those top laners that play one of every single champion. Odo, he plays like five of the same one over and over again. Yeah. He's there to support the team, you know? And I, and I yeah. respect that. That's the angle sometimes. You don't always get to pick for yourself. You don't always get to pick the spicy Rek'Sai. So it's really important for Giant X to make bot side volatile. They have a really, really good tools to do it. Great counter pick with Rakan into the Braum. You have insane trading tools with the Callista into the Smolder as well. You've got to make trades happen. You've got to pop flashes. You've got to dive bot lane, convert that into dragons and dragon soul point, and hopefully accelerate the game to the point where the Smolder isn't online, but you have soul. It's a difficult task. Bot lane is the strong point as you highlight on the upside yeah. for Vitality. Mid jungle, lethal. The Vi set up with a Syndra post level six. Easy, easy pickings. That said, Syndra champion who, if you can get her flash out early, really suffers. Doesn't have really reliable defensive tools outside of the scatter of the week. So we'll see who can find the edge here. And of course, for Giant X, this is big. They need to win both games. Uh, and really, it's uh, you know one step at a time. One mm -hmm. day at a time. Vitality, Team Heretics coming off. So this is step two. They took down Rogue. It's a three game week. Need to win all three to bring it home. And Vitality already sitting pretty, already locked in playoffs and drafting with a lot of confidence. It's a tall task ahead of Giant X. Absolutely. I think Team Heretics as well tomorrow. Yep. Really rough games. But it's time to get into the game. Let's get started. And on to the rift we go. Probably our only moment of peace here at the start of this game. I don't want to cast or curse it, but as you highlighted, bot yeah. lane set to be very, very explosive. So I think you have avenues to play as Vitality post six, but pre six, you're gonna be a little bit of a stick in the mud. You can't really do too much. You haven't got great setup, you know. You don't really want to do stuff too much down bot side with Smolder. So I'm really looking at what Peach can do. Rel, a champion that is very good at invading early. You have. Decent enough level one with Callista, then potentially you can make something happen. I mean, the oh. setup is there. You get the you get the prio. Maybe you can invade. Maybe it is just vision and ensuring that your bot lane can continue to trade aggressively. But see what they can do with the the pressure advantage we expect Minions them to get. Giant X, going for a bit of a set play here on level one. Mm -hmm. So Hillisang marking that point if they choose to go, should be fine. Uh oh, those people in the audience are sweating. <laughs> But yeah, this is what you normally see from Rel. You can just level one, uh, level one or level two invade as Rel because the Q damage and the clear is so quick. Yeah. You have so much threat onto these camps that this kind of map split, if this does convert into a map split, could convert into dives down bot side onto the smaller. This is exactly what you want to do from GX, and I'm really glad we're seeing it because I don't think GX has had the best early games to be able to pull something like this off. It requires a lot of finesse. Mm. Very clear game plan, a telegraph game plan. You can see Vitality setting up knowing the level one was there, just trying to get a bit of poke back. They're not really expected to win out here early on. Remember when you look at Smolder, in case you've somehow forgotten, it's a lot about just getting space in lane to, to farm with Q, hit some of your abilities for poke, just continuing to stack up, just survive really in lane phase until you get to that crucial stack break point. So my eyes are on the trades down bot side. If they can somehow find a lot of damage and convert it into a dive like Really this. good knock up. Absolutely fantastic start to that play. No unbreakable yet for Hillisang. This is the weakest point in the lane, I think, for this duo. Karzi gets a bit of poke back. And Peach already here. It's a telegraph play. The thing is, Vitality know this is coming. They have to know that this is coming, but they're still just level one. They're just going on to Peach. Trying to harass Peach. This is smart. Yep. Makes the dive that much more difficult. They're actually getting away with so much. Ignar really wasn't in a position to cover. Now maybe they kill Hillisang. 
Hillsang flash to safety, knock up there, good immediate lockup. Patrick flashing in first blood! It's clean, downhill he goes! So I think the problem was Hilly just overreached a tiny bit. They had pushed Rel off of the dive, and you could see Daglas beelining down. Daglas had a choice, right? He could cover the dive that he knew was going to happen if Rel stuck around unchunked, or he could go invade and uh, split the map. Instead, Daglas chose to come, but that was all wasted because Hilly overreaches and gets picked off. The initial chunk is so good. It, is. it makes it the dive so much harder, so much trickier. But uh, yeah, then you overstay. One second too long, you instantly get punished, and now the Callista has an early item advantage, which he already has an early scaling advantage. So, so watch Daglas. He can go topside now and continue clearing, get to his level 6, but... Hold that thought. That. BTO now off. in the difficult position Cinders also find themselves in. Uh, when multiple members collapse on you from multiple angles, scatter the weak, not enough! Jackie's now getting a kill, and we talked about it. Giant X, not the cleanest early games. This game, damn clean so It's far. going really well. So much faster of a first blood than, than yesterday. And Ignar, oh, I specifically want the highlight. Coming out of base and finding another knockup, and this is what we talked about with Vitality's draft, right? It doesn't have the firepower early. You kind of are scaling for level six, and even then, you have one avenue of play, and that's through mid-jungle. So, GX just capitalizing. Well done, thus far. And good to see Peach kind of integrate into this game plan. Both he and Ignar working together, something we've been wanting to see from this duo. Oftentimes it has felt like they're very desynced. Odo doing well on the top side too. Not the flashiest counterpick, but definitely good early matchup. Yeah. I feel I'm uncertain. Aragon, we I haven't seen this a lot from GX. I don't know how to yeah, feel. Because it's, it's, it's strange. great. It's Maybe. really great. And are they just turning? Is this just the GX thing? Just whenever their backs are the against the wall, run. the miracle run? It happens. It happened last year. I'm so tired of saying it though. <laughs> We're gonna need more ways to describe the micro, but if they if they make playoffs. Second place summer twenty twenty three playoffs. They went from tenth to second. Yeah. They it's made season again. finals. Crazy. I'm not, okay, we're one step at a time, yeah, maybe, right? maybe. <laughs> Beating Rogue, I don't think we would call the start of the Miracle Run, given that Rogue are in a really tough spot right now. But beating Vitality, okay. Another win tomorrow. Don't want to get ahead of myself, but the narrative might be coming yeah. back, folks. So the problem is, these are great kills and all, but the, <laughs> it's also only a 1k gold lead, and it's... Yeah. <laughs> we might be overblowing it a little bit. still at two wins. All right, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves they here. They still need to get to Soul, because it ultimately, in Smolder games, what it comes down to is Smolder versus Soul. Which one's more OP? And usually people have funny opinions on that. You know, mm -hmm. they'd rather have Smolder than Elder Baron and Soul at the same time. Got it, yeah. So it's still on Giant X, not the fumble, and secure every single neutral objective. Which has been a struggle for a lot of our teams. Mid games have not been clean this split. Very few teams have been able to just hold on to a lead and snowball a game out if their lead isn't, you know, 5K, 10K mm -hmm. early on. These overwhelming gold numbers where you can just afford to make mistakes. Pressure here on the bottom side. So look at Kazi. Arzy low, but Daglas is here to cover. Peach just has the dragon. As long as GX don't overextend here, it doesn't matter too much. They can't just walk in, get one auto, get the plate. But will they commit for anything else? Yeah. Ping's coming down on the wave before as well, so you can tell Rel, Daglas, Peach with is... the sneeze. Chunk. Peach now here. Body block comes in from Hillisang. Unbreakable cooldown. Decently long at this point in the game. Do they want to go for the redive? Peach, just a bit of poke, has red buff, but needs to be careful here. One, two, three. On the Kakasa blow stacks, will be forced to crash down out to safety. Daglas doing a really good job and just shadowing his, uh, his bot lane. Jackie's has yeah, just mana. not missed any of these flicks backs. He's just calling his shots yeah. on VTO every time. And VTO now down and all, but uh, VTO saw his flash. Jackie's no flash, no TP. Now going to be re recalling here. Buy there to shadow if they want to go for the push out. So overall, positive trade for VTO. Absolutely. Still flash for Vitio though, so any kind of play onto him isn't going to be too great. But my eyes are on Daglas. He's still level four. Usually junglers hit level six about seven to eight minutes. So dinging five is really good, but you know, a little bit far behind. Any playmaking with the mid jungle, which we highlighted before, is going yeah. to be a little bit delayed. Peach probably one or two camps off. Daglas probably about three at this point in the game. Ignar, nice knockup, concussive blows, dashes out to safety. Fourth auto doesn't come through. GX again, another play on bot side. Patrick getting further and further ahead. 650 gold lead. Karzi though, 38 stacks, not, you know, not terrible at this point in the game. Not ideal, certainly. Mm. But I think Karzi could be happy. He just got a reset and now he gets to farm freely, right? Nothing gonna happen too much. And if he does get attacked, they can cross map onto the grub. So I think Vitality mostly happy with the situation. Okay. Good bit of poke. VTO just continuing to harass. Of course, once Vi does get level 6 and starts to walk mid lane, Jackie's is going to be in trouble because he is flashless. Daglas will hit level 6 before Jackie's flash is back up. So pretty clear 
opportunity space there for the side of Vitality. I wonder if we'll see Ignar just beeline to the grubs as well, because there's a timer now where Callista can't be dove. And he could just run through mid and potentially contest, because you could see Daglas wants to contest them. Yep, level six for Daglas. Does he want to use the ult? Photon trying to find the angle and has the ghost if they want to use it. Odawamne has Flash. Will Flash back into the brush. Boomerang Black trying to get extra movement speed. The pullback oh, is there. Alti. as Photon goes all out. A quick kill pickup. Odawamne caught overstepping on the top side of the map. And that kills any kind of grub play for GX. You can see Ignar was trying to move through mid, but managing to find the pick onto the mini Nar from Vitality. Daglas, extremely decisive. Finding a pick onto Odo. And no TP either. Again, his next ulti is going to be off cooldown before Jackie's flash is back up still. And Odo's flash is also down now. So the opportunities for Daglas in this game are everywhere. GX still really need to leverage that power of the bot lane. They've gotten a lot of pressure on bot side. They've gotten those plates, but it hasn't really transitioned to any objective past that first Drake. And now because of that pick onto Odo, as you highlighted, Grubs, easy for the side of Vitality to pick up. That said, they don't really have anyone topside, but luckily for them, GX have no resources committed here at all past Odawane. Giant X fishing mid, but Vettio does have flash. So likely nothing going to happen, but Odo... Unlucky. Yeah, Minina trying to get Deep Ward onto the respawn camps. Hello, Sang. Oh, no, Patrick. Mom on the way in. Patrick not interested. Did not sign up for a family dinner. We'll just back away. And this is the thing, now they've got control because Ignar keeps going mid to try to help out Jackies. Hello. Now they're roam back down to bot lane. Four members committed here for the side of GX. What can they get? No TP's Karzy up for Vitality. Up. Flash out. Karzy still has cleanse available, trying to get away. Hillisang very likely to drop here. Knock back there. Where are you at, audience fans? <laughs> Gotta make sure you commit. It's very important. Oh, no. If you write something on a sign, you have to commit. Okay. Very important to me. I missed the sign. I missed the sign. What was the sign? Uh, I'm not going to go into it. I'm not sure if we're supposed to go into it. <laughs> but they know what they need to do. Karzy knows what he needs to do, too, which is get out. The cleanse? Yeah, this is rough. Unnecessary. He was dead already. GX just continued to get kills on the bottom side of the map. 1.5k gold lead. Feels good. That's exactly what they needed to get control back. No teleports up of Vitality, so GX just make a play down bot side and on the dives, and only two plays left to take down bot two. They're accelerating the game really well. Take a look at this replay again. Kazi and Hillisang. Kazi's out of mana with no ultimate, so there's no heal. Hillisang manages to sidestep some spells, the knock up in particular, buys a little bit more time, but they can just regank. I think Kazi could have walked further back and potentially gone on away, but the whole of Vitality tried to make it to him, and he's just run down. Yeah. At this point, the, what what are you cleansing, bro? Why? This is the what this happens all the time. People who are like they just want to get their little Captain Jack moment. And Hell saying there's there's so many resources coming in there. They're, Hell saying is fully expected to die. I think the best thing that they could have hoped for is that Karzy could have backed off sooner, maybe kept his life. But there's no way that someone doesn't drop there. There's just overwhelming man advantage for the side of GX. Yep. And now Dragon's up. Giant X are posturing. Vitality also seem like they want to contest, but I'm questioning it a little bit. That's a very strong jungler for the side of Giant X. Already completed item, and this Glista's no slouch either with half a, uh, all of the components. So yeah. Fully expect this dragon to go to the side of Giant X. Knockback clean. Bit of damage onto Jackie's. All still there for VTO. Daglas tries to get the Q flash in, but a clean flash back from Jackie's. VTO's so still stacking. Remember, Cinder also has a scaling opponent. Needs those shards. It's so fully empowered abilities. It's interesting. I kind of expected them to go topside and cross map the dragon to potentially dive a mini now. I think that's the angle you have to have here with your vitality, because you're certainly not contesting second dragon here. Instead of bringing people topside, they're just shadowing the Syndra who has flash. Maybe you get push out and you can go up topside as a way to dive Odo Omni on this Nar. I think the struggle for GX, you have to be incredibly decisive still, right? It's yeah. not that the Smolder instantly scales if you stop paying attention to him, but you need to make sure that you're making positive plays in other places when you do take resources away from bot lane. But that is Scuttle. Quick pick up there is good vision in mid lane. Spots VTO. Of course, the minions would have done it too, so maybe not the most important work. Yeah. GX taking free second Drake, and this is certainly one way. You talked about it. A lot of people feel like uh, Smolder greater than all of the superior late game buffs, but I don't know, the pace that Giant X are picking up these Drakes, very likely that they're going to be able to start contesting for Soul soon. So, five minutes now until Soul Point. Ideally, you can test that as a smaller team. Like, that's the, that's the dream, right? But you have 73 stacks on Kazi. It really depends on how strong he can get. That's a bit low yeah. in my eyes. I think yeah. in LCK, we get a 19 minutes. You got 225 uh, 
generally. And it does amp up as you hit the breakpoints, right? Because you get the AoE at 25, 125 you get a bit more, and the 225 is obviously the Elder buff, right? So once you get to 125, it gets a lot easier to get those stacks, but they also really haven't been able to trade much in bot lane effectively. And that's the other portion, right? You want to last hit minions with your Q and you just want to hit enemy champions. So good on GX to slow this skit stacking down. It really was the call out as you highlighted in the draft. I feel like when you lock in Smolder Braum blind, you just say, you aren't good enough to end the game. And GX now doing everything in their power to prove Vitality wrong. But the Syndra and the Smolder have huge scaling, right? Syndra absolutely amazing. Like you said, keeping Orkana away, really good into the Callista, all, all the scatter of the weeks. Yeah, if you fight front to back, this is going to be tricky. But it's really getting to that point, that's the problem. So it looks like what Giant Techs are going to be doing is they're going to ping these waves and then potentially dive to cross map the grubs in, and potentially give up the three, the six grub buff to Vitality. They really, really want to dive the Smolder again. But there's nowhere really that Vitality have enough pressure to leverage grub buff at this yeah. point in the game. It might change as we get later. So I was saying walking in. Unbreakable coming out a bit ahead of schedule. But Daglas is here first. Do they feel confident enough to pull the trigger on this play? The pullback waves are going to go. Ignore already pulled back at the start. Karzi happy to have the kill. And again, Giant X, they just needed an extra second. They thought they spotted the window of opportunity when the Unbreakable was down. But now it's Patrick who's in oh, trouble. Patrick. The follow-up is there. There's no way he gets out of this one. Jackie's on the back side of the fight. Peach now going in. But they don't have the damage kill. Everybody, the flip-back on the two is clean. Karzi flat, flat, flapping his way out to safety. Peach desperately trying to kill the Smolder. Meanwhile, Photon body blocking, oh, no. healing. Peach remounting, chasing down the little dragon. And it's now just they go for Daglas. Bounces off his teammate's head. And it's just Daglas. a full 5v5. The whole team comes down, teleports down bot side. And the problem was that the bailout from the Callista, Patrick's Callista bailout, was used to engage. So Ignor goes in. The problem is then the teleport comes through because of the teleport advantage. If we take a look here. Fate's call so early. Yeah. So there's no out for Ignar, right? He goes in. Engages, gets CC locked with the Braum passive. The teleport comes through and he just gets knocked up by the Vi as well. That's oh. rough. Because he has flash. You have to wonder if he if he had battle dance, if he just flash battle dance and yeah. then goes in. But obviously in that context where you get chain CC, you don't have the opportunity to flash out. And the thing about Braum is, yeah, you can beat him in the laning phase, but as you get later in these grouped up fights, the concussive blows just makes it impossible for Callista to get away from any of these champions. Yeah, and that's in the context of this draft, this is an absolute disaster. You cannot be trading evenly like this. And this is why we highlighted that Giant X have a lot of pressure. This composition. I think the word I used was finesse that you really need to play this out cleanly. It was a smolder. Now Giant X don't really have access to the eye. Ignar can backstep, but Harold not even really going to reset that much. So we're in a bit of a yeah. leash situation. This time around, it's a Herald, not a Baron. But Vitality says thank you very much. It's not terrible. Giant X was soft contesting that, seeing if they could fish for a steal whilst Odo is bot side. But Vitality going to pull the trigger immediately and place the Herald down mid. All right. Dropping this, so they're gonna try to break another tower as well or go for a tier two. What's the angle with dropping it so soon? Demolish proc is there. Tower not gonna drop fast enough, so Harold will fade away. Vitality gonna back off before they can quite finish it. Nope, they've got the DOT. That's the three stacks on the grubs from earlier paying off. Trading evenly. With a smaller team composition, it's always really, really scary. And now they can just some send someone to recall, catch bot wave, and reset the map. It's a nice game state for, uh, for Photon and Vitality here. And honestly, well played from Vitality, because this is not a game where they have just sat back and yeah. mitigated plays and just tried to like slowly lose, essentially, until the Smolder comes online. They've been punching back. They've been punishing GX. They've been making plays of their own. And I think you know, that's, res that's respectable in the context of a game where it would be really easy to just feel complacent knowing that you have the theoretical late game trump card. Yeah, really leveraging the Vi and the Syndra combo, I feel like. That single target burst. Especially down in the bot side skirmishes. But now, Dragon, Soul Point we highlighted, it's been five minutes. This is what matters. Because if you lose this, if you're the side of Giant X, you delay your soul. And you really don't want to delay your soul. You need to force Barons, you need to get Soul Point with this Callista composition. It's a smolder. Yeah. It's the pressure again, there was pressure in this draft. The moment the call out was there from Vitality. They said you need to play fast or you will lose this game. GX responded to the call, they picked the Callista, and they were successful in the early landing phase. Now the lead has slipped away from them. It's a very small lead. I still think they're stronger overall, just given the power of Callista on a single item, but they need to find a way to leverage that power. And Patrick gets caught out here. 
that could all fade away. Jackie's going forward with the flick back, unbreakable. Already used before the fight kicks oh, off. There it is. Now looking for the re-engage here. Jackie's just continuing to free fire. Good damage now coming forward. Patrick just getting to run rampant in this fight. VTO has to find the angle on the scatter of the week, but he doesn't get it. Pick on to Hillisang to kick things off. So much snap engage coming out from the side of Giant X. They just press one knockup, a one engage, and you can chain that off of it with a Talia W, whether it's a Rakan knockup. It's so easy to follow up on. So even though you're a Braum with Unbreakable, it doesn't matter, you can't face check. Giant X leverage it. Yeah. And I think it's really important that you try to contest the Braum there. If you let him use Unbreakable when yeah. it's convenient for him, that champion is insanely broken. But if you walk up, you force it out early, and then pick the fight, definitely feels like you have what you need to come win out. And keep in mind, double lock it as well. I think very aware on the side of GX that there's a lot of upfront burst damage, and if they can just survive that, that things will work out. But VTO will respond to the bot side play, to the third dragon, to the sole point going to GX with a tower on the top side. Yeah. Really, for this next dragon, though, fishing for two items, I feel like. Your Crypt Bloom or your Void Staff for the Syndra, your Frozen Heart or your Randuins for your Kasante, and then your Shojin for your Smolder. It's going to be really important that they make these breakpoints, otherwise it's not going to be contestable, right? We saw just how one-sided that was, especially if Giant X get the jump yeah. on them. And I think, unlike a lot of other AD carries, Callista has that natural objective control, which makes things so much easier. Yes, Ren Smite isn't perfect, there is room to contest, but if they get first set up, it's so hard. If this becomes a game with a different AD carry where it's about really, you know, pushing in waves and breaking down towers without Baron, uh, it gets a lot harder because Smolder still slows that down, even with the cooldown nerfs. But when you can just walk to Baron every time you push a mid wave, very tricky for the enemy team to do anything. I think some of the best like plays that you can make between the dragons here is if you send Vi down bot side and potentially dive the mini Nar, I think that's the easiest angle of attack that Vitality have, but it doesn't seem like they want to do that. It's just mini Nar is so damn squishy, and Odo is the least accelerated one on the side of Giant X. Certainly, Cassante had two items, and of course, a lot of that is because the items are much cheaper. Trinity Force compared to the Iceborne or the Frozen Heart. But Jackie's now grabbing yet another tower. Yep. So two to the side of GX. So Ping's coming down on the Gnar now. They're going to try and collapse, but I feel like it's a bit too late because Gnar has crashed the wa uh, pushed the wave out. It just needs to sit back and chill in Fog of War. And good from Odo. We've seen a lot of players just overextend in a side lane as we get into these mid-game states, and those picks are usually what turn into these big objectives. 19 seconds till Baron spawns. Neither side probably going to want to rush it down. Close to good for contesting, but I don't think GX have quite the sustained damage that they need to force a Baron quite yet. They could start up Nash, right? Especially on this next Dragon spawn, they could flip the Nash for the, the first Dragon, especially if Vitality commits to the Dragon. Callista Smite. Yeah, I mean... Definitely there. The, the, the contest is for sure there. I think in three minutes, too, once the second item comes through from Patrick, it's a lot easier to take down that objective. Smolder's still a ticking time bomb. VTO about to hit 125 breakpoint. Oh, 120, excuse me, on the Splinter's of Wrath for Syndra. So I'd like to see Giant X move as a unit right now into Baron topside vision and then force Vitality to check into them at, with the threat of the Nash. Now you can see Vitality have full vision there, so they'd require sweeping out. I imagine though what Giant X will do is just relax and play for the soul. Yeah, and I think the reset came here for Patrick. Yeah. They will now contest. He has second item. He backs, he buys that. They've got a luxury item and a stopwatch for Jackies. So we'll see if he can finish the Zanyas before the fight. But he is behind Callista pretty significantly. VTO 1.3k individual lead. He's gotten so much more CS. Pretty much all of that being CS. So I think Vitality know that Giant X are kind of fishing for this. Mid push for the side of Patrick. He can move over straight to the Nash and start this up, especially once they push out top with the Talia. They have a lot of DPS. It's not a slow Nash at all. So we're going to start with the Threaded Volley, sustained damage of the Callista Autos. Maybe enough for GX to feel confident to start, but it is really about confidence. They need to pull the trigger on A play. Oh, Hilly. Like picking off Hillisang is once again the name of the game. This time, Hilly Alti going to come out to get some health. They don't get the flash, though, crucially. It's only the Alti cooldown that they really walk away with. Yeah, sidestepping that Talia W was important there. If he got flipped over, it was just chain CC into chain CC. So managing to get out there, and in the end, the Baron Dance isn't going to secure anything. Now, it's too close to Dragon, isn't it? So, Vitality, what they can do now is sweep out the entirety of the topside vision, and then move to Dragon after, just in case that uh, the side of Giant X want to flip the Nash again. Definitely tough, though. Really want to for Odawamne be in a position where you can TP in as Mega. So it's, it's hard for GX, despite the ability to get this pressure, really construct the perfect moment for them to get Baron. Ignar, though, invading, hoping to maybe find that flank angle. We'll clear out this little bit of vision from the blue trinket. Yeah. Ping's coming down. There's a really nice TP ward right there inside the river. 
Doesn't look like they're going to use it. Vitier and or Photon TPing down as well. Yeah, Photon's there. Maybe Photon can use that ward. Good spot. There's one behind the Raptors as well. Multiple good angles where so you can TP in to kick a fight off. Odawam needed no rage. It will stack quickly in the context of a fight. Vitality using this TP to ensure they have full five members in this area. They do not want to give up soul. Wave relatively even. Yep. Single cannon creep going to do some damage, but Giant X aren't even going to worry about it. Happy to concede that goal just to keep their positioning. Yeah, you need Photon to face check, don't you? He's popped the Elixir of Iron to be extra tanky so that he can. Wame, patient. Wall off oh, to no, Jack, he's, Jack, he's getting picked. If they can just burn him down here quickly. But no, a flipback is excellent. Odawamne now trying to cover Mom. Coming in, Jack, he's flashing out to safety, getting clipped by the edge. Odawamne with Mega. Vitality immediately pulling back from the choke. They see the window of opportunity as clearly as Giants do. They don't want to give anything up. Pull back again. Good. Q3 coming in from Photon to buy a bit more of an angle. TP from Jackies is available. Vitality successfully have bought themselves space and time. Mini Gnar about to come through from Odawamne. 15 seconds before he can start stacking Rage again. That's going to be big. Watch Ignor on the flank. He could get into the back line with Betio there. Multiple he has angles. the flash too. Charm the angle. The instant follow up now coming through. The flip back is clean. The execution flawless from GX. Hillisang now trying to pull back. No damage left. It'll be Soul from GX, but they want more. They want another kill onto Hillisang. Photon running, and in the blink of an eye, Peach and Ignar flawlessly working together to finish the job. The flash is coming out from the jungle support of Giant X, managing to find the backline. Peach with the flash ultimate, Rakan with the flash knockup as well. And it's just vitality. They're getting rolled. And all I'll say is, Ignar, Peach, finally. We've been waiting. There have been so many moments. Yeah. You would assume that this duel right off the bat would click and everything would work, but it finally feels in this game like it is clicking. So what happened here was Photon. He needed to face check. They managed to try and find a pick on the Jackies, but that duo in the top side do not have any damage to burn down Jackies. The ultimate almost takes him down, but he still has TP, so it's not the end of the world. They managed to use this chunk to force their way in, but then they don't have time to check the flanks. Look at that pink over here. It means that Rakan, Ignore on this Rakan, can make it over to flank and Skill, the team fight win. Now MP Photon is overextending on the side lane. Needs to live as long as possible. Pullback on Odawamne is good. Once again, going on soft because he gets the reset from the all out. We'll walk away fine. Two minutes and 30 seconds on this buff. But Vitality want to fight. They want to try and force these picks, ensure that Giant X cannot use this to start pushing out these objectives. Vitality. This is, <laughs> there's nothing to play for here. It's just the Thunderdome. But they just want to force a fight. It's a, I think it's a soft fight. It's not a hard commit, right? Because they're still playing for those stacks on both Syndra and the Smolder. 225 is very close. So if they can take fights that aren't fully committal. Every hit that Karzi gets with an ability is another stack, right? Flap, flap, flap over the wall. Does still have his ultimate if he wants to clear the wave. I think they should be pretty willing to clear or back away from tier 1s, but they're not. Yeah. They've only lost that tier 1 bottom side. I mean, we've seen this. We've seen teams Good hold. Wall. Jackie's again trying to force the engage. Beautiful disengage from Hilly. Ignar now goes in, but there's no follow-up. So there was this game in the LCK where they held something like four Barons and four Elder Drakes with Smolder ult. OK. Well, there's Smolder ult, then most of the wave is gone. My question to you, Dracos, is are you ready? Am I ready for it was an T1. Game? Versus Nongchim. I don't, I'm not ready for that. I cast this region for a reason. I'm not ready <laughs> for that. I want it. I want to see it happen. But I don't think I'm ready. Aragon, I think that would be an unreasonable task. I, I feel for my LCK, our LCK counterparts. You know, that's a tall, it's a tough order. And Karzi, 2-2-2, two, 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 about to hit 2-2-5. Two, two, which again, it, it's not the Cassid and Ding over to Lex uh, level 16 games over kind of vibes. Which I also don't necessarily think is true for Cassid, and although it feels that way sometimes. But Hillisang. Potentially overcommitting. A lot of resources being used to kill the Brahma. Hillsang flashes back to the safety of Photon, still stunned up, trying to dash back. Extra little bit of shielding coming in. GX need to keep the ball rolling. Pressure on the top side, 50 seconds left for the Baron. They still got a cannon. BTO just going to take it away, though. Oh, well, no, he's got trouble. Ignar just takes his time, just waits, goes past him, forces him to backstep. Flash out from BTO is clean, however. Karzi now ready to turn the fight. Sneezes on him. Photon trying to get a bit more space. The fall off damage on to Patrick. Patrick, oh, the damage out. Smolder looking for the resets. And it's a baby dragon, baby. And we've been here before. We know what happens. He's online. Tick, tick, baby. Time is up. And it's happening again, Draco. Soul versus Smolder stacks, which will win. But beautiful micro coming in from Vetio with that dodge onto the Rakan W. Take a look at this. He gets flanked. I mean, initially, Hillisan gets picked yep. by doing his thing. But there's such a nice sidestep out from Vitio there, where he sidesteps, buys enough time for Smolder to come. 
Yep, Hillsang, clever use to try to escape, but obviously more than enough sustained yeah. damage here. But the play that you're talking about happens at a moment. Wrap around, good from Ignar, looking for the angle of attack. Watch this, watch this. He W's forward, sidesteps back, then flashes the Rel Q. Buys enough time now that the small is online, right? There's no threats for the small that he can just free hit. Yeah. And I think when GX watch that back, they're gonna be hitting themselves. You know, <sighs> he kind of he has to flash at that point out to safety. You might have been able to hold the Rel Q, anticipate the flash, but it's a lot to ask in a tense moment like that when your adrenaline is pumping and for Karzi. He's been beat up this entire game. Doing now, again? Finally, he gets to strike back. Fire rains from the sky. Dragon's not even involved. Peach now running. And look how quickly the pace of this game has changed. Vitality were on the back foot, but now they're looking to take over. Oh, my Peach is getting run down, as well. down. Yeah, he should drop here. One, two, three. Not quite able to get the fourth, crucially. Won't get sneezed on. And what felt like a commanding position. Now it's less than a K goal difference. Mm -hmm. When you factor in scaling as well from the Syndra stacks, from the smaller stacks, yep. they're gonna be Soul Dracos. Yeah, so I think, I'm not gonna say this conclusively, but based on this single game sample yeah. size from today, Smolder is still very strong. Safe to say. You, you have to play perfectly. You have to close out the game extremely well. Oh, on the opposite soul. side, not as Smolder. On oh, the opposite side. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, I, I was like, all right, okay. You need to be, you need to be a little bit careful. But all right, Vietio. He had the fancy footwork in the previous play, but I don't think there should be any way for him to get out of this one, let alone grab a kill as long as Jackie doesn't overcommit. One quick pick on the side lane, perhaps an angle for Giant X to regain control. Who are they trying to get this to? Are they trying to stall the death to make sure that he's down for longer so they can look for the next objective? It is 44 seconds to the soul. Oh, that's some Overwatch tactics, baby. Stagger the respawns. You'll love to see it. Oh, look at the TP. They're going to completely chase this down. Long range. They've got to kite up towards Photon. Confidence from GX as we talk about this decisiveness. They kill that baby oh, dragon! No. They've got a way back! Elder for GX! They've got no wave mid though, I don't they're think just, they can they're end. Just, they're just big game hunting Vitality members one at a time! Vitality had rested this game! They had regained control, but they're just split, they're just a little over eager. Giant X, fantastic punish. 10 seconds to Elder. These guys are gonna no up, but then it's the question. Can Smolder beat his mom? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought Hysterics keeps saying Shivana Smolder's mom. Oh, really, true. this is his dad. <laughs> Damn. But it's a, it's a legitimate question. Can Fair. Smolder overcome Elder Dragon? And we've seen it so many times globally. Yeah. It's tough. It's a universal question. Can any of us overcome our daddy issues? <laughs> it's hard. Something we all work on. Cars are going to try to cover that in the last five to ten minutes of this game. Two minutes and 30 seconds where Giant X are just stronger. On paper, maybe Smolder can turn that back in the favor of Vitality, but it won't matter if they keep getting caught out. Baron up on the table now. You gotta assume it's all but taken for the side of Giant X. They're not even gonna bother contesting yet. They're just sending people down bot side, potentially yep. to try and get that tier two down bot. Why did you say that you cast your curse dude? <laughs> Why did you say that they could they would have to that you've seen the smolder beat Baron and Elder together? <laughs> This should be the end of the game, but because of one baby dragon, it's uncertain, it's unclear, and now Odo potentially caught out. This is a, still a bold oh no. play. Will they try to pull back? If they go into Jackie's with the pullback here from Photon, it could be big. Smolder calling in Mom. Trying to buy a bit of time, a bit of space. And meanwhile, VTO pushing out. Not necessarily the split pusher I would have wanted to see, but Photon getting lower and lower. Engage from Peach completely whiffs, and that is big. Now the turn. Not enough burst to get through Peach, not enough to get him down to that threshold. Both sides painfully aware that they cannot afford to get low. Giant X backing off. They don't have another wave to play on. They don't have mid pushed out either. Yep. Ooh. Bits here. Getting bot lanes here too. Too much wave clear from the Syndra and the Smolder. Not going to be able to siege as well. And that's just going to stall out the Elder Drake. They've got I to mean, spend their Elder Drake time running out from base. It's so awkward because you want to play on multiple lanes at the same time. But if you don't commit enough resources to the Smolder lane, they're just going to burn you. No, gonna I'm, reset on the map again. Yeah, and I gotta say, credit to Vito again. Good heads up play um, to yeah. to take that tier two, because if his team does get collapsed on, if they don't clear that wave, that could have been a game ender, but knows that he has the space, knows that he has the time. Of course, reminder that when Syndra ticks over to zero at this point in the game, that is just a little bit of a visual bugarino. It is just because she has reached max splinters of wrath stacks. So in that one LC game game I was talking about, they got Elder Dragon? Baron, the they, stole, they stole the global blue buff, blue buff, they stole the global red buff, they had every single buff on the map, and they still lost. So what you're telling me is if <laughs> Giant X 
win here, they're better than T1. Is that what you're trying to say, Aragon? Sure. Nice. Sure. <laughs> Transit yeah. properties. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bold. You should not have said yes to that. You will feel the wrath of the way T1 put. fans. The Giant X. It's... They've got these double cannon minions, but it, you can't body block the cannon minions. The Syndra QE just goes through. Ooh. Karzi has the wave clear, and we're going. Oh my God, we're going again. <laughs> you were right. How did we get? How did we get two of the weirdest <laughs> games to split back to back? Aragon. These are bangers. Stop manifesting weird stuff. I mean, normal got... <laughs> League of Legends only, Aragon. <laughs> They've got a tier two to take at least in the mid lane. That should be relatively simple to take. It doesn't have to. You don't have to go straight into the base. And it's. I mean, it's just so. It's so rough now, right? Because JX were decisive. They slipped up once or twice, and it cost them dearly. Uh, you know, they've managed to fight back even against a smolder that's been fully yeah. stacked, but they're just struggling now to really get anything else. The snap engage is so good, so if Hillasang ever does the Hillasang, but pull the trigger. Now an engage onto two is oh, big, or to one immediately gonna follow up, and that should just be it. V2 goes golden, gets a brief moment. Karzy on the wrong side of the wall, getting away from the poke, trying desperately to hold on. Patrick getting chunked out. Well, Photon Pat trying to finish the job. Photon going in, unstoppable, wants to finish off. Patrick, Patrick dancing, diving, ducking, the clutch still lives. GX, what else can they get? Nine seconds left on the Baron. Can they push for anything else, or are they just too scared of this smolder? Patrick's chunked. They have to recall. I think Jackie's is going to TP in. He does have the teleport, but the wave clear's still there, and they don't have Nash. I don't know if you get a better opportunity than this. Okay. They think we can do it again. We will find another moment. They have they have great engage. We talked about it. Peach and Ignar together. I think Peach we're that for... time finding it. Are you ready for round 17, Drake? <laughs> I'm absolutely ready for round 17. I cannot say I was born ready. I don't think anyone anticipated this when I was born, but here we are. Great engage. Mm. Fantastic start to the fight. Good, solid turn from Vitality to try to get something back. Jackie's on the wrong side of the wall, still layering down some poke. And Patrick, really, if he dies there, this is a Vitality favorite fight for sure. Absolutely. You can see the dive coming in for Photon. Scratching the back of his head. Not quite making the lethal window there, but it, they don't get enough. Right, and when you don't have enough, you don't kill the wave clear, either the Syndra or the Smolder. You just can't siege. Jackie's having to recall. They don't even bother teleporting in to continue the siege. My question is, what is the last item for Patrick? What, what position is he in? He's got Terminus. Jack Show potentially. I was thinking is... Jack Show against the Syndra. Even if he yeah. has Pen, I think just if you just live longer, maybe that's enough. But Karzy about to get Life Steal, and only getting more stacks. It's 348. Yeah, I think uh, Jack. Oh, Hourglass. That's some tech versus the Vi Ultimate. I actually like that a lot. That's really smart. I, I love any AD carry that can build this, frankly. I just think it's such a... It's obviously just the best defensive item in the game. Like, GA compared mm. to this item is trash. Because it's like, you don't get to pick your stasis. You don't get to pick what you dodge, right? And you come yeah. back, and if you're already losing the fight with a GA, you're going to lose the fight anyway. But stop watching at the right moment is so game-defining. Or, excuse me, Seeker's arm guarding at the right moment. It's why stopwatch is removed from the game. It's because it's so good. Yeah. So we're on the el second Elder Dragon, Dracos. Out of how many? Two out of X. Uh, let us know at LEC on X. <laughs> how many Elder Dragons do you think will be taken? Okay, start off good here. Mom called in. Jackie's getting chunked out. Hello, Ignar trying to disengage. VTO untouched off to the side. Oh, one right going in. Knocking both my members back to the wall, but Vitality peeling back beautifully. Karzy's still standing for now, but he can't quite get back over the wall. VTO laying down a bit of damage, but Patrick goes stasis. golden. The stasis pays off. Buys the perfect item to save the day. Karzy flicked back and Giant X might have just done it. Photon taken down. They want to march down the mid lane and end it here. And they found the engage they needed. They found it onto Hillasang, that pick. The stasis coming out into the Syndra ultimate and managing to find the flip back onto Karzy as well. And that's it. No more Elder Dragons, just the one was all it took. Smolder, not unbeatable, not unbreakable. Clean early game from GX, a sloppier mid game. But when push came to shove, they found the angle. They found the fights, and they'll find the win. Their run continues. Three wins now, tying up SK, fighting for top eight in the LEC, taking down the five and two Vitality. And one more Hillisang death for all those keeping up with the drinking games. It's a beautiful GX win. Incredibly important win too. On the Giant Tech's miracle run. I, I don't, I, it's too soon, but also, yes. I believe, but also, From you're what right. I've seen, this is so much cleaner of an early game than we've seen in the past. They were never this decisive. They managed to get Soul. They ended the game versus Smolder. Yes, it looked a little bit dicey towards yep. the end there, but... Okay, enough. update. Currently, they have at least a tiebreaker in 94.5% of remaining scenarios. Um, they're, they're close, yeah.
and they're if they win tomorrow, it feels like they're probably just I'm not gonna say 100 percent straight up block, but they're in a good spot. Player of the game at LEC on X, Jackie's Patrick or Ignar. I mean, you know it's our boy Ignar. All right, Patrick played great. <laughs> don't get me wrong, but we also saw the Rakan Rel synergy there coming together. Some beautiful stuff. When we return, an interview with Odawamne. For now, we're gonna head to a quick break. You know it as well. I also know you can dance. You should join me next time. And yes, I feel like you've also deserved a bit of a break. You've earned it. Thanks. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Good job. Hey, <laughs> thank you. Red Bull gives you wings. Welcome everyone to the Kia Tilt Proof Challenge. We're here to see if four gamers can stand up to the test. What this? Ah! Dios mío de mi vida! I think I lost. I'm so happy that I didn't eat before.
the smolder. Meanwhile, Photon body blocking, oh, no. healing, Peach remounting, chasing down the little dragon. Hello, Chunkus is good. No, no heal, no heal, Chunk, Chunk, don't fight. It's really good. Oh, chill it. I'm really far, I'm really far. It's really good, by the way. I'm almost here, we can fight, we can keep fighting. Vine, no, 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 play, no, play, no, I'm here now, I'm here. Everyone walking up, everyone walking up. Okay, okay, okay. No, 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 get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. F***ing big, nice, nice, nice. Ultimate, ultimate. Yeah. Oh my god, you're the goat. I love you. Hello everyone and welcome back to LEC. I'm Jeannie, joined by Odo from GX after your successful game up against your opponent. Now, I want to dissect this a little bit because we're heading into playoffs. You still have one more game tomorrow against Heretics. What are the feelings right now in the team? Um, well, we pretty much just doubled our wins in, you know, this week. Uh, it took us a little bit to get going, but I'm, I'm happy and relieved that, you know, the ramp up kind of happened because uh, you're always scared that when you're at the bottom of the standings that the ramp up doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, even though it, it took two elders almost to end the game, yeah. um, you know, a win's a win because uh, before we would have these long drawn out games and we'd end up losing. So at least, you know, I'm happy that we started being more proactive, even though it's around these objectives and whatnot. But uh, yeah, clear improvements from us, so we're quite happy with it. Yeah, when is a win? Dobby's in the chat, right? But when we're looking particularly at tomorrow, like, I don't want to jinx it and say miracle run, but it feels like you guys are so close. Yeah, I mean, this miracle run thing is, is starting to become a marketing thing, you know, where uh, <laughs> you're at the bottom, you need to win two games out of three to make it. Miracle run, let's, let's go, go, boys, you know? When back in the day, miracle run meant you need to win nine out of the next ten games, you know? So now it's like... You know, props to the marketing team, they're doing a great job, you know, everyone deserves Shout a raise out. all over, you know, so, uh, yeah, you know, we, we take those. Yeah, we can take those with you, thank you so much. Uh, make sure that we get those raises yeah. going. But thank you, thank for you. those of you who are watching, uh, it is key up player of the game will be Jackie's, but we're going to be heading over to the analyst deck to break out the next matchup, so stay tuned for that. Yay, thank you, Ginny. We have more at stake here uh, in the playoffs because BDS locked playoffs with Fnatic's win earlier against SK. They're looking to make Madeleine's cause life harder here because where a loss for MDK means that they have only 56% of the scenarios where they can qualify. Mm, uh, not great odds here for Mad Lions, especially when you consider how they've been performing uh, yeah. lately. What happened there? Because it feels like if they don't grab a win in the early game, they just don't win the games. They need this lead. Yeah, I don't think they've been able to transition a lot of the leads they have found. Either you get teams that are better prepared for them, where they're like, hey, we're going to put down defensive vision and catch you as you try and play around Oyoya off these push and bot lanes, or they end up in a position where they get to the mid game and then the whole thing is just falling apart. Yeah, and I think that's the mid game specifically. I don't think necessarily they've been figured out. I think it's also just the time when Mad Lions just start in making weird mistakes. They'll overchase. They'll invade an enemy jungle. They'll try go for a play that's not even there. I, I, if you have a look at that goal difference as well, uh, from the early game bleeding into that late game, well, actually, at the 8-minute mark, they're ahead. At mm -hmm. the 14-minute mark, they're ahead. And this is on an average. You go to the 25th-minute mark, they go down in negatives again. It, this is just a team that struggles heavily with figuring out what they need to do, and, and it comes from sorts of different fronts. Yeah, I think partly it's team fights. Oftentimes, I'll see them in their team fighting when they come to these objectives, and it's, hey, we haven't set up correctly, so we don't have our flanks warded. Stupid's getting attacked. We're not really able to peel from properly. It doesn't look like they're really coordinating or on the same page when they come to a lot of these as well and I think it's just you when you get to that point it's so important to be able to work as a unit yeah and I think that's really just the easy fix we've yeah. seen MDK be as good, good as they were in the past of course one of their strengths in winter was that they were pro as proactive as they were they were as aggressive as they were and right now I think they're just over experimenting with it a, a bit too much like you can easily go back to what worked Elioia, Alvaro just teaming mm -hmm. up around so whoever they want to make a pick around and then just limit yourself a little bit because it's been too often that they've just gone past the tower to try and chase for a kill that just ends up backfiring. Yeah, they need to make things easier for themselves, and especially if they want to keep the playoffs hope alive and in their own hands here against BDS. Over to Casters for this game. Thank you very much, Law. We are here for this game. It's the Biker Crew slash My Chemical Romance lookalike competition here. I Listen, think Betty wins that one. Medic showed up with a jacket today, and then they were like, You've got to wear the same jacket as Medi Betty. And I was yeah. like, well, I guess I don't have a choice then. Mine uh, has a world's logo on it, though, so it's slightly cooler. Okay. 
Uh, I left mine at my mother's house when I went to visit her for Christmas, um, and I haven't been able to wear it in which makes me very sad. <laughs> so, so, thanks for rubbing that in my face, medic. It sounds anyway. like a skill issue to me. <laughs> anyway, Senna, Vi, and Varus bound away by Team BDS. Oriana, Ash, and Karma taken away by Mad Lion Scoy. BDS at 4 and 3 are locked into our playoffs because of SK losing earlier today. Obviously, higher seeding does matter, so they want to win this game. Mad Lion Scoy yet to lock. Looks like we're going to have kind of a battle Royale between Giant X, SK, Carmine Core, Mad Lions Koi, and possibly Rogue for those final couple of spots. Three spots left for those five. But teams. here's the TLDR winning games, good. Yeah. Uh, the more you win, the higher your likelihood is of qualifying for top eight, yep. which is definitely what Mad Lions Koi would like to do. They have definitely been struggling recently. So let's see what they've cooked up today. Smolder is available. The Callista into Smolder. We literally just got to see that matchup play out in a, what I would call an interesting back yeah. and forth. 100% of the time today, the Callista wins. <laughs> so. <laughs> Proven track record, might as well FF right now. Nico in their favor. picked up as well by Mad Lions Core. They have a color palette going on and I love it. Sort of a purplish, bluey orange. You have to imagine the Nautilus are going to be prioritized here for BDS. They could also look at something like an early Xin Zhao. Sheo, fantastic performance on the Xin Zhao yesterday against Fnatic. Instead, they might be looking for a little bit more range. Renata, a champion that has fallen to the wayside a little bit. Still a very good answer to things like Nautilus. Also just pairs up very nicely with Callista, especially with the Ash taken away. Double range bot side of the map gives you a lot of power. The question is how will they round out their first half of the draft, I should say. Are they thinking jungle or are they thinking of trying to answer this Nico? Remember that that Nico is a flex pick. There's always the ability for it to be played in support. So far this split, we haven't seen that from Alvaro, but you should always consider it as a possibility. Yeah, it definitely can work well in that support role. We saw Mickey play it yesterday, I want to say. Um, but BDS still looking for their final pick of the first rotation here. Currently hovering towards the mid lane, but they've been hovering on this LeBlanc for a while, which Often means they're gonna try and switch it up right at the last moment. There's the RE locked in for Nuke. So no junglers picked on either side as of yet. Mad Lions Koi could look to jungle here and then pinch the pool a little bit, but it's hard to pinch jungle right now because people can always fall back to a tank if they want. Sejuani, Zin Zhao's good, Maokai's still okay. You have things like the Jax. The Braum locked in means it's bottom mid solidified for these two teams. Well, it's going to be a bot side focus draft for BDS and they're definitely no stranger to that. Tried and true, that's for sure. Excited to see if they can make that one work out for them. They're going to have to consider blind top side of the map now. Jack's going to be taken away as a possible jungle. It means that Mad Lions, they may be thinking about, well, I was going to say uh, things like a Viego. There was another pick that Jax is also really good into that now I've completely lost in my head, but it's a really good jungle answer, mm -hmm. and I've lost the win that I wanted. It's okay into Xin Zhao as well. It's okay into Xin, yeah. Um, we'll say it was Xin Zhao, you know? <laughs> Could have been something else. We'll say it was Xin Zhao for now. Uh, there's yeah, the Olaf band away yeah. as well, away from Adam. BDS blocking out possible mid laners that could go in for Skawi's hands. As you said, the Nico still a flex for Alivro if he wants it. We still have things like his Rel and his Nautilus available. Uh, but actually with the Braum locked in, then the Nico unlikely. definitely isn't a flex. So they banned out TF <laughs> top, they, which uh... also makes sense. Uh, like, I'm, I'm sorry, but also Mad Lions Koi have this blue purple color scheme. <laughs> TF doesn't fit into that. So why on earth would they pick it? Jace does fit into that. So that's a good ban from BDS I as see. they want to. Uh, so they're looking at a Sejuani based on your color scheme. Yeah, I like Sejuani. So Karma kind of fits into it as well if you want to play Karma top. Actually, as we predicted, Jack's very good into Zin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Told you, ready? Just yeah. stick with your convictions. Yeah. <laughs> That uh, is the uh, Xin Xiao. So now the question is, how do they want to answer? We've seen things like uh, uh, Volibear, we've seen Lee Sin, we've seen Viego, all very viable options. But when you think about Xiao as a jungler, I was going to say, usually you think of him as more of a bruiser, tanky type of player. I mean, Volley fits in that wheelhouse. It definitely does. Gives you a lot of early game pro uh, prowess as well. So alongside the Callista, if you want to be tower diving bot, you already have the bailout for one save, you have Fate's Call for a second save, and you have the power of the storm itself as Volley comes down and disables that tower. I would say that Nuke, uh, if he had played a control mage, this would be a very tried and true BDS composition. I guess the other caveat is that when we think of BDS AD carries, you typically think Zeri Aphelios. Callista is not usually the type of AD carry that they play. They've been much yeah. more about mid to late game team fights, much more about scaling. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, the Nico. You know, I was thinking to myself, unless that Nico is a flex top, but that seems unlikely, which is why I didn't bring it up. It's Mirwin, <laughs> Betty. Everything can be flexed everywhere when Mirwin's on the rift. Do you reckon it might be on hit? 
I haven't looked at Mimi uh, Solo so recently. It could be. I think the when we saw on hit Nico a lot, the shape splitter gave you a lot of extra it damage. Did. I yes. think they nerfed that pretty heavily to remove it. So I wouldn't mind it being on hit, although I think AP is still stronger, especially with the combination with the Annie, you know, the Tibbers into Pop Blossom, like it's such a powerful combo and you have enough physical damage from the Smolder anyway through the game. I mean, I will say Mad Lions overall do have a lot of magic damage though. Yeah. Uh, but regardless, I think they've got a pretty interesting composition. Uh, a lot of AOE damage with things like Annie and the Nico offers a huge amount of utility. Braun for the protection, Xin Zhao acting as that engage, and once it gets on top of that target, a lot of potential damage. Overall, I think BDS's composition kind of very well-rounded in the sense that it has a strong mid-game spike, but they're kind of invested in the early game here. Yeah. When you've got Callista, Ari, Renekton, uh, that composition, especially with a volley bed, that, that comp really does fall off a cliff. Mm -hmm. So BDS, they kind of have to put pedal to the metal as quickly as possible to get this comp online, get it rolling, find some action towards the bot side of the map, because I feel like if you give this smaller enough time, as is often the case, you're going to deal with a big scaling problem and difficult on actual access getting onto that back line, right? How much threat is there really when you look at BDS's composition? I mean, there's some. Ari, potential flank. Uh, yeah. Renekton can maybe get a decent dive. Volibear ultimate, but things like Braum, Annie ultimate, Nico ultimate. Uh, the, there's a lot of disengage tools well. yeah. from the side of uh, Mad Lion's Koi that they can use to, to keep Super alive. So, uh, yeah, I think early game is the name of the game here for BDS. I want to see them being proactive. I want to see them having that control and agency to make stuff happen in the early game. Uh, and I'd love to see it from BDS because, again, when you typically think about their AD carries, Zeri and Aphelios yeah, are their slower, most played. Yeah, it's a slower gameplay as well from BDS. 35 minutes, their average game time this split. The average in the LEC is about 33 minutes, so about two and uh, well, two-ish minutes longer than the average. Nice to see a couple of fans from New Zealand in the audience as well as we have a small delay getting into the game. There was a client issue causing the game to lock in with incorrect champions, and I think we should have just made them play the game, but apparently that goes against competitive integrity or some <laughs> such. <laughs> Yes, it's often helpful to have ultimate the bravery, yeah, okay. ultimate like ultimate bravery LEC edition. That's what I want to see, Betty. Do Remember you the good old days of ultimate bravery? It's I think C medic. I think that you think it would be good, but I don't think it would actually be good. I think it would be really funny for one game. Similarly to how a lot of the rotating game modes are really fun for one game, <laughs> and then I go back to rank. Until you run into and the then I have so much fun yeah. in ranks. <laughs> That's true. I um. My favorite challenges in the league are the ones where everyone comes together to make like something very specific happen. Okay. So for example, my favorite is the race from one side of the rift to the other okay. challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, where like you'd have like a Ramus with um, I think it was Zillion and Karma and okay. and you'd have to build a comp to mm -hmm. like basically achieve a goal. And then like also like I don't know, fastest clear jungle challenges and like all yeah. these different things that you can do in the game to basically make the game as hard as possible. I mean, does it make the game as... Because to make the game hard... When I think of making a game hard, I okay, think sure. of like Elden Ring randomizer, sure. right? Really difficult to play. Weird bosses coming out, items in all different locations, but you're still trying to complete the game. There's a chance that a minion is replaced with a Baron. That would be hilarious, <laughs> right? But you're still trying to kill the Nexus. In the games that you mentioned, you're not actually like completing the game in any way. You're just doing a yeah, challenge. Yeah, but do you want right? to know the problem with League? Yes. Is that like... I never a few. I'm no, I, <laughs> there are. But like in Elden Ring, there's a degree of skill expression in that the raw numbers don't matter because you have like the invulnerability yeah, you flames. Can just do an so RL1 you can, or something. You can right? dodge yeah. infinitely, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but in League, that's not possible. I don't think that it's actually but like there's just raw numbers at a certain point. Sounds raw like a numbers skill issue. Be, <laughs> just right click away from them, Betty. <laughs> I don't just I, turn off your monitor if you I don't get really feel like annoyed. <laughs> I feel like you get to a point where like there are certain things that just limit you in terms of what you can and can't do. Okay. You're gated at a certain point. Yeah. Reaction speed, <laughs> hand stiff, those gate me all the time. I feel like time, I don't buddy. explain myself very No, well. I get what you mean, right? Like in the end, if a, if a Yone gets big enough, he just right clicks you, presses E, and then you can't get away. Right? Yes. You just get chased down. Correct. However, you could be the Yone. Yes. Then no one can run away from But you. there's always a bigger fish. Like, you know, I'm sure that there's something that outscales you a Jax, maybe? <laughs> maybe? I'm not sure. We'll never know. Because well, we could know. <laughs> I'm just saying, guys. Tomorrow, there's likely to be some games that we don't matter too much. We are struggling to film content. Wow, man, it's been a while. <laughs> but, okay. We kind of went off on the tangent early because I wanted to bring us back as we were going to get on into the game. And I have been told, hopefully in about 30 seconds, we'll be getting on into the game. So why is this game important, everyone? Well, firstly, winning is fun. 
Okay. <laughs> 50 gold for taking the okay. Nexus. That's gold you take to the bank. You can buy GameStop socks with it or something. Don't think you can. That's Second. not true. Just want to clarify. Uh, th <laughs> thanks for being a spoil sport. Then. <laughs> Secondly, uh, for MDK, they are sitting at only two wins so far in spring. After making it to the finals last, but there's been an underwhelming, disappointing performance for them. And winning here separates them from Carmine Core and from Rogue, who would be sitting below them. And obviously, only two teams get eliminated going into playoffs at the end of this week. So, getting to three wins is a good benchmark. Likely won't lock you in to the playoffs guaranteed, but at least keeps you two wins away from Rogue, which means even if they win both their games, you're guaranteed a tiebreaker with them, right? So That's why I often I like to think of when you're thinking about tiebreakers, the more you win, the better. Um, so, MBK want to win, and BDS would also like that. Yeah. So let's find out who can achieve their dreams today on the Rift. As a quick reminder, just as we get into game, no LEC tomorrow. We'll be back Monday. So that, I'm playing Elden Ring. Yeah, <laughs> that's not the reason. <laughs> Seems to have coincided really well, but <laughs> say. But we will be back Monday. So break tomorrow, and then we'll be back Monday. Um, yeah, that's the only major update I have for you all. Anyway, we're jumping into game. Mirwin is running press the attack, so it's very likely. It's on hit. On hit. Nico in the top lane. Dorman's blade start. Adam realizing he's going to be in for... A little bit of pain in the top lane has started with a Doran shield himself. Bot lane, summoner-wise, we have an aggressive summoner from Lebrov, a heal from Alvaro, because he knows he's really not going to be the one being aggressive in this bot lane, just wants to try and survive through the early damage that is Callista and Renata. So I don't think Adam's going to have fun. Uh, I think that he's going to be very upset in this Should have gone ultimate bravery. He, no, don't think you can do that, Medic. Um, but... Uh, Basically, it's a trade of sides. MDK have to play defensively, weak side on the bot. Already, information trying to be garnered on the bot side of the map from BDS as they drop that ward, obviously going to be pinged out. This should give some information that El Yoya rather, is starting somewhere on the top side. Shea is going to be starting on his rafters. Now, the question is, will he do his bot side clear into enemy invade, or will he look to do a full clear? I imagine, because their focus is trying to attack the bot side of the map, they want to leverage the fact that they have a winning two versus two. And we're going to see some priority. Already a very nice trade from the Brava Nice. Putting a lot of pressure down onto Super. And there we are. Moving over to the... Uh, oh, here we are. I'm keeping my eyes on Oyoya. Actually, how will he adapt his pathing? Red buff has been secured by Sheo. Is this going to be a level 2 gank from El Yoya? He's looking for yeah, it. Looks like it. Lebov and Ice have pushed up. Shale's on his way across. Lebov flashing away as Alvaro looks for the concussive blows, and Lebov wow. is just down. Ice has to flash as well, but the chase continues. Ice knocked up with a Q3. Concussive blows again. There's a cleanse away. Ice is one order from death, and Super finds it. It's a double for MDK in the bot lane, and the Mad Lions have come for a bit of a Barney. Shale's going to get a good double in response as Elio looks to trade onto him, trying to stack up that Q. Manages to get the damage. Three for two. Oh. Elio, the minions! Oh. The minions! Ooh, he oh. just drops aggro. So what pathing from El Yoya. He does one camp straight to bot. Nuke. Whoa. Oh! That was close. That Not was very even close. even close, Benny. That was <laughs> double digit HP, yep. you know? Uh, that's going to be a trade of flashes in the mid lane. Wow. What crazy action. So El Yoya is just trying to punish the aggression here from BDS. Great adaptation, force flash from Alvaro, forces out from the Brov, easy first kill. They get the flash here from Ice, and that should already be enough, but they think, you know what, we can get more here. Even though Sheo has level three and gets some great damage down, Super has to commit the flash to make sure that he gets that double kill. That allows Sheo to get some back. And if Sheo's E had come up here, I really think he could have gotten a third kill. Unfortunately for him, not quite enough. El Yoya, very close to dying, but he's able to stay alive. <laughs> Uh, it looks like BDS were not expecting that, but impressive stuff from El Yoya. And his pathing has always been a, a key point of MDK's early game. Uh, it was informed Nuke survived on 10 HP, which is double digits. True. Uh, but the power of getting your bot lane in an okay position in the early game against Callista Renata and burning Callista and Renata summoners, all four of them. It's so good for MDK. Now, El Yoya is going to feel the hurt of it a little bit. Skip some of his camps. Now he's going to... Have that bot lane pushing in, allowing Sheo and Nuke just to step into this jungle alongside Lebrov. Ice stacking the wave here means that Alvaro and Super have to catch it. Looking for the Gromp as well. Alvaro's going to come across. The stun on El Yoya. He's low, down to about 200 Isn't HP. 100 die? now. He's so low. Ice looking for the pierce, can't quite find it. 
Unbreakable could come out from Alvaro to stop any more spears landing. Concussive blows into a couple more stacks for Super. Sheo. Is Elioyo going to path back towards his wolves? Looks like he won't. But Sheo can bring down the thunder once again just to keep Elioyo around if he so desires. So Sky keeping Nuke underneath his tower is super important to make sure that BDS can't guarantee this numbers advantage. But now this bot lane is at the whim of Sheo. Elioyo can do absolutely nothing to assist. You imagine that a dive is very likely to come through soon. The problem for the wave team called thick. Mad Lions is a dive is always just a whim away, a whim away, a whim away, a whim away. <laughs> <laughs> you got a chuckle out of our producer for that one. Yeah, I did. That was a pretty good one, to be honest. Instead, they're going to convert that pressure into an early dragon. Five minutes on the clock, and they're going to grab that almost immediately. For Scary, relatively low here. Going for the corrupting pot on Nuke gave him a bit of extra sustain. That's really helping him out in these trades. Now has a nice health advantage, which he's going to use to gain control over this midwave. And remember, both TPs were invested, so Annie going back here makes things very favorable for Nuke. So all things looking up for BDS right now. That early gank was promising to alleviate some of that pressure, but... The snowball effect that, from it is I so wanted to bad. say the snowball. I looked at the bottom and I was like 45 CS yeah. to 18. And Super's level 3 it's and Ice is almost gold. level 6. There's only a difference of 13 I, mean, the, I don't think the 13 gold matters. I think the Fate's Call in a couple of minions is what really matters in this position. Like, sure, Super got two kills, but he's not able to collect any of the waves. He's being forced away. Mid lane is Nuke's leading as well and getting the push in mid because Annie can't push that quickly before she gets Tibbers. Elioya's level four and is half the CS of Sheo. So as much as, yes, you got two kills, you, I, I'd have to go back and look at exactly how things extrapolated from those two kills. But it's actually cost MDK a lot in terms of their tempo and their map position after those first couple of kills. I mean, it's, it's very awkward for Mad Lions, Koi, for sure. Because typically you'd expect things like potential cross maps, you know, while all this pressure is going towards the bot side of the map, you as MDK can leverage your prior mid and Alioya to threaten some dives top. You look at Adam's HP and you're like, oh, that's actually in potential dive range. But uh, they haven't been able to do that because of the pressure that's been put onto Alioya. Sheo just controlling that bot side of the jungle, limiting Alioya's ability to gain experience. After his reset, he's now moved to the top side, secured himself two grubs. And now we should be able to grab his red, but again, this just opens up the bot side of the map for Sheo. I haven't been keeping track of whether or not he's actually killed his own blue buff yet, but uh, he doesn't really need it, considering he just keeps stealing away those camps from Elioya. Took away the last blue from Mad Lion's Koi. Mirwin here in the top lane is, as we said, the on-hit Nico. Still does, um, you build up two stacks with your auto attacks from Shape Splitter, and then you do bonus magic damage after building up the two stacks. Yeah, so. you can see, well, yeah. it was just highlighted on the, the bottom yeah, map. Extra no points in Q, yep. just points in W and E. Oh, thank you, Observers, highlighting it for us again. Just because it gives you that additional on-hit effect. Let's see it down here. Uh, it just shows you that extra damage is what he's looking for. And it does work out well. Uh, it's still nowhere near as strong as it was once. Gives you a bit of extra is that bonus volley there, bot lane well. again, man. It is Vetti, what a surprise! I wonder See, this who is would win what in a Solo battle Q, between bears and lions. This is what Solo Q AD carries think is happening to them, but this is what actually happens in pro play <laughs> when you're in a losing matchup. <laughs> the problem is, as a Solo Q AD carry, and I speak from a support mindset here, right. your jungler doesn't cover you. Yeah, so you right. just die to all of these games because you never have protection. You just get Elioia died. wouldn't have been there. Yeah, Elioia's never there. He's like, right. oh, hey guys, oh, there's Grumps, and uh, he's got a Grump on top side, so I'm going to go take that Grump because I need to go <laughs> for myself. And that does make sense in solo queue because often the only person you can rely on is yourself. Bro. Here, though, MDK are relying quite heavily on Super being in a good position when we get towards the later portions of the game. Smolder. Very it's good. shocking to me that he's 40 CS down and only down 300 gold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, he's got two kills, buddy. I mean, I appreciate that, but like, this is going to be their third plate. <laughs> I, uh... It's an all-you-can-eat buffet, but super practiced a bit of cannibalism earlier <laughs> on in the lane by Did gobbling he? up two of the enemy team. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you were really wondering where I was going with that one. Like, oh, okay, cool, okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a metaphor. <laughs> Ice and LeBron have been back for a third plate, but they just still haven't been able to match the amount of gold. Uh, Elio is still covering, still only level five, but does dissuade the dive. Blue now respawning. On the rest of the map, not really too much happening. Merwin winning the top lane matchup as expected. You're arranged into a melee, kind of how you see this matchup going. There were a couple of grubs picked up by MDK, a Drake taken by BDS in a minute's time. Another Drake will spawn, but once again, Elioya, he covered the dive expertly. He was there, he stood around, he made sure the dive didn't materialize, but 
for it. He loses his bottom side jungle. Oh, Adam. That moment was thinking about it. Doesn't go for it in the end. The pressure's been gained. He should be able to secure plates off the back of this anyway. Oh, look, Shao, bot lane again. I like this from Shao. Just making sure Alvaro doesn't have a good reset timer. Also, Lavrov can step round and you can kind of gate Super and Alvaro from getting back into the lane if you're around here. Super now has to be really careful when he walks back in because Shao could just be waiting in that bush. You can see Alvaro stepping forward trying to make sure that Shao isn't just stopping uh, Super from walking into the lane. Reset comes out from Ice and Lavrov though, so Super is a little bit more safe. So I'm just going back through the VOD to have a quick check. And uh, Shao did, in fact, clear his Wolves and his Gromp. Didn't clear Blue Buff. No. Blue Buff is level one. Yeah. Do you think this is what every Blue Buff aspires to be? You know, most of them spawn. It's like, oh, I've got my happy little family. After my, my job is done here, I'll yeah. go back to them with my little Bluette and Blueschen, which is the uh, German name for a small Blue I don't buff, think I the Blue Buff has that level of sentience. No? No. I think it's just a rock that stands there. But it, it, it's a moving rock. Yeah. Alioia might be dead. Yeah, quite possibly. Crescent Guard comes down. There's a heal as well from Alvaro, but Alioia's had to burn his ultimate, and they get a summoner out of it. PDS still looking for that Drake. Flash from Lebrov. Flash away by Alioia. The Drake should be pretty much guaranteed for BDS here. Super forced away from the wave. Has to use the cleanse as well as the flash goes in from Sheo. The tower falling low down to a plate itself as Ice continues to gobble up that gold. For Scowie coming in from the side. Almost has that stun charged up. Sheo able to walk away though from the Achu. Super only sneezing on the backside of that bear. I mean, that is now four plates to Sheo. I mean, credit to BDS. They've done pretty much everything right that they can do, and now Super. they're going for the die. Yeah, Super has no cleanse. Nuke's going to just jump across here, and Breakable comes out. Mom is called. Lebrov tanking the tower, can use the bailout phase. Call first. There's the stun on Ice, though, and with Ice tanking it secondary, BDS have botched the dive. It's gone all to hell. Oh, MDK, the cover was perfect for BDS. What on earth was that? That was a three for three. BDS finally tried to make the dive happen, and it all falls apart. We see the ultimate come out from Sheo to shut down the turret. But what is the target focus here? So Braum is tanking up a lot. The ultimate from Super is massive. Lebron then gets the reset. But then look at that. The wind becomes lightning, just kills them both. The second that he comes out of it, El Yoya gets that kill. I think it ends up being a three for two, Vetti, in favor of MDK. No, no, I swear it was three for three. I might, yeah, yeah, I think it... Only Super and Elioria died. Alvaro and Frascari were still alive at the end you're of right, it, and obviously right, Mirren's right. up towards Minus the top side. Because it was, yeah, two, three earlier, now yeah. it's four, six. You are correct. My apologies. Second Dragon now alive. I'm sure the fans will forgive you for <laughs> misstating <laughs> one number, it. you know? <laughs> they will remember this forever. <laughs> Well, this is a decent cast, but do you remember yeah, that remember one time, time he, did the he math miscalculated? Oh, I, can't I don't think it. I can ever forgive him for that. So BDS now in a gold deficit. MDK have taken the lead with their ability to mind control BDS into some <laughs> slightly poor dives. The tower's still low, though. I mean, I think the idea was good. I just think the execution was... <laughs> with dire. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you look at the gold, MDK lead. At the fact that there is a 50 CS difference between those 80 carries and there's literally only a 275 gold lead. Uh, absolutely crazy. MDK have done everything that they can to mitigate the sheer amount of pressure. El Yoya consistently has his bot camp stolen, but he's now up in gold thanks to all the kills that he keeps getting for himself. Nuke was able to get a double, so he has advantage over Frascawi, who hasn't really been able to get involved in this game so far. But aside from that, everything looking up for MDK. We'll see how they play around the next dragon of the game. That's up in four minutes. BDS do love stacking their drakes, and if they can open up this bot side, well, it makes it a bit easier for them to get that deep vision that makes taking dragons that much easier. This tower, basically a stiff breeze from falling over. They want to get it in the next 25 seconds before the plates go down. After that, the manager will kick them out of the all-you-can-eat buffet and say, you've had your fill. Mom comes down again, and Rob's tanking it. He's down, he's just dead. I'll start taking over his use, but at some point, BDS, like, Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. It hasn't gone well for you the last few times. And the Unbreakable stops any chance of BDS getting another kill out of that. So another kill to MDK. They're doing a, a great job of stopping these dives happen. And uh, you have to give them credit for it because it would be very easy to be like, okay, we forfeit bot lane. Yes, we'll give up the tower. Super can then farm further back in the lane. You give up a lot of pressure, but MDK have read BDS like a book throughout this game. And Mirwin will be the one to take first turret. Uh, he will. 
nearly 2k gold lead now in favor of MDK. They uh, have been welcoming uh, participants in the attempts of BDS's early game. They say don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Do they? <laughs> I mean, that is an English idiom. It's like, you know, don't... In it used to be if someone gave you a horse, right, if you were buying a horse, you'd inspect their teeth to see I if they see. were infected. So it's ah. now, oh, you, if someone gives you a horse, don't be, you know, scroungy enough to I look them see. in the mouth. I see. But then the Trojan horse happened. It's like, well, maybe we should look <laughs> them in the mouth, you know? This but a gift. <laughs> Why are you so suspicious? <laughs> it's a great point, Medic. Um, was it? It was a point. We'll put it there. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a great analogy for what's happening in this game, that's for sure. MDK, they may be confused, but they are welcoming of their current circumstances. 7-4 to four is the kill lead. 1k gold lead for now. Yeah, super, a lot of that uh, sitting on Mirwin. Super's at 120 stacks as well, though. It's not going to be the quickest 225 we've ever seen on a smolder, but considering how far behind he's been put in the lane, it's uh, a pretty sizable chunk for him to be on right now. Rifteld being taken by BDS. MDK did set up around it, but I think they're just going to accept that they didn't really have mid prior. All five members of BDS are over here for scow. He's in the bot lane. Don't want to invest his TP into joining the freight. So BDS will get the held. And Super will just get another mid wave. Two levels down, though. It's still that experience differential we talked about earlier on with Ice having that lead. So we think about next objectives. 130 until the Dragon, with the bot tower being taken. BDS may consider opening up other towers, but they're cautious about the fact that the dragon is spawning soon. So you would consider maybe moving your bot side up towards top or maybe mid to start sieging towards these uh, outer towers. Mirwin actually just going to stay top, keep this pressure up as much as possible. He doesn't have the TP available, Adam does, so he could get involved in a fight sooner. But does a world or MDK just concede the next dragon in order to secure that top tier two? Yeah. But it depends how strong they feel that they are right now. Remember that BDS's comp. The reason why early dragons are so important is you force this supposed, this well actually supposed that this scaling comp into uh, into a fight earlier than they want to, yeah. right? And then you have things like Zin Annie to help you bridge that gap. They are the champions that do have strong one-item spikes, and and the fact that LDO finds himself at four, one, and two is uh, is a great spot to be in. So it ultimately comes down to MDK and whether or not do we think that we are strong enough to fight them right now, or do we instead actually, are we fine giving away this next dragon, waiting for Smaller to maybe get the second item and then look for a fight afterwards? That's always the debate you have to have with yourselves. Mirwin will have his TP for the Drake fight. Uh, it'll be up in about 20 seconds time, but it will be for the fight, not for any setup before the fight materializes. Super. Still building up those stats, has the Essence Reaver, still only one here. item as Ice as well. I guess the plan is to maybe force a fight early and then TP back to top, but you look at Mirwin right now, he's already on the objective. Alvaro going forward, there's the Unbreakable, TP coming in from Mirwin, TP behind as well by Adam, Mum being called, Shao has to get away from the back of the fight, Adam TP'd in and MDK disengage. A hostile takeover used as well by LeBrov. In terms of ultimates, we still have Adam's Dominus, still have the Pop Blossom, we still have Tibbers as well for Skawi and Mirwin can team up very effectively if they can find that double ult combo. Dragon down to 6,000. Shale's already reset. Like, BDS, are you just going to keep this busy for the next 40 seconds or so? Because I think MDK can take it before Shale is even able to get there. But the fight continues as Alvo puts up the Unbreakable once again. And Adam just dashes into his demise. Super takes him. BDS, that just seemed like such a greedy fight to take. Your jungler had reset. There was no way you were going to win a smite fight. And Adam flashes into his death. I mean, MDK did everything correctly. Just as the top wave was hitting the tower is when they chose to force the fight. Alvaro was in a, uh, uh, initially... Oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, Alvaro's going to get caught out here. Puts the Unbreakable down. Nuke dashing across the wall. Charm lands. Nuke will get one. Get the Spirit Rush reset. Crescent Guard out from Elioia. But Elioia will fall to Sheo, who rejoins the action. Super has Cleanse and Flash. So should be able to get away from the very angry bear that's beginning to chase him down. Nuke just surviving again. BDS able to get a couple of kills out of the backside of the fight. But they definitely lost the Drake. And MDK stopped the scaling. BDS. They're able to find something back. But... Going back to this initial play, you look at the timing. Oh, actually, we got much later into the fight after Sheo has already been forced out. It's Adam's flash in here, but then look at the wall here from Alvaro. Just the truly to its name, the unbreakable shield, just mitigating the damage from the back line of BDS, and it's just a wall they can't get through. Now, that was just a poor base from Alvaro. He shouldn't have tried to base inside the enemy's jungle. 
Uh, then El Yoya tries to work with his team, saying, hey, you know what, this is actually a three versus four. I think we can get something back here, but now you've got a full health Cheo ready to fight. Nuke trying to flash in so he can get the reset off and then get the kill, get his HP back, maybe dying and then come back to life. Um, but he ends up walking away with his life anyway, so uh, all works out in the end for BDS, even though right now, as you rightly said, MDK is in a much better position because you, you kind of saw an example of how difficult it's going to be to get onto not just the smolder, but you've also got this this eco constantly just hitting whoever is in range. So much utility is provided that this composition is going to be harder and harder to fight the longer the game goes. Alvaro smartly putting four points in the E as well means that Ambek was up even more often in the fight. Cheo trying to get away from Mom. Super flashes for the concussive blows. And for Scowie will take the kill. Shut down over to him. Gold in his pocket. Baron. His first kill in the game, as you say, it might be a Baron. It might just be a push through mid lane, get that tower down and then set up for the Baron later on because you still don't have two items okay. on Super. I don't think your damage profile is quite there yet. Obviously, the cooldowns are still very low, and it's fair to say that they probably don't have the fastest Baron at this point in the game, so they're just going to play it safe. Oh, yeah, yeah just going to go grab that crab, and uh, they did what they could to secure that mid tower, but a pick is still going to be fine. The only problem is Super did lose his flash chasing after that. Could be a problem later on. But again, it ultimately depends on how easily BDS can gain access onto the backside. You look at that top lane difference, Adam picked a weak side top lane. Um, Mirwin has decimated him. Yeah. Obviously, this is a not an easy matchup. In a 1v1. Yeah, it is not an easy matchup for, for Adam. Uh, and it could have been much worse if Elioi had abandoned his bot side and said they chose to camp that side. But a 2k gold lead just goes to show how difficult these range matchups can be for the Renekton. And the risk for Adam is as well, like, he, he had to blind pick his top laner, and the Nico could still flex. So yeah, there was true. always this risk of, well, maybe they just pick Nico into it and mess us up. Hostile takeover eaten by the wall. Only Alvaro goes berserk. TP in by Fuscao. We counter TP by Nuke. Shale falling low, and he will fall first. Elioia takes the kill. Tangle barbs into the Fates Call. Will pull Lebrov to safety. Doesn't want to re-engage, unsurprisingly, as MDK once again find a pick, and now can look to group up in this mid lane and push forward. Mirwin has bot gone tower. down towards the bottom lane for that bot tower. Exactly. Fiskawi looking for the stun, lands it onto Adam, chunks him out a little bit. The wave is cleared in mid, but the bot tower will be Mirwin's prize for this sequence of because events. Because both teams are now looking at these outer towers as the next primary objective, right? To get them down gives you greater access into the enemy jungle, but gives you more opportunities to find picks, set up for plays, and so MDK, they stop the siege from BDS onto this mid tower after they'd used the Herald. And then rather than trying to overcommit and force this mid tower where BDS were just stacking his four, they actually send Mewin down to bot to go and catch that one. So they unlock an objective and have a little bit more control over the map. Now both these mid towers are getting lower and lower. Likely going to be that point to open up. Now with the dragon spawning in a minute's time, both these teams will come back to mid, look to gain control over that wave so they can gain access to the river. But earlier we talked about how maybe MDK wanted to avoid fighting that last dragon fight. I feel like that they should feel very confident, given how the last one went, that they should be able to do that. And Mewen has his TP, so I'd love to see him actually maybe even go back to top lane, put that pressure down once again. Instead, for now, the reason why he's grouping is to help give them numbers, to help siege onto these towers. And by guaranteeing numbers, it allows you to gain control over that midway. Yeah, Super needs to hit two more things to get fully stacked, or well, 225 stacks, the breakpoint that you need on Smolder. And he has hit his second item before ice. And when you think back to the first 10 minutes of the game, that is truly a shock how far ahead BDS were. Super walked up to the wave. There we are, 225. We have hit the win con. The outplay button well, It hasn't even been pressed. It doesn't need to be. It just exists now. He'll press Q and uh, do a hell of a lot of damage with BDS already struggling to get that engage. Front to backs are not looking pretty for them at all. And Adam realizes that he's looking for the flank. He's down towards the bottom side. If you can separate Alvaro from some of the backline, then you have an access point, then you have a way in, but already Lebrov unable to see the Annie waiting in the bush, and there's two, the Dragon as well for MDK, and Betty is three minutes later, but I think this might spell a Baron. Certainly looks like it, Ice now in danger. That's the flash away, they continue to chase Sheo. That's, that's it, it's done. MDK has scaled, welcome to the late game, 24 minutes later. BDS have been well and truly shut out of this game. And there is the Baron, a just reward for how MDK navigated the early game. Although BDS did give it to them on a bit of a silver platter. So we look at this engage, and when you're trying to create this flank or try to answer it, you just engage on one of the two sides. Lebrov ends up being the target. Friskawi completely one-shots him, and the fight is already over before it even begins. No opportunity for Adam to find a flank. It means that BDS are forced to retreat. 
And it's just a one-sided affair. MBK playing these fights about as well as you can. Yeah. Very well done from them. They leverage their flexibility in the draft, and they are shutting down BDS for a much-needed win here as we draw ever closer to playoffs. Huge win in the playoffs race for them. Tomorrow, oh, not tomorrow. On Monday, they play up against Fnatic, a very difficult opponent right now. But getting this gets them to three wins, ties them up with Giant X and SK. Carmine Court and Rogue obviously play later on today. I would shout and scream about it, but it's kind of just the way things are for BDS right now as MDK find another pick on Adam, who did push up and get a tier two in the bottom lane. Nuke trying to get some gold back as well, up towards that top side. There's a tier one there for him, but MDK are looking at a much juicier prize. Inhibitor Tower, a possibility, as they still have a cannon minion in this wave, three casters alongside it. And the Tibbers, if you want to tank the tower with that, likely send that in first, then let the minions stay healthy enough that the back door bonus isn't removed. This tower's become tankier, obviously, when minions aren't around them. TP possibilities here. Any flank wards, there's one all the way in the pit, in Dragon Pit for BDS if they want it. Nuke does have a TP. Mirwin pushing in mid lane, takes those towers, melts them like a knife through butter. Mom called just to send BDS packing. They've been grounded to their fountain. Two weeks in the sin bin for them as MDK force BDS back and will take two inhibitors off this push, most likely. They're going to keep going. Remember that Friskawi still has the flash ulti available. So does Mirwin. And there we go, Crescent Guard for the knockback. The shutdown from Super Unstoppable. Ice LeBrav and Nuke can only stand and watch as MDK raise their base to the ground. Nuke tries to dash in, hostile takeover, dodge to the side by Super, and perhaps MDK stepped a little bit too far forward as Nuke finds another bailout, brings it back. Mirwin trying to get away, does still have that Pop Blossom if he wants to go back in, but Super's low. Super's ticking down, there's the Pop Blossom, and Super! He dashed into his death, a triple in the end for Ice, the final kill for Sheo, an ace for BDS, but their base lies in tatters around them. I mean, BDS have done a good job of delaying the inevitable, but I think this is what it is, inevitable. MDK are just so strong at this point. They are so online with their late game composition. BDS, nice flash ultimate there from Friskawi, connects onto three, the cleanse and disengage from Ice to create space to go and heal up. MDK think that they can end the game here. Problem is, they've only got a single minion left. They get too greedy. A very nice ultimate from Lebrov. Basically turns the fight on its head. And BDS know at this point that they can chase. Nice resurrection that comes out onto Nuke. And then Mirwin thinks that he's found a nice ulti here, but uh, doesn't quite connect. Coaching staff, not too frustrated. They know that this game is very likely in the bag. As a reminder, BDS have already locked a spot in top eight. The outcome of this game doesn't hurt those chances, but of course you'd like to get a higher seed, and this definitely will hurt that. Play against a weaker opposition in your first few rounds of those best of threes. Kind of minion trolling MDK a little bit there. Just because you can attack from far away doesn't mean you can't get closer and tank the tower for them, you know? But uh, MDK just a little bit too greedy on that push. You have to expect, though, it's all done. But the final nails in the coffin here. Adam forced to flash away in the top side. Super minions pushing in bot. Nukes answering that. Super minions pushing in mid. They're going to meet in mid wave. And they will slowly force their ways over to the BDS side they're, of the map. They're trying to catch as many waves as possible to make the siege even harder, which is why you'll notice MDK actually moving over to mid and then walking that wave into the base just so that they have that point of pressure. This forces BDS to come and respond, which gives more access for MDK to start putting extra pressure on top. They know that they can leave Mirwin largely alone, but why bother when you can create this collapse and likely kill Adam? Adam has no flash or we'll slice initially. We'll try and dice away, but it doesn't have it, so can't really use it. Starax heals him up a bit, though, so now they can look for a re-engage, perhaps, with the Dominus coming down. MDK still very healthy. The tower's already fallen. Sheo looking for, perhaps, a flank position. Nuke lands the charm. Only onto Alvaro, puts up the Unbreakable. Minion wave cleared out. Those supers now knocking on the Nexus as Ice decides those are his first priority for right now. What have we got in terms of objectives? Well, there's Cloud Drake up, but it's no one's soul. Would only put either team on the third, and I don't think PDS really have the option of going out and taking it. The Baron's still a minute away. Obviously, Baron would help MDK's push quite substantially. But for now, they have to wait for that objective. Elioya with the knockup from the Q3. Shale, Stormbringer's down. Hostile takeover lands onto two, but not onto Super. That's the key target there. And with the minion wave being escorted once again, only one Nexus Tower stands between MDK and their third win of Spring. 
Mirwin escorting that minion wave in in the top lane. Nuke down to half HP from a small combo out of Super. And with three inhibitors down, BDS are well and truly out of this game. Super minions will be doubled in all the lanes from their next spawn. TP behind here is Adam perhaps looking for the flag. Actually, I think it's Nuke who's TPing behind them. Nuke goes in, lands the charm onto Super. Super almost falls, but Super's already killed off. Ice Lebov goes down as well, as Super manages to survive. Oh no, it's not another smolder. Penta, is it? Adam retreats to the base. The Nexus towers the first target, but MDK, they see the 5k in their eyes. They want it. They pop the Dominus. Tibbers walks in first. Adam's not going to give it to him. You got to earn it. And on Smolder, you don't have to do much to do that. MDK will earn the win, though. Supreme navigation of the early game. A few botched dice and BDS giving them more gold than perhaps they were due. But they claim their third win and they elevate themselves off the bottom of the standings. You see the challenges of BDS draft. It is very early game focus. It relies on you. Hard winning bot side of the map, having control over mid and the Annie shut that down uh, in the mid lane and and ultimately made it very difficult. So well played, MDK. Of course, you can vote for your key player of the game at LEC on XL, Yoya, Frescawi, or Super. All very viable options. Um, but yeah, much needed win for MDK in the race for playoffs. As you said, a very tight race towards the bottom end. It really is. We're going to see how much that race tightens up with our next game. But we'll be right back after this. Red Bull gives you wings.
pretty much everything right that they can do, and now they're going for the die. Yeah, Super has no plans. Nuke's gonna just jump across here, and Vekwil comes out. Mom is called. LeBrov tanking the tower, can use the bailout. Fates call first. There's the start on Ice, though, and with Ice tanking it secondary, BDS have botched the dive. It's gone all to hell. Okay, I think I'm not going to look at another, look at another. Nice. Keep going, keep going. Look at it. Ah, ah, Okay, we do nice now. Hello everyone and welcome back to the LEC. I'm Ginny and I'm joined with Supa from MDK. Congratulations on your win and thank you for joining me. The fans are cheering for you. You were also cheering for yourself earlier uh, this week. There's a clip that I want to talk about a little bit because you said that you're the best educator in the LEC. But the community's reaction to it has been very of a mixed bag. What do you want to say to the non-believers? I mean, for me, it was my opinion, what I think about myself. I have the proof. At the end, is for me, I don't care what people say, you know. But anyway, my answer will be at the end of the split when they see me with the trophy. I love the confidence. I respect it a lot. And let's talk about today because this was a win. You still have a game tomorrow against Fnatic. And you're going to be needing that confidence because that's a very crucial game. How are you feeling? How's the team feeling? Uh, I think this victory will be really good because we are doing pretty well. We are in a really high level, even if we are not showing. So this win will be more as a team buff, mm -hmm. like in the playoffs uh, when we started playing good. So I think it's an important win because tomorrow we will play even better. What's the plan for tomorrow then? Win, obviously. Just win. Just, yes. just win five hits. Just play. Yeah, just play, just win. Absolutely love that. Key player of the game is going to be Elioya, and it feels like uh, time and time again we touch upon the fact that you know he's more of the veteran in the roster. How has that been for you guys coming into spring? Because again, as you mentioned, you know, a little bit mm -hmm. back and forth. I mean, I think he's like a friend more than a veteran or whatever. So it's just we are all the same. There is no a special one, let's say, that do something more or less. It's, we are a team, we do our job, and when we, everyone, do it, we, we just win. Yeah, that's what you did today. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to your game tomorrow. So uh, we're going to be heading over back to the analyst desk floor. Take it away. Thank you so much. That was a really good interview. Good luck tomorrow. The final bus fight, G2 versus Rogue. If Rogue loses here, they are eliminated. Finito, people. We'll see them in All here today. <laughs> I like the last one. <laughs> you got it right here. It's not looking great for Rogue, but some lights are still here. I. 100% win rate. We talked mm. about it in. We talked about it in ready check, right? It was. Uh, yeah. If they want to avoid you. being Madge or Sag, they need to be able to bring that bring that back from winter. You know. <laughs> okay. Keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> but I do agree. Like, I mean, let's be real. On paper, throughout all of this, Rogue is the team that's looking like they're just not going to make it going up against G2. Sorry, I just realized Laura's mic was yeah, off, was, so it just sounds like okay, I was making a terrible. Oh joke. my God! True. But anyway. <laughs> Recap. We said Rogue lose here, eliminated. Done. Finito people for them. Go on. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But uh, yeah, they won. They, they have a 100% win rates here against G2. Is that going to be enough, though? You guys want to take a look at the draft they played on day one, maybe against GX? Not the greatest. What yeah, think I, I think so for Rogue, right? They're still plagued by the same issues they've been throughout the entirety of winter and going into spring. And it felt like they started leaning into, hey, we're not actually doing anything, so why don't we just draft scaling? But the problem with that is also, well, now you drafted full scaling, you went to the late game, and you still don't do anything. And the same issue has just been prevalent throughout Rogue throughout the entire year so far, is that even with Finn coming in, this is not a roster that is looking to make plays. And quite often, they just look like five players that queue up, and then they fall behind, and then yeah. they lose. I don't, I don't think it's going to matter how many players you plug and play into this roster until there is a change in the confidence levels. Like it, at this stage, there is nobody who's saying, "Hey, I." At this moment in time, we listen to Finn. At this moment in time, we listen to Marcoon. We listen to Lars. There's no one that's taking that mantle and going, "We are fighting." Shut the f up. Mm -hmm. We're going in, and just follow my call. And you can see it so often when they get to team fights. No one's actually behind them when they go in. You can see one person start to go in, another person starts to back away. It's all over the place. Like this is a team that needs a definitive shot caller that they are willing to follow, but it doesn't feel like anyone's willing to agree yeah. on who that is. Well, let's take a uh, look at another side of the analysis here, shall we? Because I think GB, you made a bet with Finn again. Yeah. O two against Finn right now, sweating I, a bit, aren't you? I am, but uh, you talk about confidence. I mean, you were there. We were yeah. out here at the bar with the Finn, and he uh, came out last week, and he was saying, GB, do you want to make another bet? I mean, the confidence was coming from it him was. this time, yeah. because that was before he was down 0-2. And we made the bet, and it was, uh, oh can God. you get out of playoffs? Here's my first loss when he was playing on Astralis, and I didn't think he could make it. Well, at that time, he did make it. 
and uh, not pleasant, oh as you can God. currently see. There is Red Bull in that shoe. Um, but then uh, here we've bet that whoever loses has to drink the juice of Surströmning. And if anyone knows what that is, we could not do it in the studio. We'd have to do it elsewhere. Yeah. It's Stay fermented tuned fish. for more yes. here. It's David versus Goliath with everything on the line for Rogue and for GB. Apparently, <laughs> let's send it over to the casters for the game. <laughs> Thank you very much, Law. Um, very, it's very comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> I was. I should have been just, here. I should have planned this better. We and could do it together if you want. Cool. So. Yeah. Sometimes we have to Hello. stand a lot, and I like to lean on the desk Welcome when I cast. Welcome to the sometimes sometimes Medi Vedi Relationship Advice Support. Welcome. Send us your Discord messages about Send what us. relationship advice you'd like. Relationship experts, right? I here. can tell you the relationships in Rogue probably pretty strained right now. <laughs> it's a bit of a struggle for them. G two so though. What? Very happy. Happy as a bee. Happy ha bees are very happy apparently. You've seen the emotes. That's why they made one. Would you be happy a, a happy bee? bee if you just you, you've worked your entire life making honey, and then someone comes in and just nabs your honey, Betty? I mean, it's, it's just not fair. Depends on your perspective, because it could be interpreted as someone is enjoying my honey so much that they keep coming back. But they're more. not paying you for it. What but they, they don't do? understand the concept of money. Again, yeah, we need but to they understand the concept of, of honey, Betty. Yeah. <laughs> We if someone to this stole level. my honey and gave me something sweeter in return, I'd be a very happy bee. Okay. For killing the plants, that's what bees medic. like, Medius. Fortunately, medic. The plants While are dying. Bees haven't conformed to capitalism just yet. We do have a game on our hands. Let's jump into the draft. How Rogue many have got their hands. Quotes do you think we can get into this <laughs> I'm hoping none. Zero, zero. Oriana has been locked in for Rogue. Uh, Quite a powerful champion and quite a statement being made by G2 right now. This champion considered by many to be the strongest mid laner on the patch. She wins pretty much every single matchup that there is to win. A Karma answer, of course, a massive flex paired up alongside the Rail means that G2 keeping their cards close to their chest. Rogue making it very apparent what their game plan is. Team fighting is the name of the game, a scaling weak side bot side. You imagine some sort of engaged tank Something like a Xin Zhao, potentially a Jarvan, could go alongside this Orianna because it is very much about these team fights for Rogue. Yesterday we saw them not finding that level of proactiveness, but they need to find it today against G2 to stand a chance of qualifying from the top eight. Now, Betty, according to all no known laws of aviation, there's no way Smolder should be able to fly. Oh my goodness. Its wings are just too small and its fat little body can't get off the ground. <laughs> Smolder, of course, flies anyway and tends to win games and get Pentas. That's true. That's probably why G2 locked it in. Yeah, that makes sense. We'll see how it does in the hands of Hans. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, like the bands coming out from G2, you imagine jungle is the role that's going to be targeted. They can, of course, counter pick top. The rel can be flexed into both jungle and support, depending on what they're feeling. Oh, I see that. They're actually looking at top lane. I mean, we do often see uh, Claire band away from Finn just to try and stop him having one of his really comfort picks, because that's often where people look when they're in dire straits. Dire straits, great point. Backs against the wall, you lean on the champion that you you trust. Right, he was, his name was Blomster Finn and he was a Clyde one trick. That's, that's true. how he came up through the regional leagues all that time ago. That was kind of more through Challenger. Now, really, if they really so wanted so. to make him uncomfortable, they'd ban Aurelia next. Not yep. that I expect that, but that's really a screw you, Finn. <laughs> <laughs> um, Instead, Braum taken away by Rogue does make sense. Obviously, the Karma and the Rel can both flex the support. We don't see too much support Karma these days, but Rel still very viable down towards that bottom. I mean, not the best into center Nautilus, though. You will struggle a little bit in that lane. Uh, relatively low damage comp so far from G2. Yeah, relatively. Relatively, indeed. Um, let's see if they can heat up this draft a little more. Eh? Smolder, they've already looked in. Dragon, breathes fire. <laughs> Lee Sin, banned away. Rogue, imagine, gonna ban away support next with the Braum already taken away. I'm actually not entirely sure what they'll ban here. Like, what do you go for? The maybe a Renata, but smaller Renata probably not. Maybe the Lulu. No. Okay, yeah, Jax. That makes sense. Actually, take away jungle because they probably look at the support pool and they say no. There's probably not actually that much that's scary that we're worried about. Question is, what will G2 actually do? Will they show their cards here or will they lock in top early? Show their cards. Okay, we say twisted fate. Is that what you're implying here? No, oh. it's the Ivan. Cards have been shown. So that rel is going into support unless they've cooked up some. Rel top lane that I don't know about. Uh, I think leaving top lane for counter pick last here makes, makes the most sense. sense. Yeah. You don't really need a tank like the Rek'Sai we saw yesterday. Instead, you can just look for something a bit more aggressive for Broken Blade. There's the Zin. 
makes a lot of sense. Volibear also fine. Basically, you just want something that can go in. Um, any form of engage works. I think the Javan also would have been a fine option. And the question is, how are they going to round things out? Aatrox going to keep it nice and safe with Jax banned away. One of the potential counter picks also makes sense. Now, Broken Blade, what have you been cooking? Are you going to show us the tank Rek'Sai again? I don't think they need it. I agree with you. I want to see a little more damage from them. Yeah, I agree. A bit more damage threat. They could consider a Renekton if they want some early game power. Not that Karma doesn't do damage, because she does with Metal Gear. Oh, so she, she still, does. She still can chip away at you, but you, having a bit of extra damage there makes a lot of sense. Rek'Sai does go also do damage. So this is very much about Smolder. Yeah. This yeah, is a protect this one. Now, the good news for G2 is for anyone that's ever looked at a post-game like damage dealt thing on Smolder, you'll see that 33% of his damage is physical, 33% is magic, and actually that's not quite true. It's more like 50% physical, 30% magic, and then about 20% true. true. Damage, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love looking at um, that. Just a big so white ring that killed he's, me. <laughs> he's really hard to itemize against, especially given the, uh, usually when you round out your build, you're looking at things like Leandries as well to just add to the burn that comes with his passive. Um, but as you can see, this is very much a protect the smolder composition. And as, as Medic mentioned, Caps will be able to do damage. But in terms of consistent damage, that's not really what Karma does. She's a lot more about poking, chipping away at you, and being able to provide that additional utility. Rogue have very much a wombo combo traditional team fight style. We kind of look at priorities. I imagine that Finn should be able to get some control over that top side of the map early because Rek'Sai doesn't necessarily have a lot of power in those early laning phases. Karma versus Orianna is going to be a constant trade back and forth where you imagine Orianna should be able to get that early push, whereas in the bot side of the map, you imagine Rogue and Comp will have that control. I'm anticipating a slow early game, Medic, but it's G2, so you never really know. Yeah, last time we had a smolder in a bot lane, he got two kills at minute three. That's true. So it's very possible that happens again in this game. I doubt it, but it's very possible, Betty. So we get on into this do or die game for Rogue. If they lose this, they are out of playoffs contention for spring, just as they were out of playoffs contention for winter. I see five players in mid lane. Mm -hmm. G2, what's the plan? Stand around mid, Betty. Look for flowers. Anything I, can pollinate here. Here. Anything I can pollinate here. That's what Han Summer's thinking. How many B quotes have you looked That's at? That's not a B quote. That's just me <laughs> making it. I just riff on the bees, <laughs> you know? I'm like Ivan, a friend of the forest. I riff on the bees. I see. You've never sounded more like a... How's it hanging, kids? <laughs> That's, I'm getting a lot of boomer energy from this, you right now. This game now. is the B movie, but every time there's a team fight, we talk quicker. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's a good one. That's, but that, that's like 10 years old, that meme now as well. Um, it must be around that, right? No. That's pre COVID. Which team is that? Oh, I missed it. I think it's I G2, know. Vetti. I don't think that was a G2 fan. No, it's. Oh, you were talking about the icon. The I, thought icon. You just, I thought you were just confused the, okay. for a second. <laughs> okay, I might be getting on. I'm not <laughs> that old. <laughs> All right, so jungler's starting. Markoon on the top side of the map. Yike will. Didn't you tell me, Medic, about this insanely fast new Ivan clear? Oh, yeah. So there is an insanely fast new Ivan clear um, that you can do in like 248, I but want to say. Is it just like theoretical? No, you, you can do it, but it's very dependent on you hitting your Q max range onto a small wolf. And Yike is not doing it here. Okay, fair. So we're not going to talk about it. What he'll do is he'll set up his bot side, he'll then go across to his top side. He did use the blast. Oh no, he hasn't used the blast. He just used his root quarters to get across. So we will look for the Ivan tech. The one bit yep. of technology that Ivan players can do, Vedius. Uh -huh. And they love this bit of technology. But all it consists of is right clicking, <laughs> pressing Q, and right clicking again, That's and the then way. pressing Q oh, again. Yeah. That's all it does. It's not mechanically interesting, but it's Ooh. great to watch. So what he does is he sets up his razor beak, sets up his red, he'll take his. Um, Wolves and blue, hopefully, Here we go. very quickly. Here's no, he's not doing it. He's not doing it. So what you would usually do anticipation is you would path down to this blast. Oh, well, never mind. Nice <laughs> 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 hook Engage there. happens in the bot lane as the hook goes down. So you pass, path down to the blast cone. You cue the blue buff, right? And then you use the blast cone to take yourself over to the wolves, pick up the wolves, press Q again, go to the blue buff. Bob's your uncle. You're able to get all three camps. Markoon is invading here. Yike's already level three. He's Yike cleared his entire jungle. So now he's just going to cover a possible bot lane dive. We saw BDS look for these dives game one. Oh, last game. Didn't go too well. Level two just hit by Han Summer as he flat, flat, flaps his way away. Han Summer will fall for first blood, answering kill as Yike gets it. 
I mean, that's how it's done, for yep. the record. That's that was you a want. nice dive from Rogue. Like, and yeah, Summer has TP, though, Betty. That True. <laughs> that's a flash in from Mickey. Yeah, Comp does have flashes. Use the heal. There's the Shadowing Strike for the stun. Follow-up continuing as Mickey falls lower. Mickey's just stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey? He's like a bee, Betty. You get one sting and then you're done. Yeah, he did the sting with the Shadowing that Strike. He and did. Then he just yanked it out and died. I am baffled. I'm not sure what threat <laughs> Mickey thought Would he was under. you you're befuddled? <laughs> <laughs> You're having way too much fun, Benny. Um, so, this is a nice dive, because the goal here is... You're right that he does have TP, but you kill the Smolder, deny as much farming experience as possible. Hans runs into the wall, but then snaps back to reality. Up oh, there goes gravity as he goes back to base. Um, but now the question mark comes from this flash here from Mickey. Knocks him back. He still has heal and... But the wave is just so big. I feel mm -hmm. like that in every situation, Hans really just wants to catch this wave. Yep. So big question marks for me. Not sure why he decided to force that. Rogue get themselves another kill. Han's a big surfer. He loves catching waves. Zoe at least looking for the hook here. And lands it onto Mickey, who can't just fair He crashed down away. Flash last embrace. And Mickey no flash has Mickey. no flash to get away. Mark, who's going to flash? There's the stun. Oh, Mickey. Zero, two, one. Why is it that versus G2, Rogue looks like the most proactive team in the league? Because when G2 play against Rogue, they're the most in team in the league, ready? Like, I all mean, credit to Rogue. The tower dive initially was good. It was Mickey great. then flashing forward after that was diabolical, Betty. Question mark. And then that for Mickey also wasn't the finest play I've ever seen displayed on Well, I mean, in that street. situation, there wasn't much he could do because, to, to, to Rogue's credit, the wave was pushing in. Yeah. G2 has to kind of overextend, and you're kind of reliant on Yike there to be able to provide that cover. He's not there, which means the Rogue find a good gank. They get another punish. Now they find themselves at 3-1. and one, A 1k gold lead over G2. Absolutely massive for, for them. Remember that they are playing very much a um, team fight composition. One of the big scaling elements is going to be Comp, who he is going for the support center build. They're threatening another dive again. Hans does have the flash, but Yike is nowhere to be seen. Yeah, Yike's on the top side of the map. He was covering Broken Blade. Zoe Elise waiting before this auto comes down. Looking for it. Onto Han Summer. Gets stunned with the Shadowing Strike. Then Dredge lines his way away. No one tanking. Apart from Markoon, who goes down to half HP. Han Summer it is took a little bit of really it. gross that Hans can just eat into a wall. I mean, like, can't touch me. Can't touch me. And just, this grow, <laughs> just grow wings. <laughs> it's an evolutionary dis disadvantage for you that you don't have wings. That's correct. That is a factual statement. Although I think if humans had wings, None of us would fly that much because I think it uses a lot of energy and like we don't run everywhere. <laughs> we wouldn't fly everywhere, you know? That is a thought-provoking question, Medic. You should bring it up on a podcast sometime. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Mickey going yeah. in. Mark Kuhn looking for the flank. Dredge line away. There's the sun with the shadowing strike. Zoe Elise knocked up with the Feromancy but gets the shield and Mickey's gone in once again. Zoe Elise gets one. Answered by a kill for Mickey. Support, support for trading. support, yep. yeah. Obviously, both teams would love their AD carries to be picking up those kills, but still, a trade nonetheless. Caps and Larson continuing to trade in mid. Top lane, Broken Blade is winning this matchup. Honestly, not what I was expecting, but obviously Aatrox in those early levels, not the strongest. You did see the amount of healing that Rek'Sai just does. Oh, no, you know, I definitely understand yeah. that. Yeah, I was tracking it. Yesterday, there was one fight where he just healed 930 yep. HP. Mm -hmm. um, Pretty disgusting when you get the Spirit Massage. But we'll see this again. Mickey Hex flashes the wall. The follow-up's there. You've got so much CC for Zoe Elise. He never really has a way to escape, even with the dredge line. As you said, unfortunate that neither Comp nor Han Summer got those kills. I think the tick that even yep. took it as well. I thought the Volley Bear was going to get it initially. He, but he uh, here's the training pattern that Medic was just talking about. Burrow, heal. Heal, yeah. heal, that's 47, 47, 47. So well, that's just short of like 150, something like 140, something. 140. No, 130 something. Yeah, 141, I think, but uh, close enough. G2 are in a bit of a hole here, about 700 gold behind. They do have Smolder though, 47 stacks. They have a lot of ways to support him throughout the game. Comp at 26 stacks himself. Mickey looking for the sun here once again, as Zoelise is just forced under the tower. Obviously, Nort being here by himself isn't the end of the world. Zoelise can just farm. And Rogue can come along and pick up those Absolution Fragments as the game goes on. Broken Blade has set himself up a nice little tunnel network here. Uh, he does. Now, as a reminder, G2 have, of course, locked playoffs right now. Their fight is for the top two. Uh, for Rogue, even if they win both their games, their qualification is not in their hands. Uh, so even if they get the next two games, I think they can still lock out in 18% of scenarios. Right. right? So, still a possibility that Rogue going 3-6, and six, which would be the end result, doesn't get them into playoffs. So, it's a tricky road. It's a tricky road. A rocky 
rogue so far. Uh, that was not as good. No, that was. I mean, I don't really know where I was going with that one, Betty. What I need to do is once again find B movie quotes <laughs> to bring it back. You yeah. think that'll save it? Mm -hmm. I think people are loving it. Are they? I'm going to close my DMs after this. <laughs> I think for now, <laughs> people are enjoying it. I mean, right now, Rogue is looking good. I want to see them continue this proactivity. Markoon. I mean, I, will, I didn't mention it during the draft, but Markoon, when he debuted onto the league, it was Volibear with Nuked Up that he was diving that mid tower against. Against G2, actually, I believe. So, if anything, he's back at home. You know, returning back to those glory days. Let's see how things pan out here as a dive Thank is into it. Shadow and Strike. Mom gets caught as Comp just falls. Tries to get the Dawning Shadow out, but it doesn't do much. Though Elise now has to flash as well, and the chase continues. Markoon and Larson coming in for a bit of a Barney. Death Charge down onto Mickey. We'll get the lockup Shockwave as well to follow. And Mickey once again does fall down. And the reincarnation. He keeps coming back as a bee and keeps just trying to sting the enemy. So the trick to stopping a dive is to fight before they dive. Yeah. I mean, credit to G2, they, they forced that play just ahead of Rogue setting up for the dive onto the tower. Keep your eyes on the positioning of Larson. He's making his way across. The communication is coming through from G2, and they say, let's just go on to comp. It's actually really smart from the bush as well. Really nice play. He is not expecting that to happen. TP into the mid lane. Comp trying to get away from Caps here. Larson joining the party as Mickey and Yike will fight a little bit as well. And should focus as old. Has to be flashed away by Larson. Mickey going back in. I think that a root the, call uh, yeah, there. Was, yes. <laughs> yeah, accidentally right click. Mickey was Often gliding. with an Ivan. Yeah, looking so. to get a bit of deeper vision now. Pings back towards bot. Observers, if we could have a look at that bot wave, I'd love to see the current state behind Summer because he was pinging he's it. pushing. Okay. Oh, towards him. There's a cannon minion on the so, other yeah, side, yeah, so yeah, now yeah. he's going to like try now and. Know, he's just right going to shove that one out by the looks of what you know, yeah. last Yeah, he will push it out. But uh, Rek'Sai just doing Rek'Sai things. Borrowing. Yike. I'm borrowing. Markoon's going to join the fray as Yike locked up for the moment. Does still have the flash and will burn it to escape. Markoon used his as well in the battle. Broken Blade trades in once again and then we'll just take a quick trip to the underground. Wimbling, Wimbling, Wimbledon free. Do you remember um, old Rek'Sai top with the farm alarm? Yeah, farm alarm. That was such a broken medicine. Oh, I'll just go out and just, you know, instantly be back in lane. Free teleport for my time. Yeah, was, I read this one Reddit comment where, like, they were kind of being mean, but it made me realize something. Where they People were like, mean on Reddit? I know, but they, basically they said this pro player was something like 10 when the original Rek'Sai released. Oh, yeah. And it was just one of those things where I was like, wait, at what point are certain champions released? where they're like, there are going to be people playing today that had no idea, like, that these champions came out before they, you know, you, yeah, do you know what I, I mean? I, I understand <laughs> what you're saying. You, uh, firstly, we're assuming the league lasts another eight years or so, which obviously would be great for us. Would be great. <laughs> um, but yeah, at a point, we have players who the champion came out before they were born. Born, yeah. <laughs> So yeah. I was there in the good old days when you could stack Black Cleavers and Hecarim broke the game on release. Remember that for like three weeks you couldn't play League? Because if you tried to load into a game and a Hecarim was in it, it would just crash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's it another so dive funny. bot lane. That it is. Now setting it up five, four man stack. Depth charge onto Mickey. TP behind as Rexai's looking to join this fight, but already oh. Mickey oh. and Hansama are deleted. A double. Broken Blade going in with a flash knock up. Larson not tanking the tower as of yet. The charge forward by the Rek'Sai as Broken Blade falls low. He tries to bow, gets a knock of the shield, not enough. Trigger Seed won't save him now, and Caps can't kill off Zoe Lee's, but Daisy maybe can! Daisy killed off the final breath, looking for that final order one. Zoe Lee's couldn't find it, and Rogue find a perfect dive in the bot lane. Where has this Rogue been all split? Like, what a great play on the bot side. They are consistently diving Hans and Mickey. The ultimate is used by Hans to, to try and clear out the wave as much as possible. But look at this, he's barely given an opportunity to move the shockwave from Larson was clutch. Broken Blade with a nice three-person knocker. Isn't enough. The ulti comes through from Comp to keep his mid laner alive. And Caps just doesn't have the damage. This comes back to what we were talking about. So much of their damage is on Hans Summer. And while Caps does have decent poke, 
especially at this situation, he doesn't have anything to clean up the fight. You've also got an Ivern. It's just, it's a very low damage comp from G2 and Rogue are doing exactly what they need to shut the damage down at its source. Yeah, only a thousand gold lead for them. Drake up though. Markoon will start it up. Look at Markoon, 404, 100% kill participation. All of and the action has been bot lane. Yeah. And this like, is like how you shut down a smolder, right? This is how you can put him behind. I will say comp still only at 56 stacks on, on the center. Obviously, we'll scale up as he starts to go around. Hunter's doing the 104. Hunter's 104. He's also a little low. Yeah, neither it? of them are like as peak as you'd like them to be. Uh, but Comp now will just follow Markoon through the jungle, pick up as many of these Absolution Fragments as possible. Larson's going to get some damage on this mid lane tower as plates fall off in about 20 seconds. Rogue don't want to overinvest into this bot side. I think they did, yeah, they have spotted Yikes, so they know that this blue buff is relatively free. Actually, looks like Comp isn't going to stay around for the stacks. He decides, oh, perhaps I shall. No wave in the bot lane means no stacks for him to gain there. Gets one from. The blue buff gets a blue buff as well. Uh, nice little extra reward. Then we'll get one from the Scuttle Crab, then can path down towards bot. Just try and stack up as many of those Absolution Fragments as possible. Every 20 is the break mark. So, you know, 20, 40, 60. I went to maths as a child. Uh, and I thought you were starting a sign. 20, 40, 60, 60 80. <laughs> <laughs> According to all laws of thermodynamics, bees can fly. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a weird mood today, Medic. It's just because you're in love with League of Legends. Yeah. The feeling I'm getting. Oh. Yep. And the B movie. And the B movie. <laughs> Two of my great loves. Have you actually seen life. it? I've seen it really sped up on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you probably never. I've never Pick watched up, the actual comp. movie. Pick it up, comp. Good. Good man. Good you were quite stressed there. Right, look, the amount of times I've seen you were really just leave personal. It. Well, like, just take it, man. You're there. You're getting the absolution anyway. And then you started to walk away, and I was like, come on. Because Rogue are in a good position to win this game, right? Oh, yeah. They're, they're farming well. They're, they're heading gold. They're unlocking mid. They have two drakes. So for Comp not to pick up the Rift Hill <laughs> would have just been like, why? You know? Obviously, it's Rogue against oh, G2. Oh, oh, summer is hooked. Oh, and someone tried to TP away. He they did. tried to TP away. Just use your wings, man. That's what they're there for. <gasps> oh. <laughs> we need Kobe on the cast right now because that TP for sure sucks. Like, <laughs> oh, man. We need a pro view of that. What happened, Hans? What happened? Uh, I can tell you what happened. He hovered over the tower and then pressed his teleport key, Betty. I mean, <laughs> didn't go well for But him. did he misclick? Did he, did he try to flash? Like, I mean, you got to think it's a fat finger trying to hit that flash. I, I He's feel got like, it yes, on D, which saw, isn't ever. He, no, it's not. Okay, just to clarify, no, it's not. Uh, he tried to flash away. Agreed to disappear. And he must, <laughs> he must have hit TP. He must have. Yep, yep. And that is rather unfortunate for Hans. It really is. I will uh, bring attention to Com's build as well. He's gone Serpent Spang Rush on the center, Ooh. which often I would say isn't great, but it's an even and a Karma comp. you're playing against. Serpent Rail Spang. as well. Yep, doing more damage if the enemy has been recently shielded. So. Can I check? Yeah, have a look at it. Let me see if I can see how much shielding it actually removes. Shielding reduced zero okay, so far, so but he has will, just bought it. I will also say, quite possible the tooltip is bugged with spectator mode or something. Perhaps. Because I think he's had it for a while because he also has a zeal. Um, I can check. Oh, yeah, you go back and see how, how quickly he's bought it. We'll see if those tooltips do line up in spectator mode with what it actually is uh, overall. You're right. He maybe he just hasn't. Auto <laughs> he has auto attacked people recently, but maybe he hasn't auto attacked anyone that was shielded recently. Perhaps. We will see. I'll uh, keep track. For now, though, I like it as an item because it's good against shields, and there are a lot of shields on sure. G2. So often we see pros kind of fit into a cookie cutter build path on some of the champions here. Comp realizing the enemy composition has a lot of one type of utility, effective HP, and is trying to mitigate some of it at least. A 2,000 gold lead for Rogue, Drake up in a minute 20. They're trying to unleash, unlock this bot lane tower. Zoe and Markun stepping forward, and Caps, Mickey, and Yike have to give them a time of day. Have to respect it. Hans Summer still only at 133 stacks, while Comp is cresting over towards that 80 mark, currently sitting at 74. Rogue and Blade did win out top, uh, but it doesn't really oh. matter too much as another hook connects, and Caps is pulled back. The Death Charge knocks him up, and Comp and knocks him down. Like, pins in front of a bowling ball. Rogue I continues mean, to find these picks. So at least he's on fire today. Been connecting some incredible hooks. Broken Blade does cross map on the top side of the map. But uh, Rogue, man, 
They are really... I mean, G2 do have a bit of a reputation to losing to teams that they are definitely not supposed to lose against. Two months and eight days ago, Betty. Guess who they lost to? <laughs> NRG. No, two months. Uh, <laughs> what, is what is your perception of time, man? <laughs> You've been in Lost Ark for I've so long. I've stuck in that world for so close. long. I'm reminded no, they lost all the time. They lost oh, Rogue. true, they did lose to Rogue, yes. One of Rogue's few wins in, in winter. I mean, we look back at the combo. Hex Flash into Hook. And look at the way the ball placement is. Phenomenal. Great wombo combo. Caps legit did not get to move. And now the Dragon is up for grabs for Rogue. That's going to be their third on the docket. And a Hex Soul as well. A nice soul for them to have. I mean, Rogue is smurfing. They are completely stomping on G2. Came into this game thinking, oh, it's going to be a quick one. G2 going to look to lock in their first place. And uh, they got rogued, um, <laughs> which does seem to be a trend in the regular season. As we mentioned, even if they do win both their games, securing a spot in playoffs is not guaranteed yeah. because it's only going to put them at three, three wins. wins. Yeah. So uh, there's still a lot to be determined. If Rogue do end up losing this game, and Rogue time was a thing for a long while because they did often lose games from this sort of position, they will be knocked out at playoffs, though. I truly find that unrealistic. But you know, I've said this before, and I've now cast for many years, and I've seen unlikely things happen to a point at which it shouldn't really be considered unlikely anymore. And often involving G2. But usually on <laughs> the know, other, usually on the other enough, side. <laughs> <laughs> you the are thing quite is, right. No matter which way this game ends up now, it's one of those unlikely things. Either Rogue somehow beat the team again, at the top of the standings. Turns out that's or... not unlikely. Oh, true. Actually, <laughs> that's, the, that's the common thing now. This is the common thing. G2, <laughs> so G2 will have hyper-competitive games against the best teams in the world. The second they run into a team like this, <laughs> they crumble. Broken Blade goes in onto last, and Marcoon Comp and Zoelisa in the vicinity to follow up. Broken Blade, so many tunnels, he looks like a doomsday prepper. Just able to escape underground at any moment. This is food stores down there as well, some tinned food for any eventuality, but Comp and Rogue just pushing in this top lane. Already bot lane tier one gone, already mid lane one and two have fallen. And Rogue are doing it by the book. Take out those outer towers. There is a Baron up for them if they want it, but I really think their next objective is in three and a half minutes time, or their next neutral at least. Set up around that uh, Drake and look for the Hex Soul. Broken Blade is now healing a lot. Does it matter? It's a good question. It was uh, also uh, an observation. Uh, I mean, I agree, <laughs> but I'm just, I, 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 I was leading from your point. So this is what often in casting videos, yes. what, what happens is you'll yeah. say a point, and yes. I'll be like, oh, that develops a new point in my noggin. Right. And we'll go from there. And we'll expand. And we'll extrapolate some information. I've, okay. I've never done that before. Oh, wow, <laughs> thank you. That's very educational. I didn't want to tell you this on so, broadcast, Betty, <laughs> but I have some feedback if yeah. you're receptive to it right now. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yes, does it matter that Broken Blade heals a lot, right? Because if the wombo combo of Markoon, Larson, and Zoelis kill Hansama, or Caps, does it actually matter that Broken Blade survives through the fight? It's very unlikely that it will. Because he, like, he has some damage. Sure, Vexai's base numbers are okay. Like, pretty good. You can, you can do some damage in the fight, and you have Karma to back you up, but Comp is already itemized into dealing with the Karma, at least to some degree. You've got healing reduction on two of the five rogue members, with the Executioner's Calling and the uh, Morello Nomicon. If Han Summer dies, could be Kersons for G2 in this game. I mean, I think that all that needs to happen for Rogue is Han Summer dies. Okay. I really think that that is quite simply the win condition, because um, I think that he's the bulk of their damage. Mm -hmm. uh, I like Rogue's comp. I think inherently it is very simple. I love what they did in the early game. They played it very well. Nice G2, G2 is now looking for picks, doing what they can. They force the flash out from Finn, not the end of the world for him. Does unlock a potential Baron start. Maybe they can force the TP out from Broken Blade or Caps. A little this bit greedy from Finn in his positioning. They've been super proactive in this early game, and I really want to see Rogue continue that form. It's harder to be proactive in mid-game because it's not as easy to plan what position you're in. in see, this because build, this is definitely a situation where it is very clear right now that there are two people bot, mm -hmm. and I feel like that they should be forcing something on the top side. I agree. They should just be making their way into the enemy jungle, or they should be pushing top wave so they can threaten that top tower. But they need to be putting some type of pressure on G2 and not giving them this ability to, to just threaten this for free. And I think Rogue have said, OK, our next objective is the Drake. So we are going to let you put this pressure on because we want to reset 
We've invested our vision on the top side. We want to reset, get another slew of wards, and then push out through our bot side, gain vision control around the bot side. I agree with you. I think Rogue making a proactive call to say, we're going to do Baron, probably was the right call in that moment. But if you're Rogue, and you're one and six, and you're playing against the team at the top of the league, and you're winning, maybe you're saying, hey guys, let's just play what we've already planned. Let's not make a shotgun call and just go for something, because to a degree, you do lose a bit of that trust in perhaps some of those quicker calls. Now they're trying to set up towards the top side of the of the river. They haven't really pushed in towards the bottom side of Jisoo's jungle, which is what I would have liked to see them do as a unit to get that vision control, because with 20 seconds, they haven't actually denied G2 any of their vision on the, uh, on the superficial layer of this river. There's still a control ward. They still have awareness of where Rogue are moving. I think G2 actually just moved a control. I saw they did have a deep control ward in Rogue's half of the map, which has now disappeared. Regardless. Rogue's Zoe Elise. Zoe Elise stretch lines away. Bit of trading. Looking for that flank. But this is what you, you could have denied this. You could have had wards deeper into this jungle, meaning that G Mickey doesn't have these flank opportunities. I Rogue's mean, right now it is Rogue still first to the yeah. objective. It's uh, Broken Blade acting as the front line, given how tanky he is. Now they're trying to gate G2 from entering into this portion of the Here river. Broken Blade down to half. So at least with Ooh. a dash charge to knock up the shockwave. Perfection from Rogue, but they don't get the kill on Hunt Summer. He's still Ooh. full HP, and Rogue are hurting. Finn tries to get off the backline, but Hunt Summer has hit 225, and Rogue are hitting six feet under already comp and Finn have died. Zoe Lee's trying to escape, but there's no tower to save him. TP away from Larson, he'll survive this fight. But will his team's chances of playoffs do the same? G2 find three for naught and they'll turn their eyes towards the Dragon. So the question is, all this early game proactiveness and pressure, was it enough to truly shut down Han Summer? Level 14 Smolder, but it shouldn't be underestimated. Caps, we talked about how when you look at the whole comp, he has damage, but can he be a huge threat in the fights? I feel like he landed a massive Mantra Q onto the back line there. The initial engage from Rogue looked promising. Look at the shockwave that comes out from Larson. The ultimate from Comp as well onto the back line. Fantastic, but Hans Summer sidesteps it. Then Mom just rips them apart on the back. Look at that Mantra Q that connects as well. Between the two of them on the other side of the map, they just chunk four members of Rogue out, and it just leaves Finn isolated to deal with this G2 member, or the, this G2 team, I should say. Rogue, they couldn't actually win. They couldn't make their Wombo combo work. And now you come back and you kind of look at this composition from Rogue. It is about landing that Wombo combo. And the reality is from G2, this is a really difficult team to just kill in a single shot. And if you don't connect on the Hans, and as long as he's still alive, he will continue to dish out damage. You can see there, 4,000 damage from him, the same from Caps. Well, that's a huge shockwave in the fight, but they just didn't have the follow-up. Importantly, Han Summer wasn't caught in the shockwave, so still has his splash for any ensuing fights. Caps hasn't got his, nor has Yike. Comp and Zoelis have theirs. I underestimated the durability of this uh, G2 composition. Given the lead they had, I, I anticipated that Rogue could just keep forcing these fights, but I was not expecting G2 to just straight up tank that damage and then just win on the War of Attrition, which is ultimately what these fights now turn into. You would think that with a center on your side, you would be able to match that level of attrition, but the reality is that with the sheer amount of support and poke that this G2 composition has, it may be a lot harder than I initially anticipated. I mean, it's also positioning around the Drake, right? Like, G2 were able to just push up as a group and force a more orientated front-to-back fight, which Rogue do like, but they really want to poke away at Hans Summer at Caps before the fight begins. And that's where Senna does thrive. She has 100, 100 stacks now. She does have that extra range. Rapid Fire Cannon as well. Not the highest DPS build, Rapid Fire Cannon Serpent's Bang, but it d definitely works in the situation of this game. Zoe Elise, though, once again, caught out a little bit. Broken Blade tanking up the tower, but he's fine. Gets out, has the tunnel built up. Very suitable for Apexai, I guess, that item. Two items on Finn as well, though. The Baron's still available. A thousand gold between these two teams. Two and a half minutes on the next Drake. But again, it, like... The, Hans is level just, 15 right now. He's the same level as Larson and Caps. Yeah, and 293 stacks as well. He just got to that point. Rogue, maybe their patience, not a virtue in this game, but you talked about calling it for the Baron. I don't think Hans actually had 225 when that Baron would have been a possibility. You could have forced G2 to invest a few more resources. 
now it's G2's vision game as well. Look at, look at how few wards there are from Rogue out on the map. There's a couple of control wards from G2. There's a ward behind them on the Razorbeaks. Rogues, all of their vision is on their side of the map. They have one ward perhaps behind the Baron Pit, but they just don't have the opportunity to, to spot G2 as they make these rotations. And something that Rose Comp does really well as well is find those picks. You know, if you get a Shockwave, if you get Volley Bear jumping in, if you get Zoe Elise with a dredge line, that's how they got their lead. They were finding sure. picks on Han Samo on caps. But without vision, it's so much harder to do that. G2 feel like a very strong wall that Rogue will have to find a way to pierce through. Like Honeycomb, you know, just really hard to... <laughs> actually surprisingly brittle and weak, <laughs> Honeycomb. Not if you're a bee, buddy. <laughs> Not if you're a bee. <laughs> um, in any case, uh, Baron is up. G2 have set up very good control around that topside river. The Rek'Sai now ticking over to level 16. Pushed out bot wave. Two members of Rogue actually down there. Looks like Finn was just shadowing to cover a potential dive onto Larson. It's the threat of Caps being there again, right? Like, we already saw Finn have to burn his I mean, you say that, well, but he was just spotted away. top after he well, just pushed that wave out. Not the threat of Caps being there, but someone else could have been there. It's the threat of someone hovering. It's something like G2 have done since yesteryear, right? Where it was Perks and Wonder, it was Caps and Wonder. Just having that second man shadowing a wave in case someone oversteps, especially sure. when they have both these TPs. Cap's trying to tick over. There it is, level 16 now secured. The Volley Bear is now kind of at a point where it's really difficult to play the game. Uh, you're kind of just a single target CC bot trying to set up maybe a ball delivery system. Here we are, the fight over the mid wave. Dragon spawning 30 seconds. Come oh, man, you've got to use your wards. He's sitting on four right now. Rogue, they are setting up around the mid lane prior. They're going to get caught out as Zoe Elise is the first target. Death charge, shockwave once again. The dawning shadow. Mark who kills one. And some able to dash off to the back of the fight with another dredge on to the land on the broken blade. He's hopping at the void rush, but he'll get popped afterwards. Rogue find two. The wombo combo finds its mark. The dragon up in seven seconds time. But Han Summer still healthy. Still has the flash. 340 stacks. Will it be enough? Now that was a very nice wombo combo from Rogue. They're looking for another play. The release goes in, very tanky. Execution threshold starts to tick down on him. Han Summer blast cones in, looking for Markun who has no flash. Then he's the dragon. The back line. As you say, who have we got in terms of flashes? Larson Shockwave up in about five seconds time. Tom has a flash, though, at least only with a hex. And G2 will give up the Drake, secured the soul for Rogue. And a small breath of life in this game for them, as well as their playoff hopes hang in the balance. I mean, I have to give credit to Zoe Elise. He's had a great Nautilus game from start to finish. We're going to look back at this play. He's the one that gets engaged on the front line for Rogue. Tries to connect a hook, does initially connect it onto a minion. Look at all this damage he's made again. Then look at this ultimate into Shockwave, into Comp Ultimate. And then the Volley Bear ulti on top of that just melts through G2. They were too grouped up for the Wombo combo. And Rogue were finally able to break through this tank front line. They managed to catch Caps, which was crucial. And then Han Sama was forced to play on the back line. You can see how close these fights can really be because it ultimately comes down to, will G2 survive that initial burst? If they can, then they can turn the fight around. If they can't, then Rogue can run over the fight. You know what helps with that? They seek his arm guard for Han Sama. Hasn't really been touched in the last couple of fights, but will keep him a little bit safer in what could be the next one. Could be the final one as well. Oh, basically even a 2,000 gold lead for Rogue at this point doesn't really matter much. Three and a half items for Hans Summit, two and a half for Comp, 123 stacks though. It's basically another full item for him. Caps sitting at three as well with the Rise and Focus. I think it's going to be a Rabadon's next. Larson has that Crypt Bloom. Rabadon's next for him as well, very likely. Star for Flowing Water completed for Yike though can be very powerful in these fights. The extra movement speed you can give to your AD carry and just give them that bit of extra protection or to, you know, whoever's on the front line, just that little bit more shielding. Everything being funneled into Hans now. They want to get him as strong as possible, as quickly as possible. Looks like death caps are being worked on for both mid laners. 17 for Larson. Barrett in the eyes of G2. Gonna spot out that ward and here we go. They started off. They want to get that fight going. Markoon stepping in. Knows the split is possibly coming to an end if they lose this fight. So Elise looks for the dredge line. Mom is called. The Baron down to 5,000. Finn TP'd up to the top lane looking for that flank. Pops the world ender, but he's rooted. G2 disengage. They get the TP though, which is ultimately what they wanted from Finn. Now it becomes a lot easier for Broken Blades to put pressure on a side lane. 
This is what we talk about when we say the Baron Force, right? It's not always just about forcing the fight, it's about putting pressure on your opponent. And that's exactly what G2 can do because of the amount of shielding that they have to tank the Baron damage. They get Rogue to walk in. Did they get any ultimates burnt? It doesn't look like it. Oh, they may have got the World Ender. Yeah. But now they can move back towards the Baron. But I think that what they ideally want to do is start putting pressure back towards the bot side of the map. Because what you can do is you can drag someone from Rogues to go and answer, and then you have the TP advantage to then create a numbers advantage over towards the Baron. Yeah, both the side lanes basically neutral right now. Marku unable to get away from the inner flame. He being rooted up there. Could have been his death knell. I have to remember, G2 basically have a sixth man in this game as well, with Shivana, Smolder's mom being called into every couple of fights. But for Rogue, every fight could be not their last of the split, because they do play tomorrow, but the last of their hopes for playoffs. Comp still stacking 130 on him now. Eldo in two and a half minutes, Baron begun. Game. Wait, look at the look at Finn. He is nowhere near the fight right now. And they have started off this Baron, not the fastest in the world. He'll but... be there quickly enough, I think. It's down to 11,000. Caps looking for their flank. Markoon locked up. Stormbringer away. Dawning Shadow down by Comp. Mickey. CC for the moment. There's Mom. Ring, ring. The dinner bell for G2. Broken by though. So just tanking everything up here. Another route going down as Finn tries to keep Caps away from the fight. Mickey down to half HP. And Rogue. They have the vision once again, but don't get much more out of it. They have forced G2, at least Mickey, to reset, and they'll reset themselves as well. Ultimately, only a flash burn from Mickey there. Ignite was also used. Everything still up for Rogue outside of the TP. Elder spawns in two minutes. Getting closer and closer to being an important point. Was not expecting this game to come down to this. With the lead that Rogue had, it felt like that this was their game to lose. G2 found a single great fight around the bot side river, around that fourth dragon spawn, where they turned it around, and then it felt like it was G2's game, and then Rogue finds the wombo combo that they needed, and now we're in a bit of a stalemate. This game could very easily swing either way. The Smolder continues to scale up. Death Cap finished now for Larson. Cap's still a bit off, working towards the next major completion for himself. Comp getting the Lord Doms as well before this next fight. Very powerful. Anathemas for Marcoon. Alongside that Kenny Brucon and the Sundered Sky. Rogue try to set up vision up towards this top side. Have a control ward in the pit. Yike. Places a bush, puts a ward in it. Rogue will have to wait for that bush to time out or walk in there, but you don't really want to when G2 could be collapsing. Feromancy down there by Mickey. Not going to connect on anyone. That ward in the back of the pit, though, for G2 makes them sure the Rogue have not started up the Baron. Hound Summer still stacking up. 428 now, ready. Execution threshold goes higher and higher. The more of those stacks you get increases by 1% for every 40 stacks you have. It's going to be the Baron Force. It looks like it's it. It's going to be it. There's the control ward the in the back of the pit. Mark Finn, gets it. Finn looking for that flank. I think he's, they have no idea. This could be a, an incredible flank. Then just has to time it right. The Baron is very low. Mickey going in. There's Daisy to join the party. Broken Blade rooted up with the last embrace. Finn shows. Caps sees him. World Ender in. Marcoon flashes forward. There's the shockwave as well as they kill off Yike. Caps chased up towards the top side as Mickey dives onto the back line. The Caps is down. And Rogue have found it. The fight they wanted. This whole split. They found it. Finally, they keep their life alive in playoffs. They shut G2 out of the fight. And they look towards the mid lane. Can they end? Another incredible team fight from Rogue. This time. Oh, Broken Blade's going to catch the he's wave. Gonna he's going to try and interrupt. He's going to delay this as much as he can. But they still have minions available to them. The TP catch from Larson. He's going to force him back. Going to have to tunnel away to safety. Rogue have the Nexus in their eyes. Another incredible fight. Rogue, it looks like they have done it. They have taken down G2 for the second time this year. And what a time to do it. Backs against the wall. The count at nine. They still have to get through G2. Broken Blade goes in with the Void Rush. Like here to help out with the damage sources are not available for G2. Rogue will keep themselves alive in the playoff race with a decisive win versus G2. Impressive stuff. Rogue, only a single fight they really lost around that bot Drake. I was concerned at that point that Han Sama would really unleash, but we saw as the game went on, it became really difficult for Han Sama to, to deal that damage. And when you get funneled into that Baron specifically, it's just easy pickings for Larson and 
to Elise to set up that one more combo. And, and in my opinion, huge credit to Elise. He was so impactful yeah. with his Nautilus in this game. Impressive stuff, Rogue. While their chances are slim, they are still fighting for a spot in the spring playoffs. Still fighting for a spot in top eight. If you vote for one of them, your key player of the game at LEC on X as well. Finn Larson or Comp are your options. All of them playing very well as Rogue manage to pick up that win. Finn, <laughs> a sigh of relief perhaps for him as he walks back onto the stage. Getting ready for an interview in just a moment. We'll be back with that interview right after this. Hello. Hello. A bit of help with styling since I'm new here, and I was wondering if I could show you a couple of outfits. Yeah, sure. Amazing, thank you so much. I'll be right back. I'm a Poro snack. Get it? I don't know, man. <laughs> Woo! Mm, no, not really. I don't know, Law. It's hopeless. No, it's gonna be fine. Here, let's have a break. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Back to the drawing board then, I guess.
four-man stack. Depth charge onto Mickey. TP behind as Rexai is looking to join this fight, but already oh. Mickey oh. and Hansama are deleted. It would have just been like, why? You know? Obviously, it's rogue against G2 oh. as Hansama is hooked. Oh. Hansama tried to TP away. He tried to TP away. Just use your wings, man. That's what they're there for. Give me Bobby. Yeah, I got him. I almost got a farm. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Nice, nice, nice. We're starting, we're starting. Look down, look down, look down, look down. Mid wave, guys, mid wave, mid wave, mid wave, mid wave. Hello everyone and welcome back to the LEC. I'm Ginny joined with Finn on the stage. I mean, you can see him right now. You look so happy, so animated after that win. Talk us through it. Yeah, I mean, I think after yesterday, we kind of realized it's do or die. And yesterday, I think it was very intense game against Giant X. We missed a lot of our timers to get control of the game. So today we just came in with a mindset that, okay, we just got to take the fight to them. We give them a smolder because it's like a weak early game champion, even though it might be OP. I feel like if you give G2 a weak early game, that's like your best bet of winning. So that was kind of our plan. And they took the smolder and we executed very well around bot lane. I think my bot side did a really good job and we snowballed properly for once. Yeah, you did. Congratulations. I mean, that's why you're standing here, right? I mean, the win against G2, you're talking about giving them a weaker early game. You're talking about missing your timings when it comes to GX. Was that the biggest focus for this game particularly? Uh, I mean, I think it's just about getting over the nerves. That's just like, okay, someone just had to start a fight. Whether like, whatever happens, just doesn't have to be perfect. Just get a fight going and, and try to make Use of your champions, click your buttons and, and use your tools that you have. This uh, draft we drafted for us now had a lot more tools than yesterday, so uh, I think Solis and Mark did a really good job communicating around uh, when we want to fight. Coming as well uh, from the perspective of drafts and from the perspective of prepping for games, what is tomorrow looking like particularly? Because well, you still have one more game. I'm tomorrow I'm not playing, but... Uh... Oh, Monday. <laughs> Whoops! I was like, wait, you're not playing tomorrow? Uh, you're no. leaking something? No. no, Monday. Monday. Yeah. Monday. Um... Sorry, that was cheeky. Uh, okay, so I Monday you, okay. we play against SK, and I think that's a good bet for us. Like, we just have to play, like, aggressive and, and, and valiant and, and proactively, like we did today. Maybe give us some tools and draft to do that, and maybe no more tanks for me, maybe more Aatrox was the way. Yeah, maybe. I mean, looking as well at the spring in general from the side of Rogue, what has it been like from your perspective, joining the team, playing with Markoon again, being more on that side of the competition rather than with us on the talent side? So I think when you join a struggling team, you come in with a lot of optimism, you come in with a lot of hope, and then you think you're like the magical fix. But a lot of the time, that is not really how reality shapes up to be. So I think what I did when I came in, I just tried to figure out what can I do to make the life of my teammates easier in game, whether like that is to get some more cohesion or whether that is to just like give them more tools and drafts or anything I could do to help them play their best, I think was my goal coming into the team. And I think I didn't maybe do that well enough because we're not doing that good right now. But hopefully that's eventually that's where we will get. And eventually we will actually become a cohesive unit. Because right now our main issue is that a lot of the times we're not really on the same page of how we want to enter objectives or like how we want to play the mid wave or stuff like this that ha comes with time. And we're a bit behind on this. So we have to catch up. Yeah, well, you have uh, one more day. Not tomorrow, though. Monday. I remembered it this time around. Thank you so much for the interview. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're going to be heading over to our casters to cover the final game of today. Kaming Kor up against Heretics. Thank you very much, Jenny. We are here for the final game of today. Great to hear as well from Finn. Looking dapper as always. Um, yeah. yeah, we're here for the final game. I'm all it, all that's in my head is buzzing. I'm gonna be honest. It's just all those bees. that have just joined. Bees us. all the way down. Uh, Medic's point about bees is irrelevant. Yeah, what you really need is. to know is that Carmine Corp uh, would love to win this game. If they lose, uh, there are only 25% of scenarios that guarantee them at least a tiebreaker. Yeah. So it's not great. It's um, they will be going up against Heretics, who find themselves at 5-2 and two right now. Mm -hmm. Heretics have their eyes on top two. They want to fight for the top spots. Yesterday, they had an impressive performance mm -hmm. against MDK. And I like the synergy. Yankos on fire right now. Bo versus Yankos is for sure going to be an exciting one. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the big thing for Carmen Core is those 25% of scenarios, they have to win on Monday. Right? There, there's no scenarios in which they can lose both their remaining games and make it into play. Correct. So they would have to beat BDS, who did look very shaky today with some of those bot lane dives. Uh, around them, teams like Rogue play up against SK, so that's kind of a, a battle to see who gets 
a possible playoff spot between Monday is going to be tense. Yeah. So we're giving going you a camping. day to take a breather. It's intense. Uh, <laughs> you never stop, do you? Nope. <laughs> Nor do the Carmen Core fans. They are in loud voice here supporting their team. Uh, who did lose out to a Vitality yesterday. Heretics looking fine at the moment. I think the most improved team from the start of spring to the end of spring. Oh, yeah, I was not expecting that, to be honest, with the roster moves they made. was uh, I was definitely one of the critics, skeptics. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't confident that these changes would, would make that much of a difference, but they really are. And I'll tell you one thing. If this doesn't raise Trimby stocks, oh, I don't yeah. know what will. Mm -hmm. Like, whenever that man joins a team, they just start doing better. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, Trimby clearly has a positive impact on every single team that he is a part of. It's very clear that he is a big communicator, but also he seems to have a very deep champion pool. Um, you might uh, wonder why we're waiting to get on into the game. League officials have reported a peripheral issue on stage. Um, it looks like a keyboard is getting swapped out, so obviously we'll Get, get onto the game as soon as we can. It's just, that's so funny in my head because a lot of people use wireless keyboards. Mm -hmm. And so I just had this image of them just taking a keyboard out and then just putting the next one down. <laughs> and just being like, done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just press the keys, they work. Yeah. Nice, sweet, let's go. <laughs> you can see Bo just uh. getting everything into position and getting ready for it. And uh, you, you do mention Trimby. I think he has obviously played very well. And obviously his communication with Jankos seems to be a, a driving force behind this team. But I do want to give credit to Jankos and Wonder as well. Jankos having an incredible split right now. Uh, his Lee looked really good. He's looked really good. Like, the Vi, the Sejuani, you know. Here's what I will say, mm -hmm. OK? Because there are some revisionists that I am seeing. His winter wasn't good. No. <laughs> he had a couple of that's, good games. That's not to say that that was necessarily his fault. But Heretics was not good in winter. Yeah. Um, and so that's why they made drastic changes. And now I fully agree that Jankos is playing incredibly well. I think that um, uh, it's definitely a conversation between him and Razork right now for best jungler in the league, um, given how they are both so important to the success of their mm -hmm. team. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing him play today. I'm excited to see what he can do. Obviously, he is feeling extremely confident right now, and he definitely should be going up against KC. Heretics are definitely the favorites. And for KC, they would like to not be bottom of the standings. Uh, Rogue finishing, well, sorry, getting a win today means that Carmine Corp are at risk of going 10th place again, Medic. Yeah. Because if they lose this game and tomorrow's game, and then Rogue do win another game. Yeah, Rogue play up against SK tomorrow as well, so not as hard an opposition as They could as knock Carmine into 10th. Yes. Which I will would say, be devastating. It would be devastating. Them. I don't really care if you're ninth or tenth. Both of you That's are immediately true. discarded from my brain. That's a fair point. Uh, and we get back to you in like four months time. It will be four months. Yeah, Summer split a month after and then MSI. Three week break and MSI ish, and then MSI is a month, and then come back after that, right? So it's a while before we'll see the two bottom place teams of Spring back on our stages. Draven, a volley bear, and Varus banned away by Carmen Court. Vi and Smolder removed by Heretics. Okay, so what is the final bang going to be? Callista. Okay, nothing too surprising. The priority. Let's see what KC have got cooked up for us. Is it jungle? Is it AD carry? I will Will it perhaps be the Orianna yes. that's currently left open? Orianna would make a lot of sense. Uh, very strong. Just great mid laner at the moment. Gives you great team fight pressure. Can hold her own in most lanes. So I, I wouldn't mind seeing an Orianna from Saken here. Has looked towards the Huey and the Army a little bit more in terms of priority. But Zeri also very powerful at the moment with uh, Varus oh. taken away, Callista taken away. Zeri is kind of the next AD carry up uh, and Smolder as well, obviously. I mean, it, between these two AD carries, makes sense as a contested pick. Three games for upset, three games for Flackered. So far, this split. So they're trying to take some of the strength away from that AD carry. Draven, Varus, Callista, Smolder, Zeri. You're definitely putting Flackett deep down into his champion pool. I think Senna is kind of next on my it list. Definitely right? can like, be. Flackett uh, played a mean Senna when he was on G2. Didn't obviously have the I mean, best time. Flaghead is a very versatile player yeah. in terms of his pool. Zvira was on the desk yesterday talking about how OP he thinks Oriana is. It's because she is. <laughs> I think we all agree with him. So it, it does not surprise me that they're going to lock that one in very early. Um, yeah, the point I was going to say, Flaghead used to play Seraphine, well, yeah, I remember true. as well. So not that I expect a Seraphine here, but he obviously has a very deep pool, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him leverage that. So Senna is going to be the lock in for Heretics. Now, Carmine. How much do they value the Nautilus? Do they perhaps want the Rakan 
to pair up with the Zeri, which they'll likely save for a later pick. Karma is a champion we've seen as an answer into Orianna. Not something we've seen from Seek in this split, but it does, you know, we saw how much damage it can do with our caps in the last game. I think Karma plus Jungle here makes sense. You could also pick the support if you want to just leave Junglers for second rotation. Um, Zeri Rakan, as you say, Zeri Nautilus also works pretty well. You could even look for something like Zeri Braum if you just want a little bit of protection. So with that final lock into the first phase will be for Carmine Court. Are they interested in making sure they get themselves a strong jungler for both? Or instead, do they want it? Because like Zin, I think, could work well here with mm -hmm. Karma. And what are your options? Right, you've got Zin, Lee, Viego. You kind of want someone with damage as well, because Karma, it does give a bit of damage, but you want a bit of uh, extra damage. Jarvan has more not utility. What I was expecting. Yeah. But into low mobility carries, it's great. Mm -hmm. Things like Orianna Senna don't have that inherent mobility. Once yep. the flash is gone, naturally, uh, Jarvan looks good. But mid-jungle? Yeah. Very weak. But bot lane has been the focus for all of our games today. Buddy. So maybe you just gank bot on repeat here. Could uh, very well be. Heretics, I imagine that they want to lock in the Nautilus here to just guarantee themselves a strong bot side. But yeah. they might defer to Tom Kench to provide yeah, that additional bit of security when playing Ace. Ooh, what? okay. <laughs> Yasuo? Yeah. Is it some... So um, Flackard loves Yasuo. He loves true. Yasuo. That's and you true. can play Fasting Senna. Like, we, I mean, everyone plays Fasting Senna. I mean, they could also put it top. I mean, let's one, not forget, these Yasuo. are former G2 players. What? Yeah, I'm just going to look up when the last time they played Yasuo. Yankos is Yasuo, right? I don't think it's Yankos. I'll, I'll, I'll give you Wonder, possibly. I will not give you Yankos. He has never in his competitive history played Yasuo. Doesn't mean he does. I mean, yes, I will agree with you. I, <laughs> Betty, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, okay. pretty 99% sure. Renekton ban definitely indicating a Yasuo shot, top. It's not uh, gonna be Yasuo top. Okay. It's Yasuo center bot lane. Okay. If Wonder plays it now, you're never gonna let me hear the end. Who of knows? This. Who knows? You know, I'm just throwing possibilities out. That's just my job. You know, I can't see into the future. Or can I? Yeah. <laughs> Nostrovedius <laughs> going out No, I actually have no idea. Um, uh, <laughs> Ral going to be taken away. Obviously, the big strength of Ral is the flexibility. You pair that up with an, an Oriana Yasuo. Looks like a very lethal champion. Good ban from Carmine Court. Um, I think like when you, when you look at this draft, you're also thinking like, oh yeah, Jarvan would look great here as well. Yeah. Maybe they're thinking about a volley bear. Yankos' volley yesterday was fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps Carmine looked to remove that next as a potential just dive option, a ball delivery system. Yeah. I think something to get the shockwave in there to set up the Yasuo makes the most sense. It's risky, it's tempting at times when you see a composition like this to think, how many knockups can we get for the Yasuo, you know? But you only really need one. You only really need one on the priority Sunday. targets for him. So to they're just trying to the mitigate old. some of Cabo's safe blind top laners. Yeah. Maybe he's looking at the Scion. Could also, I mean, Nar's always a risky blind, especially when there's a Yasuo on the other side. And Kappa has blinded Urgot in this sort of position before as well, but I think that really invites a Malphite from Wonder in the top lane. Uh, I think it was Finn that did it against him last time, and Malphite with a Yasuo just so powerful. There's the Gragas taken away from Wonder, so Heretics likely go ah. jungle here. What are we thinking? Lee Sin, still a possibility. So this next pick will indicate a lot about what Heretics plan is. Like, Volley Bear is my expectation. Yeah, I like Volley. I like Lee, Credit. I like Nocturne. Just a quick fun fact, Yankos has played a different champion every game this split. Yes. Seven champions across seven games. This will be his eighth game. Will he repeat? No, yes, said he Yeah. He's going to go for a repeat. Couldn't keep the streak going. Bit of a shame, but that's fine. I think Sejuani Yasuo as a top jungle combo. Really strong duo. That is because of the melee, but the it's Yasuo AD, man. Also a great ball delivery system. Also Sejuani, nice little knock up. It, like, if they pick the Yasuo top from here, it's because there's something that comes out from Carmine Core where they're like, Yasuo is perfection in this matchup. Maybe. I think they picked it with the intention of it going to flat it. So anyway. That Rakan we talked about earlier, often saved later into the draft to see more of what the opposition is bringing out. Very common pairing up with Zeri as well, because Zeri can be so safe in isolation that you can then send the Rakan off to Rome in the mid game. And there's so much backline threat with the Jarvan and the Rakan just jumping in there. Great Olaf duo. also backline Ooh. threat. Now I that don't... is really saying, go on, bring your Yasuo top lane, I dare you. I don't think they're going to do that anymore. Oh no, really? You think the Yasuo might be going into the AD carry position, Betty? No, we'll find out. It's true. Oh no. Oh, it's not Cap. I mean, we. He's Wonder. True. It's like it's going to be, be an R. R. Yeah. But I would have loved a Vayne. Oh. Knockups? No. Still knockups. All right, now. 
punches into the wall. Okay. So I wouldn't say that Carmine Corp have a wombo combo. They do have very good scaling. Uh, I love the fact that Karma can assist both Zeri and Olaf in terms of this composition. I think what's great about what Carmine have is they have a lot of dive onto low mobility carries. Things like Senna, not really Yasuo, but Orianna, when these champions don't have their flashes, they're very susceptible to this dive. Um, the Asso, though, is going to be super interesting to watch. Windwall can be great as an answer into Karma because you can mitigate a lot of her potential poke. Depending on how Flackett plays it, he's got a lot of setup with things like the Orianna, the Sejuani, huge potential wombo combos on the side of Heretics with things like the Nar ultimate as well. Pretty good scaling on a side lane, but this Olaf, I think, is just a really good answer to match some of this side lane threat that Yasuo was hoping to provide later on into the game. Really interesting compositions. Very excited to see how things play out. We're jumping into our final game of the day. It's week three of Spring Split here. Carmine Gore is fighting for a chance at playoffs. A win here would be so valuable for them. And while they would not be out of playoff contention if they lose this game, it would definitely make their journey that much harder. 25% of scenarios left for them. Upset getting a ward in the bush down here. Carmine Core are going to take the long way round to avoid vision, then they'll path up through that tri bush. Flackhead waiting here. Obviously has that flash, running exhaust as well. Lethal tempo on the Yasuo. Should be able to just walk out of this one as the Damasian standard goes down. And uh, Carmen Core will just start to retreat Togmas. Lightly just to get a ward over towards this blue buff, make sure they have any vision on Iankos as he goes through his path. No deep ward yet placed by Heretics. I wondered if Wonder would step in there and get one on the blue, but they have one on the red, so they kind of know where Bo is. Now, my suspicion would be that Casey should have push in the bot lane 2v2, right? But into Rakan, Rakan doesn't actually offer a huge amount in other levels, yeah. so when you're playing into Yasuo Senna, I'm curious if you think that it might I, shift. I actually way. think it, the. The Heretics bot lane might be able to get the push. You've got Piercing Dark, you've got Yasuo as well, who can just walk up to the lane and use that wind ball that you talked about and use his shield that regenerates Sonic through the fight. E. Sometimes Yasuo yeah, starts E. I, I, I think you get the push if you're Heretics. It Sonic depends how aggressively Targumus and Upset can play, because Targumus can sack health for the wave, but obviously also depends on who gets there first. Uh, very easy to win the push in the bot lane if you are there. Uh, before your opponent. So we'll, we'll have a look down there as the lane does materialize. Yeah, it materialize. does look like that they are getting the, the early push. Yeah. So I, th I think just Senna has the range. Yasuo also has pseudo range with his Q, right? True. So it, it's, it's hard also for just, Zeri to answer. It's Rakan just can't do much. Yeah. Like, you, know, you can walk up and Q right. them and then like <laughs> flip, flip, flip your feathers yeah. at them yeah. a little bit, but it doesn't really do too much. Yeah, it's so. often usually when it comes to priority in the bot lane, uh, it's usually determined more so by the support than yeah. it is necessarily the AD carry. There are exceptions to that, obviously, but uh, but I also want to talk very briefly about the top lane. Um, Obviously, everyone associates Adam with Olaf, but Cabochard is like the old school Olaf yeah. player. He used to play it back in uh, the good old days, is guess what I would call it. <laughs> I remember when he was originally on Vitality back in 2016 top lane. Uh, I remember he used to play a decent amount of Olaf back then. I think he played it even earlier, but truth be told, I, my memory of Cabo back then is very limited. He played in 2015 EU LCS Spring Promotions. There you go. Gambit versus Mouse Sports. Yeah, I thought he qualified to the LEC in uh, 2016. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he went into the. He played one game in the ULCS Spring 2016. And then uh, I think he just got subbed off a roster or something. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah. When it came back in summer. So, for the moment, he's getting the push in the top lane, kind of to be expected with the undertow. You can just use that through the wave and you can chunk out Wonder. Meanwhile, Trimby and Flackett are pushing in this a bot lane. So just <laughs> trying to catch the minions as they crash. He's done a good job of farming yeah, He's so done far. a very good job of farming. Right? That, that's one of the, the strengths of the Zoe. It's not actually too it's much Bo. threat on you as Bo. Looks towards the top lane. Wonder jumps away. Ooh. Bo flashes, but he misses the knock-up. Bo's going to take an extra tower shot, and Cabo still gets the kill. Nicely done. Very nicely done. Yeah, the flash doesn't quite go the way that Bo wants it, but it doesn't matter. Cabo gets the kill. And it's a wave lost as well. Casey off to a good start with first blood. Good pressure being put down by Cabo. Level 4 trying to be reached by Wonder. He must have been a single creep off. He was very, very close indeed. But uh, they make it work. Very nice dive from Casey. Wonder TP's back up to the top lane there. Cabochard running the ghost in the TP. So as the wave pushes into him, doesn't have to burn that summoner. Jankos was looking anything down towards his bottom side. Targumus lands the knockup, but Flackhead's looking for that steel tempest. Puts the wind ball down and it's the power of Yasuo. Has that lethal tempo propped up as well. Argumus battle dancing back, but was interrupted and then has to use the second proc of it. I mean, this is the frustrating thing with uh, Yasuo's. They, they can just keep hitting you. 
the, the Q auto reset is just so annoying to deal with. And a nice little knock up there from Flackett, expecting Targamus to actually dash to the to his ally, yeah. and he interrupts it on the way, but fortunately for Targamus, he has the second one, so he ends up getting away to safety. It's a little bit like Bard Q in that respect. Like, one of the reasons that Bard can be nice into a Khan is you just chuck the Q at the AD carry, and it's like, okay, you're going to dash to him, or you're just going to take more auto attacks? Because those are your two options in this case. Uh, so Flackett, I think a good knock up there, does chunk out Targamus. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Zyru on the receiving end of a push from Saken, but on is even pretty much there. In the bot lane, though, a lead for Heretics. About, you know, 200 gold in AD carry and support. Overall, though, very even start to the game with a small advantage of Casey on the top side of the map. Love that we see this proactiveness from Bo. Unsurprisingly, Yankos just prioritizing farm for now, getting what vision he can to help his team out. Bo can EQ across this wall, dodge the vision. This way Wonder has no wards. flash. They have information on where Yankos is. He's going to get here too late, though. I mean, Wonder is starting to get away from this. Kabashard's still on the chase. Yankos going to join the fray. Double bounce from Wonder, but he's killed by the Dragon's Rage there. Good kill from Bo as the chase continues. Yankos has no flash, and the collapse from Carmine Core is enough. Trimby tries to help out his jungler, but even with the heal. The boar is skewered by Carmine Core. Really nice pathing there from Bo. He's able to navigate through the vision. Wonder goes for a trade against Cabo. He's trying to push this wave underneath the tower. And then Bo just runs towards him. They see that Sejuani is on their way. But uh, notice as well, the mid wave was sacked and Saken immediately moves up to, into the river to help his team, guaranteeing a numbers advantage. First, Yankos is forced to flash away from his mid laner. Trimby tries his best to help, but it's not enough and KC secure themselves two kills. Now Cabo is getting unleashed 2-0-1 so far in the early game. The coach remains composed for now. We've seen KC get early leads before. The question is, can they convert it into a victory? Good start though, with a 1K goal lead. Yeah, three kills to nil, two grubs to nil, and a strong position. I'm seeing a lot of this take two grubs and then back away from uh, teams at the moment. It means the enemy team can't get the mites, can't get a five stack even if they did the remaining four, so you just stop them having that little bit of extra push pressure. Also helps with dives, actually. You might spawn and can tank a couple of tower shots for you. That means that you can dive even when you don't have a wave there to help out. Yankos spotted again, clears out, well, uses the oracles to spot that ward. Zvairo has started, Zvairo, sorry, has started the Drake. And uh, Heretics with their push in the bot lane should be able to take this. So it will be grubs for a Drake trade eventually between the two teams. Kind of what we often see in terms of neutral objectives. Overall, a relatively slow early game. KC leveraging their strong top side. Not typically used as an answer to Olaf because you can kind of chip away at him at range. The thing you have to do as Olaf is just commit to all inning. Yeah. And uh, Bo just did a really good job in this early game of playing around Cabo to enable him to do just that. Which is why he currently sits at nearly a 1,000 gold lead, 900 for now. They're getting into a great spot. While well, the top side's going well, bot side of the map going very nicely for Heretics as well. This Yasuo is only going to continue to scale. Obviously, the advantage of having Yasuo in many AD carry matchups is that you can farm relatively safety. The disadvantage is that you're not going to have this ranged yeah. carry threat, which is largely coming from Zvyro, but you need to find those committal, those hardens. You have to give him access into mm -hmm. the fight. Um, to really get things going. Now, of course, there is Senna, who's going to be still building those items on the sideline, but uh, committing to the full support role is going to delay those stacks a little bit yeah. and also uh, those items. It's really dependent on how well Trimby can farm his Absolution Fragments, right? Absolution stacks. He's at 37 already, following the jungle around, just leaving Yasuo in that bot lane matchup 1v1, which Yasuo will, will navigate very handily. Upset here could look for the Lightning Crash, but. Sides against him. This is the Ultra Shock laser, so it doesn't get the slow. Jimby was working his way down towards the bottom side as well. He's going to continue to get stacks from the jungle hit. But, uh, this is what you see great centers do, is just really min-max how many stacks you're getting. Sometimes you do have to come cover your lane. You can see Trimby coming down here now. The wave is pushing in towards Flackett and Trimby, so maybe they can maintain a freeze here for a little bit, which would give Trimby, Trimby more stacks. But with Targamus coming across, Flackett maybe just called for a little bit of help as Cabochard proxying this wave. Well, at least keeping Wonder away from his own tower. Cannon lost. Yeah. The minus, minus ones one. are going to be spammed in chat. No wonder has been on the receiving end of this throughout his entire career, though, like Very so often true. left on the weak side by his team. You can see Upset and Targum is just trying to get back to this wave. It is now pushing towards them, so they can just wait for that to crash towards their tower and catch it as it comes in. 
Doing a really good job in this 2v2. Credit to them. The center just offering that range and poke to make it hard for them to really answer. 44 stacks now for Trimby. Slowly but surely working his way up. Yeah, I'll say 44 at nine minutes is a, a good enough chunk for now. Obviously, I think the, the big portion where you're looking for it is how you develop from 10 to 20. Like if you can get to 80 stacks by 17, 18 minutes, you're actually in a really strong position. And we have seen Trimby utilizing his jungle well to just, oh, Yankos' is jungle technically, but it's kind of Trimby's, you know. All those souls there to be harvested by the center. Yankos, we haven't really found him make a successful gank yet. He did try to go top to cover for Wonder. Obviously, it ended up not going quite the way that he wanted. But he's in a pretty good spot right now. Knight's about already completed. You've talked many times about the advantages of this item in pro play specifically. The fact that you can constantly shift it onto different allies depending on the circumstances. 60 second cooldown just means if you're only ganking once a minute, just switch it onto someone when you go into the lane. Yankos yet to put it on anyone. It's also just a nice spike, right? Mm -hmm. Nice, relatively cheap. You can grab that pretty early on. Finds himself with a small gold deficit for now, but on this tank Sejuani, that's not too big of a deal. Malignant's finished for the Karma. It's a pretty big deal for Saken. Sets him up nicely as we get closer to the next Dragon spawn. The good news for Heretics is given that they've already secured the first one, they're probably not too concerned about having to fight for this next one. We think about scaling, and I think that both teams have, like, scaling options. Ultimately, it comes down to how the fight plays. Mm -hmm. And what I like a lot about Casey is what we talked about in the draft is the amount of backline threat they have. How do you stop this Olaf just running your Orianna down, yeah. you know? And then the Rakan, he has very easy access because Jarvan EQ into ult, right? There's just a lot of threats onto the backline that provide a lot of space for upset to play. Mm -hmm. And then also, he's just not the singular damage threat. Saken has a decent amount of poke, but also Cabo Shard, yeah. as long as he's got someone with him, he can be a huge asset on the front line, especially if that Karma is actually playing for him. Mm -hmm. it goes back to the old Jugger Olafs that we've seen in the past, where we saw yeah, Jungle Olaf well, since we saw that, yeah. and then Lulu support, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes they even used to be Lulu mid. Do you remember yep. that? Um, One of the most satisfying bits of farming I've ever seen was a triple stack wave under a tower, and a Lulu just glitter lanced them all, and you <laughs> saw the gold. <laughs> but we hopefully never want to see that again, yeah, because true. Lulu mid was not a fun time, medic. <laughs> <laughs> Just get her out of support. That's all I really care about. Uh, uh, interesting decision making from Carmine Court. They see their bot lane getting pushed in, so they actually took another round of grubs. Uh, they took the, the third one of the setup, so they, we're going to have grubs spawn again in two seconds. I wonder if Carmine Court, if they don't see anything really proactive that they can do on the bottom side, maybe just give up this Drake, except that you're losing two dragons because you can't find the engage. Your bot lane's constantly getting pushed in, and just go for three, you know, six grubs. Does give you a bit more threat on towers as the game goes the on. Thing is, this Malignant's Karma, you feel really strong at this point, but you look at your AD carry items and you're like, we don't feel strong at all. Yeah. Um, when it's Jarvan versus Sejuani, I mean, Sundered Sky is a really nice item to have. So, okay, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of aligned with Casey. I think yeah. you should feel strong enough to fight. You bring your Olaf down. He has the TP. You can see him sitting in base right now, waiting for the signal. Wonders build up Megan up. He has the TP as well. Only has that control ward down towards the bottom side. Two TP, two, though. So I was going to join in. There's the charm. Quickness on the back line. Root, though, onto Rakan. As Hagamus has to get away. Flacket locked up in the Cataclysm, but he finds the last breath. Wonder gets a stun onto the wall. As up says locked up, but already two kills. Over to Carmine Core. Wonder has to flash. The grand entrance, last embrace with the root, Trimby Flacken and Zyru. It's actually only one kill so far for KC as they've only taken out Yankos, but that means the jungler is dead. Zyru flashes to the help of his team. Targamus and upset force down towards the bottom side of the fight. Trimby chasing onto Saken. Kabashar misses the undertow and gets knocked up, locked up, and the piercing dark will find its mark. Heretics take the Drake after Carmine Core killed the enemy jungle. Crazy back and forth. Dragon ends up being secured by Heretics. What makes it crazy is the fact that both junglers are the first to fall. Yep. So no smites available means that this is a very extended fight. Notice at the start, it's actually a numbers advantage for Heretics. They collapse as four, engaging onto three. The TP then comes in from Cabo Shard. A little late from Wonder, but the flash out from Trimzy puts him in a safe spot. And then a quick flash from Flacket after they find that initial kill. Yankos, though, left isolated on the front line means that he then drops in return. It then becomes this poke battle back and forth where Casey's doing a good job. They think they've locked down Zviro, forcing him to flash away. But now you look at the positioning. Upset doesn't really have any mana to continue to fight. They're going the long way round. And then Cabo. I think he just overforced this fight. He thought that he could go in, but that's four members versus one. They end up getting a kill, and Heretics end up winning the fight overall.
Two kills to one, and a dragon as well for Heretics. It's a mountain soul for them, will help a lot with the uh, poke that comes out of Karma, and even Zeri later on with that Ultra Shock laser. Upset has now finished his static shift. Bow and Saken flanking this mid lane. Looking to see if perhaps there's an opportunity for them. The Rift Herald now spawned, and it looks like Karma Core's priority was on taking that down. So, KC did lose that initial fight, but you now have to keep your eyes on summoners because. The reason why Zviro lived was because he could flash away from the Olaf. The reason why Flackhead lived was because he could flash away from the Zeri. The fact that they don't have those anymore means that it's going to be a much harder fight for Heretics to take. And I wonder if they'll actually just try to avoid fighting entirely, yeah. because I think that Wait this is where minutes. you're at your weakest, and kind of when Olaf is at one of his scariest points in the game. 100% agree, Reddy. I think you just wait three minutes, you wait for the next Drake. Rift Held's down. The only objectives are towers, and obviously, you know, jungle camps. Maybe you can find a pick here or there, but really do you need to if you're heretics? You can let the center scale. Oriana only gets stronger as the game goes on. Not that there isn't scaling on Carmine Core's side. You know, a very, very powerful as this game does develop. Currently, Upset is pushing out that mid wave. It's going to be Trimby and Flackhead to match. Zviro going down towards the bottom side and Wonder up towards top. So kind of symmetrical lanes with mid laner uh -oh. v mid laner. But Zviro, he spots Bo, still gets knocked up. There's the quickness as well. Targamus looking for the knockup afterwards. Shockwave comes out. Targamus still chasing forward. Yankos, Glacial Prism, but Targamus unable to tank it in time. The Cataclysm back onto the back line from Bo, but he's left for dead. Targamus couldn't eat the Glacial Prison. And because of that, Bo pays with his life. Bo just didn't have the damage to kill Spyro before the rest of Heretics could come to support. It was just Targamus and Bo thinking that they had caught Spyro out, but the rest of KC was not in a position to collapse themselves. So Heretics kept themselves a punish. And we said maybe Heretics just want to play a little bit more passively. Well, it was KC on the front foot, and it was Heretics finding the kill out of it. A thousand gold lead now for them. Yanko's trying to extend that by stealing away some of these camps. Trimby and Flacker pushing in the mid lane. Trimby sitting at 80 stacks now. That's pretty good. 17, 16 and a half minutes in, being at 80. Very powerful for him. Has the Yumu's Ghost Blade. We'll see if he goes Umbral second. Some centers do like the opportunity as well, if you're going towards this more lethality focused build. I think Yumu's not as strong as it once was, but does still allow you to reposition really well in team fights with that extra movement speed. Sure. Targamus and Bo looking for another play towards the top lane, but look at the answer. Like, Heretics are so often realizing who is weak side and then resetting, responding. The ward behind at Trimby is now clearing. will give Carmine Court a semblance of what's happening so they can just back away. But also, you have to remember that sieging for Heretics is not that easy. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of wave clear on the side of KC, but also because you don't have an traditional AD carry outside of the center, it is hard to chip away at these towers. So I get the impression that they were just overstacking on top to threaten that top tier one. Obviously, they didn't really have much of a wave left to overcommit anymore. So now they're going to move back away from it. Zviro is going to go and catch that bot wave. Has the TP to join any additional fight that could be starting soon. 45 seconds on the Dragon with Trinity Force completed for Wonder. I mean, he's going to push in this wave. Now, I wonder if he's going to do what he did last game. Sorry, last game, last fight. Stay top. Okay, he's choosing to reset. Or is he? <laughs> <laughs> but in the last fight, I love what he did. He actually just stayed top because there was a chance that KC TPs in and Heretics disengage. Yeah. And so then he says, it's fine. Just leave, give them the dragon. We got the TP out from them. And then I can take this top tower uncontested. And then we can use the TP advantage. He did end up TPing because they ended up having that fight. But he can just do exactly what he did last fight and just stay top and create the stance where, Cabo, are you going to come match me top yep. lane? Are you going to stick around? Or are you going to go TP to that fight, the first fight? And if you do TP to the fight, maybe one that can even interrupt it. And basically, he has options if he can keep this pressure up in the side lane. When does Meganar, though? Down to half the rage bar already. We'll time out if a fight begins in the next you know, 30 seconds or so. Heretic's trying to set up around the Drake. Yanko stepping in. Targamus has the quickness, has the flash. Rift Herald used down towards the bottom side. Without anyone from Carmine Core will actually ride the Rift Herald here. It's more just about getting that push in. Yanko and Spyro answering it in the bottom lane. Trimby and Flacco off towards the top side. Wonder. Ooh, look at that damage on the target already, yeah, as you say. Good damage onto Targamus. There's the TP in. Counter TP invested by Wonder. Trying to build up that Mega Narbar. 
Nova third right now, looking to go in. The quickness goes, but Flacker the only one caught by it. Flashed away by Trimby, 3,000 HP on the Drake. Bo goes in with a Cataclysm, the re-engage, but Trimby still alive on the Drake. Who's going to take it? It's secured by Cavalshard. Flacker trying to dive in. Cavalshard doing everything he can, but he'll fall as well. A decisive victory in the fight for Heretics. They find four. Only Bo survives the Drake, though, to Carmine Court. KC get completely wiped. I didn't quite catch how that combo happened on the back line. All I saw was Flackett flying in, connecting on the two members, and then KC just fell apart. Great fight for Heretics. They do lose the Dragon, so KC will deny that sole point, but I wonder if it matters. We go back to the fight. I want to see Zvyro and where he throws this Shockwave. The ball placement on the back line, then goes to shield Flackett. They're trying to find access into the fight. Good engage initially from... Oh, but there's the Shockwave onto the back. Ah, but it's the Gnar ultimate that actually sets up for Flackhead. Connects onto both Saken and Upset. And then Wonders there to finish them off. Really nice combo. And being trapped into that choke makes it that much harder to execute. We talked at the start of this game, ultimately, how it's going to boil down. And uh, Heretics, they were able to get all their summoners back up again. They find another great fight. That engage from Bo initially looks promising, but if they have an ability to get out of it, then they're going to get out. Yep, and they do exactly that. Even though Bo's able to Cataclysm in, the back line was just shredded, as you say. Shockwave and then R into the wall, followed up by Flackhead. A Rabadon's death cap second for Zviro. Flackhead. More of a support than anything this game. 1-0, 0-1-7. Zero, uh, zero, Hasn't really been picking up the kills, but still a lot of damage to his name. Quickness in once again. There's the knockup with the Cataclysm going forward. Targum is doing everything he can to get Carmine Core back in the game. TP to the standard. Flackhead gets the knockup with the last breath, but I don't think it's going to be enough as Flackhead dives forward. The Shockwave, the, the ultimate Flackhead oh! gets two. It's beautiful, and now Upset has to do everything in this fight. The lightning crash, trying to build up the stacks. Bo still gets the damage onto Zvira, who is able just to escape for the moment, but Upset will find him. The shutdown down, the grand entrance of Upset in the fight, a triple for him. Now Wonder joining the Barney, a little bit delayed. His invitation lost in the post, it seems, as Carmine Core find a fight up towards the top side. So KC were just interested in that top out of tower. They had a nice wave stacked up, they were looking to secure it, maybe expecting Heretics to cross map, but the answer, no summoners this time around, and look at the dive that comes through. This Olaf is just running Trimby down, and there's no way that he can go. Crucially, though, Spyro holds on to the Shockwave, waits for the right moment. This two-person Shockwave into the ultimate was so clean, Flackett does a good job of cleaning it up. He almost turns it on to upset, but his HP is too low. Now, though, it's just a matter of numbers. Heretics don't have the Gnar, which means that they can't really turn this fight around. Upset's able to get the cleanup, and he secures himself a triple kill. Huge acceleration for the Zevi there as well. And you can see the difference between having summoners and not having summoners for Heretics. If they have summoners in that fight, you flash away from the initial engage, or even after the quickness has landed and you're in a much stronger position. Two items now on Upset, Runans and Static Shift. Two items though on Flackett as well. I mean, this so really unlocks that carry mm -hmm. for KC. But really, Heretic should have just tried to cross that. They should have been fine abandoning that tower. I guess the argument is that there weren't really many of the towers for them to cross map four, so they wanted to try and contest, but I guess they weren't expecting so many members of KC to be there. Either way, kill scores nine to nine. The gold is about two diff 2K difference. I still think this game could swing either way, especially given how strong Upset is right now. A full level over Flackhead. And the dance around the Baron already beginning. Yeah, a minute early. on the Drake, but it wouldn't be solved by the team. Obviously, Carmine Core getting the last one delayed. Heretic Salt by five minutes. Crucially, objective bounties are available. So. That might not seem like a big deal. I mean, it is a big deal. Like, but like, it's, it's, it's also really surprising it's, with the, the... Well, it's because in terms of structures, there's such a massive difference. Two dragons, three towers, like... A dragon, three grubs, only 2,000 gold between the two teams. I mean, I'm like, just like, trying to explain it, Medic. Yeah, I, 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 I understand your explanation. I'm just saying it surprises me slightly that with only a 2,000 gold difference between the two teams, there's objective bounties available. But for Carmine Corp, that's a great situation I mean, if be. they got Baron, it would, like, balloon them ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd uh, give them a huge advantage. And, and the reason like the reason why I mentioned that is because as you've identified, they're not that far behind. Yeah. Like in terms of items, Casey's still in a perfectly fine position. And a good fight can definitely turn things around. Now you look at summoners again, everything coming back up for heretics. 
The same can be said for Casey, of course. Tarka's going for the flank. It's Drake up in 10 seconds. Tarka could sneak around the back here. He's cleared out the vision. Heretics realize this. They come around. They make sure the Targamus is not lying in wait. Good due diligence there. No, they're really making yeah. sure. I mean, you have to, because if Targa's like in the in the bush by the Gromp or something, he can just flank you, and you are absolutely spotted doomed. He's spotted on the ward, uh, on the turret. Now forced down towards the bottom side of the fight. Heretics can just look for Targamus here. Isolate the engage. Who cares if you give up the dragon? You force the quickness out of him. Now you come back into the fight. Really good due diligence from Heretics. Cabochard also is catching bot wave. Carmine Core wisely give this up. Cambashard was not close enough. You didn't have a TP flank. Carmen Core, a couple of pings towards the Baron. Maybe Heretics look for it on the resets. Yeah, I mean, Casey definitely slow to that objective. Bit of a blunder there. They were very reliant on the flank from Targumus. Cabo obviously had the TP to join should a fight break out, but that fight was denied the moment that they sniffed it out. You call it Medic, really good awareness from Heretics. They don't allow the flank to happen. And now we turn to a more neutral state. 2K, still only the goal difference. KC definitely still have ways in which they can win. A lot of it's going to be on the shoulder of upset. Yeah, it's, it's very much about the initial engage will happen. Heretics will flash away. Then does the secondary engage find enough Heretics members that you can kill them with upset and well, with, and with uh, Saken, right? It comes back to a similar story of the G2 versus Rogue match from earlier, which is that when it comes to any Wombo combo, you, just either, you either have to survive it or you have to dodge it. Yep. Right, because that's the bulk of their damage. That's how this comp ultimately designed to work. That's not to say that they can't keep doing damage afterwards, but when you have Karma Zeri, you think in a war of attrition, they should have an advantage just because of their range. Actually, the part of the Matrix as well. Initially, he dodged the bullets and then he just survived. True. So, Bo, though, caught out, didn't Wait, use the device, he's to get away. Completely I was so missed that. sure he would just EQ out of it. Still had the flash as well, so Bo's no dead. No chance to move. That's a Baron unlock for sure for Heretics. Cabochard coming in from the side as well. They do still have the engage of Targamus and Cabochard running onto that I think with the Yasuo, they just melt this, no? Oh, yeah. Ariana Yasuo? They haven't spotted Targa yet. They do melt it better. You're entirely correct on that. But Targa now spotted on a ward. Trimby forced off towards the top side. There's the TP in by Wonder. He's built up that Meganar bar. Targamus still just suspicious as he goes in. There's the charm and there's a chase in from Cabochard. Stop watching Zyru. Dawning Shadow from Jimmy for a bit of extra shield, and Kabashad's already down. The flash away from Zyro as well will keep him alive, and this is routing. Karma and Core left for dead. Heretics and get three kills after killing Bo off earlier. Zyro's going to survive as well. They will get the Baron, and everything swings in the favor of Heretics. A really nice engage from KC. The flank from, from Targamus looked so promising. And look at Cabo. The engage was good. They get onto crucial members of Spyro and Flackhead. Really nice wombo combo here. And there's nothing they can do to stop the Olaf, but the shielding, the Zonyas, and the ultimate from Trimby was enough defense to keep them alive to turn the fight around. And Yasuo, two items. He's just gonna, in a, in a long enough fight, he's gonna be able to turn that one around. Very well played by Flackhead. Is Great that, supporting from Trimby as well. You either survive the combo or you dodge it. They did both there. I saw dodges coming out from Trimby. Zyro just able to survive it now with Baron on their shoulders. Heretics in a much stronger position. Remember, they got the, uh, the Mountain Drake earlier as well, so they're on soul point. That's up in two minutes. As the Baron expires, they can turn their eyes towards that dragon. TP up towards this top side as Zyro looks to join some four members of his team that are up here. Wonder left in mid, pushing in that wave. Does have the Mega stacked up. Bo going forward, just looking to see perhaps if anyone from Heretics oversteps. But with the wave crashing in mid, Wonder can just path back towards the mid lane. And Bo and Upset realize, well, someone's going to have to deal with this. Or we just give up the tier two mid, which is what Carmine Core are deciding to do right now. Upset will catch the wave as it crashes towards the inhibitor tower. But then Wonder can go down towards bot lane if he wants. Doesn't have the TP, more likely to go towards top to bolster his team's offensive on this second tier two. Oh, nice shockwave on the oh, Saken. Saken might just be dead. Dawning Shadow is available for Trimby, but they don't quite use it. Yankos diving in as well, as is Flacken onto that back line. Immortal Shubo healing him up as well. Yankos is down, oh. but it's Carmine Core have just been left for the Wolves. Upset getting chased out by Wonder. Targamus can dash away, can dance away, but for how much longer will Carmine Core be dancing? 
The battle dance out to upset, gets him to safety. Double cannon minions will chip away at this tower. Trimby will do the same. They'll wait for the next wave to come in, and this will be an inhibitor tower broken by Heretics. Slackhead is a good Yasuo player. Yeah, he I mean, <laughs> he has only won two of his five games on the stage with it, but looking to make it three of six. That was uh, that was impressive what he just did there. I mean, because I thought that they had gone in way too deep. I thought we'd seen a situation where Heretics, you greeted, you dived, or you didn't need to. Just getting Saken's HP that low is enough, yep. right? Because now he's forced back. The wave clear is gone. You don't need this kill. So diving it is just inherently greedy. Yankos flashes in, Flack is there to support, and at this point I'm thinking he's dead. A really nice wind wall onto Upset keeps him alive. He uses the minion to then create space between him and Upset, and then he isolates Cabo to deal enough damage alongside his mid laner to then get a kill as well. Um, that was clean. Yeah, Flack, that was really clean. Nice. Good job as well by Yankos. Flash up to Kassolt. Flash Q on the set one. Well, that was the part knockout. that I thought was greedy, Medic. No, uh, <laughs> I mean, he got the knock of it. It's a call, right? There's no way he does that without Flacket saying, I can ult. I mean, for right? sure. There's He's definitely, no way. There's definitely a degree of trust. I don't think they needed to be that greedy. In any case, now sorry, Soul Betty. Point. Did they get an inhibitor tower? <laughs> okay, it seems to work. Now on Soul Point, as you say, this would be Soul for the Mountain, us for them. Bo goes in, but Yankos doesn't miss a bow. Smite secure for Heretics. Bo pays for. The attempt with his life, and now bot lane the target for Heretics as they can push this in. No Baron on them, but two and a half minutes before that does come up. It looks like Carmine Court are just going to try and push out their waves in the other lanes. Mid their first prio, can't get up towards top in time. Cabo Shard will go and answer that himself. Heretics with this cannon minion wave should be getting their third tier two of the game. Now, they may just choose to dive again. I think that from this position, it's a lot better. Um, especially now that they have the Mountain Soul at Trimby their disposal. Just walks at them. Like, Trimby does so much damage. He's got opportunity humors. Look at this. Trimby just killed him. That was all Trimby. <laughs> Yankos, get, get the hell out of my kill feed. You didn't assist on that. That was all Trimby Even all through the, the ultimate, time. just to secure it as well. 150 stacks on the center at 30 minutes. And now the Nexus towers the target. The flash away oh. by Trimby as Targamus looks for the engage. Trimby is having an absolute purple patch as Heretics are looking to beat Carmine Core, Purple and Bruce. This will be the Nexus. Heretics will take it. And Carmine Core do still have a chance, but it is looking mighty slim that they make it into playoffs. Heretics, what an upswing for them. Six and two puts them at the top of our league alongside G2 and Fnatic. They're fighting for that spot in first yeah. place. There's a chance that they can secure top two, but it's going to determine how things play out on Monday. Great stuff from Heretics. And I mean, huge credit to the, like, the whole team. Just great team play across the board. Really well done. Trimby was a standout in particular. Love Flack as Yasuo. I think the spot lane was super impressive with how they played the fights. I think the KC just couldn't quite make the dive work out for them. Yeah, there were a few moments of uh, brilliance for KC, but they couldn't quite get it all together at the same time. Your key player of the game votes at Elliot C on X are Wonder, Zviro, and Flackhead. Yep, they, I mean, they all did a great job. I will say, Trimby robbed. <laughs> Trimby hard robbed in that. I'm sorry. Had a great performance. I think it will go to Flackhead because he played Yasuo, and there's a lot of people out there. I mean, he also had a great game. Yeah, he, did, yeah, he did have a very good game. You That's are correct, Betty. He went 8 2 and 9, 700 gold bounty at the end of it. But. Trimby right-clicked people really well, <laughs> Bedius, and he landed his W in a few key I moments, mean, tr so. truthfully, I think Trimby's greatest asset was his ultimate utilization yeah. in this game, right? Just uh, in combination with the combos that he did on top of keeping his, his yeah. carry safe, just uh, great stuff from him. Uh, Heretics, really impressive bounce back from winter to where they're at now. Really great to see. I don't think many were expecting these changes to be significant. I remember many people saying Kaiser wasn't the problem, and, and I think that that statement is still true, but I think that you're seeing the difference in the team now. By bringing Trimby in, by introducing Zviro, their communication seems to be cleaner, their proactiveness is definitely there, their team fighting very well. Overall, I feel like that we've had standout moments from all of the players throughout the split, yeah, totally and Zviro agree. seems way more comfortable. 5-1-12 Orianna performance involved in 17 of the 19 kills that they found for themselves. I just think that he's getting way more comfortable than he was before. Uh, joy to listen to on the Alice desk yesterday yeah, as well. Great personality. So overall, I'm excited to see what this Heretics roster can do. Obviously, all of our teams are fighting for a spot at MSI. Mm -hmm. We have two potential we spots do, available. Right. G2 has one G2 of them. G2 has already locked in if one of G2 them. If G2 wins the split, then it goes down to championship points. Otherwise, Which I don't think Heretics really want. No, <laughs> they do. 
But um, uh, obviously, the higher that they can finish, the more points they can get. And in an ideal world, I'm sure that they would love to win the spring split. But it, it's quite interesting. Top of our table right now, Fnatic, G2, and Heretics all seem to be relatively even. Obviously, G2 probably still favorites in that big cluster. I, I but think it's hard. Uh, quickly say before we go to the interview, uh, G2 play up against Vitality tomorrow. Fnatic uh -huh. play MDK on Monday. Uh, Monday. Sorry, and Heretics play Giant X. So, like, Heretics, I would say, of the three matchups, probably has the easiest of them to make it to that 7 and 2 scoreline. However, Flackard, the Yasuo god, is standing by on stage. I don't know why I said that with such flippancy. <laughs> he played the Yasuo really well. He's standing by on stage with Ginny. Ginny, take it away, please. Make me shut up. Yeah, um, thank you so much for that one, Medi Um Not sure what that was, but anyway, the, he just called you the Yasuo god. I don't know if you heard that. Do, would you like to comment on that first, actually? I mean, uh, like, the real Yasuo god is uh, Pepinero, which is here in the LSE studio. So I'm just basically like, um, you know, he's like the teacher. I'm like the student. Okay. Is a student ever going to surpass the teacher? I mean, hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully. Oh, <laughs> but but the right. teacher is like really good though, so. All right, so you got you to gotta put in a little bit more practice. Yeah. Uh, I want to start off with seeing Trimby on Senna. I don't think that's something that any of us expected, particularly you on the Yasuo. I mean, you're known for your Yasuo, but yeah. maybe this bot lane here. Talk us through it in terms of these picks, because mm -hmm. I mean, Trimby could be the next AD carry. You might lose your job. Maybe. I mean, uh, I mean, Trimby is like really good uh, Senna. He's like really good mechanical player, which is, you know, like pretty weird because like supports are like usually not good mechanically. Uh, but actually, Trimby, <laughs> That's is, nice. like, Trimby <laughs> is like really good, and as well, like it makes sense that I play the Yasuo right because like, yeah. you know, like supports being like not the best. Imagine if they need to play Yasuo, it's like probably too many like, things, right? Yeah, it's really disgusting, probably. But uh, yeah, I mean, I I really like playing with Trimby. It's really it's really insane. And uh, I mean, Senna, I mean, he's probably better than my Senna, probably. <laughs> Don't say that too loud. You might, you might actually lose your job. No, I'm joking. But I want to talk to you about the Trimby here, because you're mentioning that you're enjoying playing with him and you guys have that setup going on. You've now had the split with Trimby as well, coming out from winter. How has that development been? Because you guys have been doing incredible. You're winning game after game. So what's that been like to play with Trimby on the roster? I mean, I think Trimby is like, um, like a really good uh, like player. Like he brought a lot of the decision to the team. Which is something we were lacking in uh, in the like winter split, and uh, I mean I, as well I, I feel like I'm in a lot of like synergy with him. I still think we need to work a lot on because uh, I, I think yesterday I really ran him down the lane. I mega into classic uh, So yeah, we we still need to you know work on a lot of things. But uh, I have like full confidence on him. My full trust. I think he's really insane, and I I'm just like enjoying my time with him. Would you say that synergy particularly is built up just with time spent together, or is there anything more that you can do? I mean, I think it's like a matter of time as well, because you know, like we didn't play like long for like a, like much time, mm -hmm. but uh, as well, like we are working every single day, and uh, I mean, yeah, as I said before, we still like need to work a lot on, but like we are going in the right path. Absolutely. Well, we have PGL coming up next, and before we toss it over, I wanted to ask you particularly, who is the best Polish player that has ever played in the LEC? The best Polish player? Yeah. I mean, I don't really want to say Jankos, but I think I have to go with Jankos. Like, he played for, like, I don't know, like, 25 years. He's, like, 40 soon. I was so hoping for some BM, but no, I, I will take Jankos. Okay. I, I, I don't want to really BM, you know? Like, he's, like, 30-something okay. already, so... <laughs> wow! All right, like well, already, you know? let's uh, head over to the PGL and see what Jankos has to say about that one. Laura, take it away. <laughs> thank you so much, Ginny, and thank you, Flacco, of course. Welcome to the LEC Pulse Game Lobby, Polska Gurum today with Trimby yes. and Jonkos. First things first, Jonkos, was that a burn? Was that a compliment? I don't even know how to take it. <laughs> you were here when I the mean, I think was it's um, I think it's a compliment, of course, right? Okay, I'm right, sure yeah. he meant it as a yeah. compliment, <laughs> that I'm so experienced and uh, Killing you you with know, I don't need to like stress myself with the games because I've been through it so many times. So I'm sure all he had in mind is definitely a positive thing. Yeah, I think it was the most positive comment I've heard while I was here. So yeah, from <laughs> I don't think so about the uncle. So how, that's how it is. Yeah, uh, how is the communication between you guys actually? Like a lot of banter, or are you uh, nice with I each mean, other? I'm not What's really the in the banter so much. Yeah, I know. I am a bit, but I'm still, I think, not uh, into the team yet, right? Like fully. So like they probably don't know me yet, like 100%. Mm -hmm. So it's like probably not also not that comfortable, I would say. And like they don't. I don't know how much, I, uh, how far I can go. Probably they don't know as well. But they're, they're slowly getting me there. You know, they're trying to make sure Isn't I'm like right? adjusted to the environment. So you're just trying <laughs> to flame everyone, get it all out. Yeah. Out of the process. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it is kind of like this. In an environment like this, you do like to trash talk a little bit. So yeah. that's nice. Yeah. 
atmosphere of trust. That's what we want. I everything is going well for you guys, honestly, since the beginning of the split, ramping up slowly. You qualified yesterday. We had the lovely pleasure of talking to your mid laner yesterday. Um, knowing that you qualified, what was the goal going into today's game in terms of like adjustment so that you come off ready for playoffs, Yonkos? Well, I don't think we had any specific goal in mind besides yeah. winning, right? I don't think we really care that we qualified because I think we are actually like good now. Um, it's not a coincidence we won these games, right? I think yeah. TMB brought like a lot of positivity to the team. Not like positive attitude, but like really good gameplay. Um, yeah, I'm not bringing positive. <laughs> <I> mean, no, <laughs> of course, he's also positive, but I just mean he brought a lot of good gameplay. Um, so I feel like, and, and it's very too, right? I mean, yeah. like uh, it seems to be working. So. I feel like we, uh, I mean, my Sejuani is really boosted today, so definitely the goal was not to play Sejuani because as I thought I can like pick it whenever, right? I didn't play it in a long time. Last time we played against Vitality, I was kind of boosted. Now I picked it, I was kind of boosted. So I suppose I'm grateful for my like Senna Yasuo to be human yeah. today. And uh, my mid and top to be human as well, right? Yeah, get I mean, top lane, I'm not sure about like that the early game, but it's fine, you know. I, I, yeah, it's, it's okay. Happens to the best, right? Should <laughs> be anything you want to add on this. You were agreeing hard on the Sejuani comments. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, if like Jankos wins another MVP of the game, like yeah. sure, let's, you know. I think he should get it at the end of the day because I think he's been having really exceptional split overall, like as well others, right? So like, yeah. it's yeah, it's nice to play over, uh, overall right now. I think also we're just like uh, playing well, like as a unit and like individually we're like, of course, not there yet, I would say, but I think we're like really trying to help each other out and it just, it just shows during team fights at least. I agree. Yeah, and what's that kind of like in the early stages? Because you say, when you look at used to, it feels like you've just slotted together like you've been playing for years. Like you're constantly moving together. The communication is working really well. Like, is this something that you feel like came naturally or is it something that you've worked on over the course of the couple of weeks you've had? Uh, I mean, I would say at least, right, Jankos is quite knowledgeable, as we already like said. Yeah, at least like I said multiple times. And Someone has to say it. So. <laughs> right? yeah. I mean, he's 25 see. years of playing, yeah. so you That's know. True. <laughs> you, can, you can legit see it, like, while, right, when he's not even, like, saying anything and you just, like, look at the map, what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And, like, for me, it's, like, also easier to do things, right? Because I think we're, like, matching fine. I don't think we're, like, always together or not doing stuff. But I think whenever it's needed, we're actually at least trying to figure it out, how to do it. I think that's something that's like nice right now because we're, I mean, it's still a new team, right? With me coming in and Zviro. So we have to like figure out what we want to do and how we want to think, uh, do things as well as just help a little bit Zviro out with, I mean, he has good macro knowledge for sure, but also, right, he like lacks some of the things that right LEC mid laners mm -hmm. had like just discovered for years, you know, right? Yeah. Because there's been quite a bit of him. So, yeah, like I think uh, hopefully we'll be able to also help him with that. And I think he's been doing a lot of a lot of good work when it when it comes to that. A bit more on this, maybe Yonkers, as as the jungler working with a, a rookie mid laner, a fresh mid laner, also who had to come in in like a hard situation, I believe. I don't want to talk about the situation or anything, but more including him in the team and making him feel safe and also setting him up for success because it feels it feels like he would have a part to play in this uh i mean i think that i mean everything i don't want to take away anything from like the things you said but i yeah. would say that zvar is not really like a super rookie millionaire right like he played in the scene for a while so he's new to lac which is very important because yeah. i do agree with trimby i think there's like some things he doesn't do compared to lac mid laners that they did in the past but we had a lot of successful lac mid laners that were like kind of rookies uh, coming in like jackies and um frescoe i think this year mm -hmm. at yeah. least two of them uh, and i feel like you know he has been performing very well i think he's a confident player and i also think that the way our coaching staff is trying to teach the game is uh, the same in academy as it is uh, in lac yeah. so that made him understand the game on like a very similar level to our team when he came in so there was no need for building synergy of course sometimes we need to talk to each other about like mid gangs or how do we want to play certain situations and that's not always perfect but as far as it comes to macro game i think he um has the same understanding as all of us because this is how we chose to play uh the game and this is what we believe in right and this is something that we i think struggled a lot in winter i feel like we had different ideas um it was hard to always uh, play properly because of it or like, I mean, properly just comes down to what you believe in and what we believed in was not always on the same page. And mm -hmm. I think it was already improving before we brought um, Zviro in. Um, but uh, I mean, 
yeah, it's looking good now, right? So I'm happy that through all the work we put in between the splits and also uh, at the beginning of uh, spring split, we can actually like play human. Yeah, it's just a matter of dynamics sometimes and things click easier than other. Uh, I want to highlight a specific player here because uh, Trimby, Flacket got the key player of the game. Uh, we were saying backstage that this is the least Trimby bot lane that I would have expected. We will touch on this later. But tell me about playing this kind of setup, Sina Yasuo, and um, how, how is it playing with Flacket? Because I, I love interviewing him because of the energy he brings, does he bring the same kind of energy in game? Oh yeah, he <laughs> definitely does. The way he like just plays, right, and as well just like talks, it just helps a lot with like energy levels, of course, and then individually, I think he's been performing really well uh, lately, and overall, I think ev all the time he was in LEC, right, I lost to him in finals one time. Yeah. So and he won one time. <laughs> yes, and you know that. <laughs> It does happen, right? But it was, I think, now working with him and like getting to know him a little bit more, he's for sure. A, uh, he's slightly different than like AD carriers I had previously. I think he's like a bit special, you would say, right? Sure. I mean, we can go this way, but uh, <laughs> I he, need more he, this. in this in this regard, right? Uh, I do like the thing that he's not really scared of picking whatever he would feel or like out, you know, yeah. tell him or like ask him for, and he just like goes for it, right? I think he's like quite. I think he's pretty confident when it comes to that, even though he might not be sure, you know, about certain things, he'll go for it. And uh, I think that's something that I also am myself a little bit. So it's like, it feels it feels a little bit nice, the, uh, the like spot in, on bot right? Mm -hmm. Where it's not only like, right, when I won LEC, right, it was a lot about support, how I like manage my picks. But lately in the metas, it was not as easy for me to figure out which counter piece I want to do, right? And I think sometimes the AD carry can be the one actually to like, you know, for some stuff. And I think he is like a perfect, he's just a perfect example of a player that not only is he able to actually carry on like a meta champion like mm -hmm. Zeri, but he's not really scared of playing those uh, unconventional champions like Leiaswe and just psh, pull yeah. off, you know, and show really good performances on it. And for me, it's always been a characteristic of Flagged, like the, playing the unconventional picks, uh, being the selfless, adaptable AD carry that basically you want in a team. And for me, when you look at Team Heretics and the success and uh, progress that they have, they're, I don't know, they have a solid enough basis to work on to be flexible and take risks in draft. For me, yeah. that's the road and that's the success you want leading into playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, I think the, the fact you brought it like the Senna Yasuo today kind of solidified that a lot for me. Because I think the cool thing about like watching you guys play has been how well you used to have worked together and like the synergy you have and like, hey, we're going to play around mid, we're going to play around Zvira, we're going to be able to find these picks and start to like snowball the game in that direction while getting a ton of early control. Um, but bringing in the Senna, you still roamed a little bit, but it was a bit more like, hey, we're going to take a step back from you kind of providing, the, or Trimby providing a lot of the CC or the engage, and it's kind of more of a case of, hey, I'm going to wander around and try and play, be a damage role as well, while Flack is going to play a very different role too. And I think that was really the interesting part for me today, was seeing how you are able to adapt in these new scenarios and look impeccable on them as well. Yeah, I mean, I do like when I'm put in situations where, I mean, I don't know myself too much because we didn't practice that much, the Senai Aswo, to be honest, and me, Specific on Senna, maybe some games where it was like so random. I'll yeah. Say. And the Sejuani, I want to be clear, we did not practice. <laughs> yeah, stop making but excuses so for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can keep going. The champion did not yeah. just come out like you're supposed to. No, yeah, okay, well, sure, I played it many Sorry. years as I was pretty known for it at some point, but you know, like my eyes were bleeding in the game. I uh, even communicated with my well. team, like, oh my God. Guys, Does this I'm mean so you have to go back to playing it? more often. No, no, so no, no, no. You can, like, I think we just should not doubt the Yasuo again. Yeah. I think that's the fix. <laughs> Trimby, I'm so yeah. sorry. No, it's <laughs> fine. It's just a draft diff at the end of the day and that's what happened. I don't <laughs> know if it's for us or not. Right now it seems like, right, we're quite lucky if the performances of certain yeah. players were just not it, right? But uh, on it, I don't know. Like, it was nice to play today. I think even though, right, I think we misplayed one of, or two situations. I think overall we had a basic idea of what we want to do. And I think we are like approaching every single setup properly, right? I think on bot lane specifically, I think, I mean, I wouldn't say we were like winning a lot, right? Because we also had to be cautious of enemy player, uh, enemy champions. And then I saw what was happening a little bit on top side. So, you know, you have to like <laughs> cool it down, not ma make sure that your side of the map is not also not on, on fire. fire. Yeah. But I think we did a really good job and I got a lot of souls. I think as well, the fact I get to play Senna, it also helps because I'm the support. So even though I am doing damage and probably in some occasions, I'm not going to do what other AD carries on Senna will do with like damage mm -hmm. graphs. But, you know, I'm, I know where I'm going to, I know where I should be. I know where I, how to ward. 
And I think it helps stones as well, right? That we can actually, mm -hmm. yeah, support, like I can support and as well deal damage when I see uh, when I see someone as we did, like, you know, on the last fight. What Tim is trying to say is that you don't want to see AD carry main on Senna because the wording department is I on know. fire and it's completely it's disgusting. <laughs> I co like when we played it with comp, we did work on it quite a lot. So yeah. like I can write when every time I see comp on Senna, sure, you know, like. But with fl with Flacket, I think it's fine. I think people are over exaggerating a little bit. But yeah. To Ooh, no I way. I'm not sure. I mean, we'll, we'll figure it out when it actually happens, right? When he actually gets to play Senna, then yeah, you never know. Maybe I'm going to get like some Chogat or whatever. It would be nice. Wait, I can I ask it. for like one thing before we yeah. finish the day? I'm not sure we're if we're like we're doing good. that, but like, are we doing the... Can we see the standings or no? I, I'm, I was about... Well, can you call for them? Look at the camera yeah. here yeah. and you're like, let's take a look at the standings. Okay, I'm really blind. We are taking a break tomorrow, but no, oh, oh, not that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, not that one. Okay. Okay. No, read that. Oh, no, no. Actually, read, read, read it yeah. because we need to give the viewers the info. Can you read yeah. the prompter? Oh, Just underneath oh, yeah. the camera, this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We are taking a break tomorrow, but on Monday we have the conclu okay, conclusion. Okay, can you take over? <laughs> yeah. We're taking a break tomorrow, but on Monday we have the conclusion of the LEC Spring Split. And at the end of today, we only have three more open seats for the playoffs. This is how we want to do it. I mean, guys, it's not that far. I think I know why we missed a little bit of those Sejuani Sedu rules. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh anyway, I thought we are kind of secure top two, but we are definitely not because if we just lose a game on Monday and then Fnatic yeah. and G2 win, then we are kind of in a pickle. So we kind of have to win one more game against Giant X, which is on fire 2-0. So. I will explain the stakes for you guys uh, and you guys at home, of course. Uh, what do team need to do to lock here? Looking at the teams we have on Monday for GX, MDK and SK for each of these teams, they, they need to win their game and they will lock into playoffs. For Rogue, not looking that great for them. Lock at least a tiebreaker if they win on Monday, but if they lose, they're out. KC, they're not guaranteed in any scenario, but they have to win to keep any chance of making it. If they lose, they're locked out. Simple. Bro, it's so crazy. Team Heretics, the gatekeepers. Right. Yeah. So you can't. But we, there, there's some spicy scenarios, no? Because many teams could have three wins. But I, I, mean, I suppose it doesn't actually matter because uh, the... It's, I mean, you have maximum one tiebreaker thing, right? It's one... It's I think it's... Like, uh, it's head to head, right? Yeah, it's, it's head to head. Yeah. So it's only one tiebreaker yeah. like for eight. So There's two like scenarios for a three way tie. Yeah. And, and then you play two games. And then we but play then two games? Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, Wait, please. Do we actually play two games? There's yeah. two scenarios for this. Three scenarios. I mean, but then there And it's for the bottom teams, it's okay, not actually. But then, the yeah, but then there has to be like one person that I assume that will have to do the draw show. And somebody I, well, there's no more draw show. Oh. <laughs> We're doing it backstage. Uh, something we'll explain later, maybe. But yeah, we'll oh. represent it. I'm that's very uh, nice. But I'm very sorry. Have that's break. such a shame. Yeah. Oh, no, no one can stay in the <laughs> oh, no. after our game. Oh, we have our first yeah. game, actually. It's actually the uh, the victory time that resolves the uh, remain of yeah the okay. rest of the tiebreakers that you have. So yeah, that's how it's uh, that's how it's done. You want to look at the uh, the matches that we're gonna have on Monday, Dagda. What does your expert eyes tell you? I mean, for Casey, having to beat VDS is not going to be an easy task, so nope. I'm a little bit worried for them. Um, and then, yeah, lads, how do you use it? You basically just get to decide what opponents you have in playoffs. Like, do you want to just let Giant X win so they get through? Or is it like, who do you actually want to try and face off against? I mean, the <laughs> thing is that I believe um, if we lose the NG2 and Fnatic wins, we are third team, and third yeah. team normally faces like actual good team. Mm -hmm. But if we are top two, you get to choose, and then you can choose from like the bad team. So, I mean, for example, last split we were the bad team, so we got chosen by BDS. But now we could be choosing BDS. I'm pretty confident Masha, right? Yeah. So it, it hardly depends um, how we do against Giant X. And um, I mean, I don't want to like stop them from making playoffs, but I think we kind of have to if that's what it takes for us to have a good uh, seat. And, and what the benefit of being top two, assuming G2 is also top two, is like you end up in a different group than them and yeah. you can face them in a BO5 and then possibly you can face them again. So you have a lot, a lot of practice. So I mean, it would be great to play them, right? In like a better environment than we did for like the past two years when we were kind of boosted. Sounds good. <laughs> we'll see this on Monday, and yeah, wishing you, uh, wishing you luck, of course, uh, in this matchup. I think that's all here for us. What's the plan for you guys tomorrow? Are you screaming? Are you taking a break? Like, well, I don't know what teams are doing. We are screaming. Screams. Can I say who are scream? Uh, I'm not sure. We, c I mean, I'm like oh, easy on you. I mean, yeah, we're, we're screaming a team. It's fine. You, they are screaming team. a team, a actually. Team. <laughs> <laughs> Hot news here in the LEC. Yeah, Thank you all so much for joining us, Yonko Stringby. Always amazing to have you. Like that, same for you. Amazing you. to do PGL <laughs> with you. And yeah, you guys, 
I mean you, LEC viewers, Twitch chatters. We will be back on, what is it? Monday. Monday, <laughs> Monday, Monday, Monday. Mark this in your calendars. Monday is when we are back for the conclusion of the spring regular season. Until then, take care and see you soon. And see you Monday, actually, not soon. <laughs> in the LCS, champions aren't born, they're made. Champions are crowned, history is reforged. The beauty of the game comes to bear in its tensest moments, where the crowd roars and cries at each joy and heartbreak, where split seconds make the difference between the fallen and the forever. The LCS is always here to bring you back into the game, time and time. Red Bull gives you way.